The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. The kings of chess are reigning on high at the Superbet Chess Classic in Bucharest, Romania. Spectacular play wowed spectators as players put on a show for their adoring fans. Fabiano Caruana was all business, quickly dispatching Maxime Bashir Lagrave for his first win. Jan Napomniachi once again blew a clear advantage against nemesis and new world champion Ding Liren, settling for a draw. There's a tie at the top. Who will break away from the pack? Day four of incredible chess, coming up next. Welcome back everybody to day four of the 2023 Superbet Chess Classic held in Bucharest, Romania. We start day four in front of the Romanian National Art Museum. We have incredible pieces here. If you find yourself in Bucharest, make sure you check it out. Now let's go to the studio and start the action for day four. We welcome you to the first stop on the 2023 Grand Chess Tour and our coverage of Superbet Romania. We come to you live from the St. Louis Chess Club. Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining our show. I'm International Master Nancy Paikidze and I'm here with Grandmaster Yasu Sarawan. Nancy, it's been a pleasure uh, calling all the action with you and Verujan. Really a lot of fun. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Hello, everyone, and thank you for sharing your day with us. As we get ready for round four, they say it's lonely at the top. Not so at the Superbet tournament, as we have four players sharing the first place. Let's take a look at the standings. Let's take a look. We have four co-leaders, American Fabiano Caruana, representing Fide Yanni Pomnici, another American Wesley So, and Romanian Richard Rappard. World champion on the outside looking in. Right, so far with all draws, we have Ding Liren from China and Anish Giri from Netherlands. And with one point, we have two Frenchmen, Alirija Firuja and MVL, Poland's number one, Jan Christoph Duda, and Romanian, Bogdan Daniel Diak. And our format. We have a 10-player round-robin tournament with a classical time control. 90 minutes for the first 40 moves, 30 minutes for the rest of the game and 30 second increment from move one. There are no draw offers allowed, and players get one point for a win, half for a draw, and zero for a loss. And our remaining schedule for the tournament. Right, we have a total of nine rounds, and today players are playing round four. On Thursday, they will have a rest day, and after that, they'll be back to finish with four rounds. Wonderful, and we're very fortunate to have in studio Grandmaster Varuj Nikopian. Var, how did these four players get here? Thank you, Yasser. It's been a very exciting tournament, and uh, so far we saw a lot of uh, interesting games. Uh, let's take a look how the players got there. So first we have Fabiano Caruana on plus one, but in fact he could have been plus two. He missed a clear win in the first game against uh, Deak. He drew against Ding Liren, and yesterday he had a very impressive win against NWL. Then we have uh, Nepo who started out with a draw against Report, and he had some opportunities in that game. It was a French defense, if you remember, but he misplayed, so it ended in a draw. Then he won against Deak with a block piece, and again, yesterday, he had great opportunities getting a winning position out of the opening, but then letting Ding back in the game, and the game ended in a draw. Then we have uh, Wesley So. So far, I think he's been very impressive, very solid. He won the first game with the block pieces against Firuja. Had some opportunities in the second game, again, with the block pieces against MVL, but he decided to play it safe and secure the draw. And he was also pressing Anish Giri a little bit, and, uh, but the game ended in a draw. And then we have Richard Rapport with plus one score, draw against uh, Nepo, win against Duda from a very, very equal end game. Mm -hmm. And then he drew against Firuja yesterday. And we're going to, go, going to go to Romania to our friend Grandmaster Christian Cirilla. 
Thanks, Var, and welcome back, chess fans, to day four here at the 2023 Super Bet Chess Classic in Bucharest, Romania. And what a tournament we've had up to this point. So much fighting chess, and I have to say, and I want to build up on uh, these incredible players that you highlighted, Var. And one big matchup is the one between Janne Pomniashi with the black pieces against Fabiano Caruana with the white pieces. He is having two white pieces in a row. Yesterday's game against MVL for Fabiano. That was just a breakthrough event. Just an incredible miniature with the white pieces that move three. H4 launching a vicious attack against MVL's king. That was just an incredible game and incredible showcasing from Fabiano. But Yane Pomniaci, I have to say he had an incredible chance as well yesterday in his matchup against Digli Ren. Unfortunately for him, he fell short and surely he will be slightly slightly disappointed about that game, but we know how resilient these players are. Another big matchup that I'm having my eyes on is the one between the young Romanian Bogdan Daniel Deak with the white pieces against Ali Reza Firuja. Both of these players are on minus one, so they're definitely having their eyes set on a victory. And we know Ali Reza, even with the black pieces, he can definitely strike. He is the defending 2022 champion of the Grand Chess Tour, and right now he has a difficult task ahead of of himself because despite the fact that Bogdan Daniel Dak has been struggling with the white pieces, he is extremely solid. He's not giving you a single inch on the chessboard. So definitely this one is going to be a highly contested matchup. Guys, we have so many exciting chess. The atmosphere here is electrifying. The chess fans are ready to get involved as well, are ready to see some exciting chess. Thank you, Christian. And indeed, uh, set the table for us. Tell our viewers what they could expect in today's round four pairings. All right, let's take a look at the pairings. We have Mas Maxim Vashelagrov playing Anish Giri. And our two co-leaders, which are Rapper. Huge matchup, And Wazluza playing each other. Nice. We have Diak against Firuja. As mentioned. Our new champion, Ding Liren, playing Duda. He's going to be looking for his first win, no question. And another leaders facing each other, Caruana against Nepomnishi. And the players are all fighting very hard. It looks like our leaders could even have more points. And what are they fighting so hard for? Right, they're fighting for a lot of money. Yes. We have total prize fund of $350,000. And the first place winner is going to get $100,000. Second place, $65,000. Third, 48,000. Very nice incentives. <laughs> As you can see, a prize fund all the way down to 10th and final place of $10,000. Grand chess tour points up for grabs as well. Get as many as you can. And it looks like some celebrities in the house. Yeah, As we see nice Gary Kasparov <laughs> uh, kind of pointing out what you got to do in terms of getting uh, the ceremonial first move. It looks like Gary's going to lead off today as far as the ceremony of person. He's in robust. Welcome at the fourth round of Super Bowl Chess Classic Romania 2023. Three special guests today for uh, the opening ceremony. Again, uh, Mr. Gary Kaspar is with us for opening the play at uh, two of the youngest players in the world rankings. Bogdan Deak and Ayreza Firuja will play today, and uh, Grandmaster Kai Kaspar will make the official first move. I don't know, it's watching Gary play 1, D2, D4, even as an opening ceremony, that wasn't his go-to move. He liked E2, E4 uh, throughout most of his career, although he could play D4. But at least he didn't hate it as much as Knight of 3. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Another opening ceremony move, D4. We don't know what he's trying to member of the golden generation of Romanian football, participant at A lot of goals scored for Romania, and now making the first move here in Chelsea. It's 
appear with us, helping promoting this uh, beautiful tournament and this beautiful sport of chess. So, we know the same of the world champion. Ilya Duotrescu. And uh, I noticed he was wearing the golden shoes. Did you pick up on that? No, it was actually a uh, very nice tan looking shoes, but boy, they were a handsome pair. Let's do it again. Now, I have to say that uh, for Dean Laren, the world champion, and our pick mm -hmm. at winning the tournament, I don't think he's happy with the first three rounds. He played two draws with whites in rounds one and two. Yesterday, round three, he was definitely seriously worse. Pretty sure he's happy Nepo. about yesterday's round. Uh, yeah, but he, once again, he shows his resilience. He refuses yeah. to lose losing positions. He just bears down, somehow finds some counterplay. And today, he's sitting there saying, okay, I've got to join this group of people. Time to start winning. Yeah, yeah, I've got White, I've got, I'm playing Duda. Sorry, Duda, I know you're a really, really good player, but you're suffering too. You're, yeah. you're minus one, in fact. So I've got to take my chances and try to beat you. Um, Verusian, Evar, you were mentioning in how the players got here, that they could have scored a lot more points, including Nepo, including Wesley, including Fabi. I mean, everybody could have scored more points, but they only scored one victory. Absolutely, yes, sir. Fabi definitely could have been on plus two. Jan also could have been on plus two. Yesterday, he had a very nice advantage. Wesley had some chances in the round two against uh, yes. NVL. And also yesterday, he had some chances against Anish as well. Right. So uh, definitely plus two was a possible score from these players. Yeah. Uh, D D4 by Fabi, again, showing his flexible uh, approach. D5, uh, pardon me, knight f6, knight f3, uh, again, kind of a, a, a Vladimir Kramnik-like move order. Are we going to see Catalan? Or I was <laughs> going to ask, are we going to see a Queen's Gambit accepted? Also a possibility. Interesting. So e7, e6 would be your pick, huh? Yes. So e6. And I, I think in that case, the Catalan is a very good uh, likelihood. Um, I think Fabi played against Catalan in round one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or oh, as black. Round two, maybe. Yes. Against Ding Liren. Yes. I, I think maybe it was round two. Knight c3, oh. invi inviting bishop b4. Okay. Uh, Tarash. These days, c takes d5, knight takes d5. And very quickly, e2, e3. Now, this line of play goes way, way, way back, 50s and 60s. Against e2, e3, the inclusion of a7, a6 was considered the right way of, of meeting the move a, mm -hmm. e, e2, e3. The idea behind a6 is you're waiting. Like, I please pl move your bishop. Mm -hmm. Just move your bishop. And guess what? We are in a Queen's Gambit accepted, where actually yeah. Black has a gained a tempo. And then the, the, the funny part it was against a7, a6. A lot of people felt <laughs> that the right way is to play a3 and knight c6, and away you go. Instead, we did see e3, knight c6, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop b5. Um, has this become a thing these days, Var? Uh, yeah, I, uh, this is definitely a major theory, Yasser, and a lot of games played in this position. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually played it myself this as black. I used to play the Tarash for a very sure. long time. I but, know. Uh, I, I prepared I, for your stupid Tarash. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that move A6 that you mentioned uh, yes. earlier. I liked a little bit better, but uh, this line is very interesting too. As we can see, both players are moving pretty fast here. Um, Let's take a look what the theory looks like after this move, bishop d7 here. So we have a total of about 130 games played in this position after Thanks. castle, and bishop d6 is the main move here. Almost everyone played. And I see some big names here. Uh, Grishuk played as block a few games, Boris Gelfand, and uh, they all made draws here. So it looks like this line is actually 
uh, playable. Bishop d6. And now white plays here knight f3, the main move here. And now just attacking the pawn on d5. And you have a few different options here. You can play the move a6. You can play also bishop, uh, bishop e6. Bishop g4 is another possibility because here you cannot take on d5 because of the knight takes d5 idea and queen takes d5 will l lose to bishop h2 check and black will pick up the queen on d5. So lots of theory here and I think uh, black has some options here mm -hmm. and uh, he can choose a6, bishop g4, bishop e6. Uh, but the results show that the black is actually doing okay here. All right, thank you. Uh Var, uh, in our other marquee matchup of our clash of mm -hmm. uh, tournament leaders, if you will, Richard E. Uh, Rapport, opened with the English, 1c4, and after knight f6, strangely enough, stop. They're both thinking. Like, well, mm -hmm. I mean, Richie, you play c4, <laughs> knight f6, I mean, thank you, knight c3, uh, a little bit, bit of a pause. I'm not too sure what the pause was all about, whether... I think he was chosen the move order. Yeah, it's sometimes you try to, uh, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, if my opponent plays the symmetrical English, mm -hmm. do I want to commit my knight to c3? Right. If my opponent plays e7, e5, uh, the reverse Sicilian uh, kind of English, would I prefer my pawn to be on g3? And yeah, getting those move order right is an art form, by the way. I mean, it's just, uh, it's so nice. And uh, some of the old guys like uh, Victor Korchnoi, he oftentimes spent, and I'm not kidding, like 30 minutes uh, as much as 50 minutes on the first 10 moves, and he knows them backwards and forwards. It's like he's trying to get a particular outcome from yep. the opening. It's not always so easy. So the four knights English, uh, we've been seeing e2, e4, we've been, I mean, just basically everything under the sun from e3, d3, g3, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and... And a move uh, that Bodvinik and others have essayed as well include d4, e4, and it just goes on. In their head-to-head, -head, uh, these two, wow, uh, Wesley really has... A two-point lead. Yeah, very, very nice uh, uh, score against uh, Richie. Out of the five games they've played, Wesley has never lost. And uh, looking pretty good there. Yeah. Nice. Feeling confident about but the matchup. Richard's looking to get that first win. Exactly. Mm -hmm. G2, G3. And uh, we are in the, what I always thought was the main, main, main line stuff uh, of the English. English D7, D5. And this was a, re a near religion when I was playing. It was kind of a reverse dragon. Everybody... <laughs> But uh, today, against bishop g2, remarkably enough... Should take on c3, right? Or even Grishuk's bishop c5. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they're experimenting. And indeed, Wesley said, you know what? Sasha uh, is kind of like leading the parade. And bishop c5 has become a go-to move. Mm -hmm. And after castles, you can consider the knight takes c3, and you can consider retreats. I remember... I was playing against Michael Tall, and Tall uh, uh, again uh, it, it, it played the retreat. And without thinking, I played like a, a, a silly move, d2, d3, instead of waiting, uh, I should castle. And mm -hmm. uh, he kind of gave me one of those Michael Tall looks because I had, I had made a mistake in the opening, like, <laughs> you young punk, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Var, what don't we know about Bishop c5? Uh, definitely, bishop c5 has uh, been a popular move for the last uh, few years, and there, there are a lot of games played here. We can uh, check some of the theory. So bishop c5 here, now uh, we have about 235 games played, according to my database. And the main move here is actually just to castle. And uh, black, will, black has uh, some options, but again, the main move just will be to castle and d3. And here where uh, black has some options here, you can play the move h6 is, is one option here. Another move is rook e8, and also bishop b6 is played in this position as well. Mm -hmm. So after h6, for example, white can capture on d5, queen takes d5, and now play the move bishop d2. We know oftentimes in these positions white plays bishop d2 and then 
puts the bishop on c3 here. And uh, uh, we see a game of Magnus Carlsen winning with the white pieces against Anish Giri in 2022. So here rook d8 is an option, queen d3, even a5 played, but uh, engine is showing that the black position is absolutely equal. <coughs> Uh, there is another game that caught my eye, yes, are very interesting, is a scotch. So I wanted to maybe jump on that one and uh, take a look here. So this is a game MVL against Anish Giri. And M as we know, MVL lost yesterday. Mm -hmm. Pretty bad game here. So he's definitely looking forward to try to play uh, an aggressive game here and try to win this game. So that's why we see that a very, very aggressive opening choice here. So he just played the move h4 and looks like this uh, actually perhaps surprised Anish. He's been thinking for about five, six minutes already here. So in this position, uh, it started off with uh, uh, just a normal scotch here. Again, you have bishop c4 Italian, bishop b5 the Spanish, but MVL played d4, takes knight d4, knight f6. Another main move here, black can play the move bishop c5 here. So after knight f6, white has the option to play knight c3 here as well, which is considered a little bit more solid. And then we have the bishop before there. But white went for this very sharp knight takes c6, b takes c6, e5, attacking the knight. And now queen e7 is a very important move to pin the pawn. And uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to defend this pawn, for example. If you play the move f4, then you're going to run into a d6 idea. And then black will capture on e5 and will have very good counterplay. So that's why knight d5, uh, queen e2 is played, knight d5, and here is actually major, major theory here, almost 5,000 games played here, and uh, the most popular move is actually c4 for many years. A lot of games played, about 4,000 games, but, and we have played the move h4 here. There are other moves here too as well, like knight d2, for example, g3, but h4 is the second most popular move here, and we don't have any more moves after this. The point of this move is you want to secure uh, the g5 square for the bishop, so you have that, and at some point you can also play rook h3 and try to bring the rook on the third rank here. So Anish is still thinking, and looks like a pretty good opening choice so far. And definitely Anish was not expecting this, I think, from MVL. Yeah, these old uh, scotch lines can be very sharp, and if you're not well prepared, you can somehow fall into awkward mm -hmm. uh, situations. Uh, the move h2, h4 was actually introduced to, m to me by a grandmaster from Holland, um, um, John Vanderveel. Mm -hmm. And when, when John played h4 for the first time, I, I was laughing. I said, What's, <laughs> what on earth is the idea of h4? So the idea is that in this line of the scotch, this knight on d5 has a little bit of an awkward uh, problem. And yeah. oftentimes you play the move c2, c4, seeking to force the knight away from the center and onto a relatively passive square right. on b6. Once you can get the knight to b6, white usually gets a very nice advantage when the knight is just kind of stuck there. The problem with the immediate c4 is it runs into this very strange idea of bishop a6, just reminding white that he's mm -hmm. in a pin. And you think to yourself, okay, I can play b2, b3. And just as Vara was mentioning, thousands of games uh, have occurred from this position. Now, if we, uh, let's just take a look at their head to head uh, matchup, by the way. I, I knew they played a lot of games, <coughs> but oh my God, 26, 26 draws. <laughs> wow. But I'm a little impressed there that Anish has gotten the better of MVL with the three wins, five losses in right. a classic classical chess. Uh, the idea of a c4, bishop a6, again, very, very well known, and along comes h4. So I say to Johnny, what on <laughs> earth is h4? He says, well, I'm waiting for you to do something. So the idea is we're going to make a move. Yeah, g6, I go c4, you go bishop a6, oh, excuse me, c4, bishop a6. I want to go rook h3 with the idea of rook h3. A3. I loved it when I first discovered this idea. I laughed and laughed and it's laughed. It's so unusual and it right. goes against all the principles of the opening. Absolutely. <laughs> Just throw away all your yeah. opening uh, principles. As I understand it, the problem with h4 is actually the move queen e6. So neither the queen is particularly well placed on e2. Uh, blocking the bishop, and neither is the queen particularly well placed on e7, which blocks the bishop. With the move queen e6 kind of 
dodges a lot of the problems. One of the things it does is it actually gives a knight a different route. Mm -hmm. Now c4, knight moves, not so bad. Black is ready to play d6. Black is ready in a number of cases just to get on with business of bishop b7 and playing uh, castles or what have you. So h2, h4 gives the second player a large variety of possible options, and uh, we'll see what Anish comes up with. I wanted to say mm -hmm. Dinglerin. I want to jump to that game Let's too. Do, yes, Nazi. I think we both saw <laughs> A2, A3 went like, what, what is going is on? This? Uh, I'm gonna guess this was also a Richard's idea. Yes, yes, right? yes. I think that, that the trading with Ding and, uh, and Richard somehow uh, so it's made a technically not really Catalan because White hasn't played C4 yet. Correct. But to start with move A3. Right. I, I have no idea what the idea is. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the post-game interview yes. as well because, uh, first of all, is A2, A3 a novelty? Um, Avar? Uh, it's not a novelty, Yasser. But, it's not uh, a novelty. No, no, there's some games played uh, after this. Only nine games actually played after A3. Actually, the position, uh, this position occurred many, many times, almost uh, uh, 1,800 games or more, actually. Right. So A3 here, I'm trying to see some names. Actually, Mamediaro played this. Okay. The, 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 high, the high profile game is Mamediaro against uh, uh, our friend Lanier Dominguez from oh. 2015. So two very uh, very big names, yeah. Yes, and here's a block uh, played knight bd7 a couple of times. There is really not much theory here. You can play b6, knight bd7, but Duda I think knew something about this and played b5 pretty quickly. Maybe he knew this move, and this is uh, already a novelty. There are no more games played in this position after b5. Of course, the main idea is try to prevent this move c4 because without c4 it's going to be very hard for white to obtain any kind of advantage or pressure on the center or on the queen side. So that's why he played the move b5 and since you already played a3 you're not likely to spend another tempi yeah. to play this move <laughs> a4 because now black can just play b4 for example. So knight c3 played relatively quickly here by Ding Liren. I think he's still in his prep here and now he's trying to attack the pawn here. So now black has to respond here and uh, he has few options here. A6 looks like the most logical move. Right. And I think we're probably going to see this idea moving the knight either to E5 or even knight D2 here. The point of knight D2 here is if you play bishop E7, I actually can play the move E4. Right. And try to get E5 maybe, F4, knight D2, and get some space advantage and play for F5. So, but black can take on E4 here. And then we're going to capture back with this knight. Threatening knight takes f6 check, picking up the bishop on b7. So, for example, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and black will play the move bishop d5. Uh, I like this move. It's solidifying the position. Bishop is no longer going to be hanging in a lot of these variations. And the black wants to play the move knight d7 and try to prepare c5. I think once he plays the move c5, he should be able to <coughs> equalize the game here. Right. Uh, give me some of the pros to the move a2, a3, because other than maybe playing for a queen's gambit accepted style, a3, c5, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, I can imagine as white mm -hmm. I can play b4, b4 and somehow justify the move a2, a3. In the opening, when I see a move that doesn't play in towards the center, a2, a3 has nothing to do with the center, I just think it's a bad move. Uh, so tell me about the pros that is supportive of the move a3, because I'm still struggling, uh, Var. I think definitely, Yasser, the move a3 is specifically against the move c5, because right. if you play this move now, white can respond with d takes c5. Right. Now you have to capture, because Clear. otherwise after b4 I can just simply secure that pawn. Right. So you capture back with the bishop, then I play the move b4. Right. So I'm gaining a little tempo now, you have, to, you have to move the bishop now again, so bishop goes back to e7. And here I can play, for example, c4 immediately. Right. Uh, if you capture on c4, you're never going to be really able to secure that pawn because you don't really have the move b5 because of my bishop is on this diagonal. Right. So let's say the game can continue with a5, b5, knight bd7, bishop b2, 
The idea is to put the knight on d2, and the main problem here is this light score bishop. If Block can manage to play the move b6, bishop b7, rook c8, he should have no problems here. But it's not so easy here. Let's say if you play the move b6, then actually c takes d5 is a possibility. Knight takes d5, and now we see the problem here of the c6 square. White has this option to play knight d4, and then knight will go to c6. So this could be a problem here. So that's why you can't really play the move b6 in this position. So you have to play a move like knight b6, but it's not really going to help you with your development of the bishop on c8. So after knight bd2, a4, and knight a e5, white has a slightly better position once again because the bishop is still stuck on c8 here. Thank you, Var. Thank you, Var. Yeah. And I want to say I think. Pr the main idea of A3 yes. is the surprise factor. The <laughs> surprise factor. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, surprising your, your opponent and taking him out of the opening theory. Right. Okay. Uh, A2, A3, boy. Uh, I do have one question. Please. So uh, Ding did play knight D2, and Var was showing us uh, ideas with E4. Just a second, let me bring that game up. Sorry. Uh, since uh, Dudu already uh, played B5. Where are you? I which which I already liked. It's the fourth game, yes, fourth board. Exactly. Yes. There it is. Since Dudu already played b5, the move that I like because it doesn't allow white to play c4. Right. Uh, but there's one downside, right? It weakens the c5 square. True. So after knight d2, which is already on the board. Knight c3, a6. Now knight d2. Yes. Could it be possible that Ding also has an idea to play b4 and knight b3? Sure. B4, knight B3. And knight C5. Yeah, and uh, sort of sort of like, a, yeah, as Bobby Fischer said, to get squares, you got to mm -hmm. give them. So black has given the C5 square, but he's got in control of the C4 square. So let's just, uh, let's follow that line right. uh, that happened, uh, that VAR was giving us. Can we do anything you can do, I can do better kind of thing <laughs> and just... Because like, if black plays knight c4, I always have a4 ideas. Undermining everything yeah. that's going on over there. Yeah, this gets into a pretty interesting strategic channel. I, I could, I can subscribe. <laughs> I, I, I like. I wanted to bring up the game of Wesley So again. Uh, two of our tournament co-leaders going head to head, and this. What is this uh, particular defense called? It, it, I almost want to subscribe it to uh, Sasha Grishuk and say it's the Grishuk, mm -hmm. you know, English reversed. Uh, but uh, I don't know what, what what name to give it. Bishop c5, d3, h6, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop d2, queen. Queen d6, I don't think I've seen that move yeah. usually in this type of position. When you want to move the queen, it goes back to d8. It goes but, back to d8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, it, it depends. I, mm -hmm. I know what you're saying, that the queen is oftentimes right. vulnerable in the center of the board, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of think, okay, on d8, it, 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 it's less uh, chances of being uh, aggressed. Let's I guess see. it's safe queen on d6 d6, as well. bishop c3, rook d8. But now I'm thinking, what if white goes knight d2? Right. And uh, tickles the queen again. <laughs> exactly. So uh, whenever I see this move knight d2, I want to play bishop h3 as black. Mm -hmm. Just bishop h3. I'd love to play bishop h3. So I need to get my queen uh, in support of the um, h3 square. Let's say I shift, yeah? So it's pretty clear what I want to do. I want to play mm -hmm. bishop. And now you can tickle my knight or, pardon me, your, your knight bishop? can tickle yeah. my bishop. Or even pawn on e5 also can be tickled. It's technically even hanging, but Maybe I wouldn't give it up. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly uh, going to win material, but I, I hear you. I mean, there you have to be paying attention. If I were to play knight c4 after queen g6? Knight to c4, exactly. Knight to c4. Okay, um, I got to defend the pawn on e5, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not much else to be said for that. Um, bishop to d4. I, none of, no games have come up, which means that right, we, we, we've new. reached novel <laughs> uh, uh, channels uh, in, in the, the position. Um, 
Rook D8, all of the stuff as standard uh, VAR for uh, uh, the two players? Not so many games played in this position, Yasser. Yeah. So we, c we can take a look here. Sure. Only a few games I see in my database here. So the current position after Rook D8, only two games here. Uh, uh, played by one uh, one game between two grandmasters, so knight e2 just played. As you mentioned, the idea is to play knight e4. And here, black has the, black has few options here. Bishop e6 is of course one option. Wow. But then you have knight e4, queen to f8 or e7. Knight takes c5, queen takes c5, and uh, looks like white maybe has a very small advantage here. It's uh, Rook d1 now, the idea is try to create yeah. a rook c1, uh, try to put pressure on c4, but here, strangely enough, black can just take on a2. <laughs> and uh, Me like. the main line goes b4, queen b5. It's very important to prevent the move b5, otherwise if white can play b5, we'll open up the diagonal for the bishop and you can lose the pawn on b7. And here, bishop takes c6. If you take back with the queen after bishop takes e5, white is slightly better there. And if you take back with the pawn, white can play, for example, bishop d2 with the idea to play rook c5. And uh, it appears to be maybe white is slightly better in this position. Uh, but of course, you don't have to allow the move knight e4 uh, in this position. But I, oh, bishop e6 is actually played already. So he's not really afraid of the move knight e4 here. So I think we're going to see that variation after knight e4, capturing on c5. Perhaps white has a very, very slightly better position there. Very, very slightly <laughs> better position as we see the head-to-head -head scores once again. Uh, Wesley So with two yeah. victories to null uh, in their head-to-head -head, uh, matchup. Uh, just checking in on the other co-leaders games, uh, that is between Fabi and Nepo. Uh, when we left it, we saw this move, knight to f3, mm -hmm. bishop to e6, simply defending the pawn on uh, d5, asking Bobby, what's your scheme of development plan? b2, b3, bishop, um, pardon me, a6, putting the question to the bishop. And really, that's an awkward question. Because on the one hand, you want to retain the bishop, you want to play the move bishop e2, but then well, the question bishop is... Bishop d3 also possible. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. I wanted to say that once you play bishop e2, say castles, bishop b2, rook e8, let's say rook c1, rook, rook c8, the question is, what is your knight doing on c3? You might have some awkward questions to, a mm -hmm. to ask and answer. The knight can't go to b5, it's not going forward. If it goes backwards, which brought up what you you, you just said, Nasi, is so maybe you retreat to D3. D3 with the idea that in the very near future, after, for example, castles, bishop B2, the idea is that you might be able mm -hmm. to play knight E2 and swing your knight to uh, a better square, if you and will. I want to point out that Fabiana already yes. has spent uh, about 15, 16 minutes on move 12, so he might be out of the book. I wouldn't say that he's, uh, because he's so gosh darn well right. prepared. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where he's really thinking, you know, he's, he's most certainly analyzed bishop takes mm -hmm. b, bishop on b5 takes c6. Mm -hmm. Like that was like a super main alternative, right? So he's certainly been st uh, studying the positions after bishop takes c6 as well as bishop d3. And which one do I want to play? Which one do I want to play? Which one do I want to play? He eventually chose bishop d3. But by the Nepo way, this is again right away. Nepo. Yeah. Uh, is his, uh, has, has been playing yeah. just like that. His, and by uh, the way, prep is showing. Uh, again, uh, prep is showing precisely at this moment after bishop d3. I think a lot of us, uh, hands in the air, <laughs> very lazily would have played castle, castle. Yes. Right? But. Nepo is saying that at this precise moment, I need to play precisely because I know as black, if white gets in bishop mm -hmm. b2 and knight e2 and knight f4, I could play right. an isolated queen pawn position and not very nice. Sorry. I think his idea is to exchange the isolated uh, pawn very fast after, let's say, white takes knight e5, 
Good tag. And Wait. then we play bishop b2. Maybe black yeah. can play d4 right away. Okay. And so, well, in fact, uh, I, I see uh, games popping up in the database. So uh, I, one of the things I might stop uh, just for a moment and say, well, wait a minute, this bishop is not protected. I can, for example, mm -hmm. move, and there could be, unless there's a bishop takes uh, h2. I was considering but, that. Uh, to your point of what maybe wanting to trade, oh, no, no. Uh-huh. I wanted to... I wanted to uh, to play your move d4, but mm -hmm. I wanted to defend the e5 bishop with a gain of a tempo. But I could play f4. Yeah, but two key battles for the first place as our tournament co-leaders, the quad, are all playing one another, Wesley. Uh, right, Fabiano's playing uh, Napo, and Wesley's playing Richard. Exactly. Um, Nepo playing very, very quickly, Var, and he played this move, knight e5, all part of his prep, and I'm thinking it's a very precise move. Is it? I think so. I think so, yes, sir. And the move a6, actually, this is, I, I think, what caught Fabi by surprise, perhaps first time in this tournament, because so far he's been dominating in the opening stage, and he spent a lot of time after the move a6 here. Let's take a look in this position. So the main move here is actually castle. So probably Fabi was aware of that. There was a game Carlson versus Grishuk. Carlson Pragananda reported a game like this. But this a6 is uh, very interesting. And uh, you don't see too many games already after this. Only four games in my database. And here, bishop e2, as you mentioned, if you put a bishop on e2, you just don't have a good way now to improve this knight. You really need this e2 square for the knight to go to then try to go to d4 or f4. So that's why I think he didn't play this move. And uh, after bishop e2, castle, black is, black is completely fine there. Uh, for example, castle, bishop b2, you can play here rook c8 with the idea of queen e7, rook fd8. Even though you have isolated pawn, but I think you're, you're very comfortable because of this knight actually misplaced, being misplaced on c3 here. So he played bishop d3 here, and oftentimes we see this idea in this isolated pawn tarash slash positions, when the bishop is on the you play this move <coughs> 95 here. Putting pressure on the bishop, and you don't really want to give up the bishop here, so, and if you retreat now, then you're losing tempos. This is actually very bad here tactically, because now there is a move queen c7. Putting Oops. pressure on c3, and now threatening knight takes f3, picking up the pawn on h2. So, you cannot play the move bishop b2, you'll be in big trouble here. So after 95, you, really need to capture here. There is a move 92, but I'm not sure if uh, Fabi will play this move because allowing knight takes f3, g takes f3, bishop h3, that, it, doesn't look, it doesn't look that good here. Yeah, so, it doesn't look healthy <laughs> at all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, even though engine, engine thinks it's just still about equal here, but I don't think he will play like this. So after the move 95, I think we're gonna see knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, now putting pressure on the knight on c3. You're really forced now to play the move bishop b2 to protect uh, the knight. And here, uh, black has a few options here. d4 is a possibility here immediately, or you can just castle. Hmm. If you play, for example, the move like queen d6, this could run into a move like f4. Right. And then you, you don't really want to uh, allow this because after bishop c3, bishop takes c3, White is going to have the pair of the bishop. This could be very, very strong. So you don't want to play uh, queen d6. So you have two options here, uh, either d4 or castle. So if you castle, and again, you have this d4 idea always in mind. As, an, uh, as a rule, you, when you have the isolated pawn and you have an opportunity, you should be looking for this d4 idea here. So queen d2, for example, could be played. Again, after the move queen d2, white wants to play this move knight e2 here. So let's say if you just play rook c8, after knight e2, bishop takes b2, queen, bishop takes b2, queen b2, white will have a very nice um, and a pleasant advantage here. Now d5 pawn is completely blocked. You have knight, knight f4 ideas, knight can go to d4, rook fd1, you will have some nice pressure here. So that's why after queen d2, you have to do something here instead of the move rook c8. So there are some options here with d4, and also perhaps the move knight e4 will give black the equality here. Thank you, Var. 
I want to take a look at this one game between Diak and Firuja. All right. Uh, I saw that move B2. Yeah. That was a, a snap. <laughs> like what? They played the slap defense and yep. then a surprising move of B4. Yeah. And it, well, right here, this is main, main line stuff. And basically, after the move E7, E6, everybody and his brother knight plays H4, knight yeah. H4 trying to uh, tackle mm -hmm. the light square bishop. Bishop E2. A little bit off the beaten track. Okay, people mm -hmm. play this move. H7, H6. So Ferruja says, hey, look, if you try to I'm go knight now. H4, I'm ready for you. Mm -hmm. I'll play bishop H7. And then after castles, knight D7, bishop to D3. After all, this bishop on F5 is actually pretty darn good. The bishop on E2, not so good. You kind of, but This okay. is always hard to explain. Why white first spent a tempo on developing bishop on e2, right. and then spends another one on going bishop d3. Exactly. And the correct answer to that question is, yes, but I forced you to play h6. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, but I'd like <laughs> to play h6. Well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. not. We'll Some, uh, somewhere down the, the broken road, maybe the move h7, h6 is not as good. Uh, we get to this position, and I simply love this move, bishop b4. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I kind of revealed myself like I did like to play the Dutch stone wall, mm -hmm. trading off the light square bishops, potentially taking control of the e4 right. square after bishop takes c3, something I would love to do, bishop d2, bishop a5. I think I would have castled myself, but bishop a5. And right here, right now, boink. Whoa, where, where, where did that come from? Like, what? The B2, B4 uh, attacking the bishop? Like, okay, what happens if I take the pawn? Well, if you take, I am assuming we get That's to play knight idea. takes. And you play knight takes in order to protect the bishop, I take. And now you play bishop takes. Please recapture mm -hmm. my bishop. So I recapture the pawn. No, the I'll take over. Move? Yes, a swish and zook. So the move B2, B4 does not sacrifice a pawn. Uh, Ferruja didn't want to take it. No, he, he immediately He dropped retreated. back with his bishop, and after b5, we caught up with the players. The question for me, though, is after you move bishop d2, let's say um, I take, just take, yeah? Mm -hmm. take. I put the knight on e4. Probably I want to stop bishop b4. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure, but, mm -hmm. but yeah. And we just play bishop and knight versus uh, two knights. And the bishop's fine, don't get me wrong. You know, you could put your bishop on b4, you could play b3. Uh, but the whole thing is I get to play the light square. We're both Kara Khan players, yeah. so I think you can feel a certain sympathy mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. empathy uh, for this uh, line of play um, for controlling of e4 square. Uh, this game, what's your first impression? A little space, a little something for wider. I think before is a very interesting idea. Yeah. I like it now. Um, after b5, yes, it looks like black hasn't even finished development yet, hasn't that is castled true. yet. Right. And white's uh, minority rooks attack are, on the queen side is already happening. Yeah, and the rook, white's rooks are already. Um, I would say objectively it should be equal. Right. But it's, uh, it's looking. I would prefer to be white. You would prefer to. I, I think so yeah. as well. I mean, uh, let's just imagine after b5, just uh, why would I kind of prefer mm -hmm. to be white? Because after, for example, takes, takes, even if I played this move and allowed you mm -hmm. everything, e e5, and I go queen, um, uh, queen a6, uh, I really am very seriously interested in simply capturing uh, yeah, I go <laughs> pawn hunting. And even if I don't go pawn hunting necessarily like that, I may be dropping in on the seventh rank with rook to b1 to b7. So I do see more uh, attacking mm -hmm. uh, possibilities for white. So I would be sympathetic to white. But I will say that. black will also have counterplay with e5, e4, and right. will try to focus on the king side. Yeah, and very oftentimes, too, black does play Mm -hmm. Moves like d takes c4, queen takes c4, moves the knight, trades, and then ends up with some light squares mm -hmm. uh, in the center of the board. Var, what game has caught uh, your eye in, uh, in, in another one of those rounds where we're seeing a very wide variety of openings? It's not like mm -hmm. three Berlins uh, <laughs> out of five games. Absolutely, yes, sir. Some very interesting games. I wanted just to talk a little bit about this game that you sure. guys were analyzing. So just to show some of the variations after the move B4. 
So the point of before is if you just decide to capture here, yeah. white has this very nice move, knight takes d5. Right. And if you take on d2, we have the in-between move, knight takes f6 check. And here you can take back with a queen or a knight. And if we look at this position after the move queen d2 here, white will be actually slightly better here because essentially you traded your b pawn for the central pawn on d5. So you have a nice control of the center and to open line with rook b1, you can try to put some pressure. Even here, it's a very small advantage here. Black has to play the move c5. I think it's very important not to allow white to play the move c5 here because then there will be some possibilities putting a knight on d6. So this is one line why bishop before maybe it's not the best. And if we go back uh, to this position, if you take back knight takes d5, because now if you capture on before, there is knight takes b4. Why can take on d5? And if you take bishop d2, now this is actually really bad now for black here because you can play d takes e6. And now attacking the knight, again, the bishop is still hanging on d2. You, if you capture back on e6 just after knight d2, white will have a very nice advantage. So you can play the move bishop a5. Now we'll take on d7 check. Queen takes d7. And we get this position where actually after the move knight e5, white is actually much better here because the king is still in the middle of the board. And you can play the move rook a b1 and rook fc1 to put some more pressure on the b and c file. So that's the reason why after mm. the move b4, black played the move bishop c7, which is the best move here. And now he's trying to play the move knight b6 and try to put the knight on c4. White does have some problems with the light squares here, especially the bishops already off the board. So there's some weaknesses here, the e4 square, and in particular the c4 square here. So the move b5 was played, and here uh, Firuja played the best move, guys, knight b6 here. Putting uh -huh. pressure on c4 and now trying to secure that square for the knight uh, on c4. So c5, for example probably will be played, knight to c4, b takes c6, b takes c6. And even though there is a weakness on c6, it'll be very, very hard to attack this pawn. And at some point, black will be looking for some possibilities with e5 here. And here, so, white doesn't have Yasser's queen a6. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the knight on c4 uh, block, blocks that uh, possibility. So knight b6, good move. Yeah, and black is absolutely fine in that position. Yeah. And uh, maybe uh, Christian uh, uh, got one right as he was saying that uh, this was a big head-to-head mm -hmm. -head game where he was expecting that since both players are playing for the win. By the way, we did see VAR, we did say, see Diak capturing on um, C6. Is there a, a possibility of sneaking in a, a, a pawn grab, taking on C4 and then taking back on C6? Absolutely, yes, sir. You can play d takes uh, c c4 in this position. Right. For example, now if you take, you know, the queen is under attack, so you have to move the queen here. You have two options here. You can play queen to e2 or queen to c2 here. Right. So let's take a look. For example, queen c2. Then black has to recapture here. Precisely. Uh, and here white has few options. Position is just equal here. You can play the move knight a4. With the idea, try to exchange the knight and pick up the pawn on c4. But uh -huh. in that case, you will be fixing my pawn structure. So black <coughs> is castle. Precisely. Yeah. And if you go knight takes b6. Make my day. Pawn yeah. takes b6, <laughs> queen c4. And actually, a very, very nice move, I think, an important move is queen d5 here. Mm -hmm. Trying to trade the queens. And uh, uh, you can take back with even the c pawn there, rook fc1. And here again, once again, we see this idea of the, the discovery check, a very strong tactical idea. So it looks like you have two attackers on c6, but if you take, you're going to run into the move bishop h2, discovery check, picking up the queen here. Without this move, rook fc8, actually, uh, white would have had some serious advantage here because there's no good way to protect the c6 pawn. Thank you for that little one point. Yeah, there. And uh, just to boldly point out mm -hmm. the obvious, uh, our number one seed, Ali Reza Faruja, defending Grand Chester uh, champion, three games, one point. Uh, kind of that a slow is, start. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, that's an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, slow start indeed. I'm sure his ambitions, uh, he might have been satisfied with two out of three. Yeah. But. Uh, one out of three, no way. I'd like to turn our attention 
to uh, the game between uh, MVL and Anish Giri because when we left it, we left it at the move H to mm -hmm. H4, very topical um, scotch. And again, I always felt that the move Queen E6 was the proper response to H4. Mm -hmm. D7, D6 by Anish, certainly one of many uh, possible choices. But I must say that the position that MVL has achieved, mm -hmm. I like white. And after the move C4, Knight B6, this is, this is playing into white's hands. Whenever I'm able to kick this knight to what I want to say is the lesser square, mm -hmm. uh, I feel that uh, black gets a, a, a difficult position. After the, the last move, Bishop H3, in the immortal... Quite is pressing. Yeah, exactly. And in the immortal words of my uh, uh, trainer, Nikolai Minev, gift me the pawn. <laughs> <laughs> gift me the pawn on uh, C6. Bishop takes C6. I'm assuming rook C8, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming B2, B3. And uh, again, if we, you know, you, you, you better press, you better do something very, very concretely in the next few moves as black, because if you give white all the time he needs to play bishop e3, castles mm -hmm. long, which is kind of nice putting the king over there, mm -hmm. put your bishop on d4. The bishop will simply lord over the position on the d4 square. It Both will white bishops are looking good. Be, yeah. yeah. So Anish. And Black's pawn structure is not ideal. And exactly. Now, I see that this is still, uh, we're in the throes of theory. Uh, here, as I see, we've, we've got games, but uh, VAR, isn't this one of those uh, positions statistically that favors white nicely? Absolutely, yes. And white is slightly better here. And again, if uh, you give white a few more moves, bishop e3, castle, rook fd1, rook ac1, I think it will be just a very big advantage here. So right. Anish needs to play for the quick d5 at some point. Without the move d5, he can never equalize this position here. Right. So I think he will be looking forward to maybe playing bishop f6 next, castle, and he really needs to get this d5 moving because d5 will open up the position of the bishop and also finally will bring this knight on b6 into the game here because with this structure, a2, b3, c4, the knight on b6 is really, really misplaced and very passive. But let's take a look now what white can try to do to try to make it more difficult for black to play the move d5. Okay. So bishop, uh, bishop uh, e7, yeah. and um, let's see here. So you have two options. You can cancel, but again, h4 pawn is saying, so probably he will start with the move bishop e3, developing the bishop. And um, here you can play a castle or even d5 immediately. But most likely, let's look at, he will play castle. And here white has some options here. For example, you have the move rook d1, you can start with, or you can try to castle as well here. So let's say rook d1, putting pressure on d6, rook fd8. And we see some problem with this h4 pawn here because you know, in a lot of these lines you actually have to castle and just, you know, just give up the pawn on uh, h4 because black is ready now to play this move d5. We don't have time for, let's say, to play the move h5 because then after d5, uh, Black is just equalizing here. This is an important moment in a game here. You don't have that time to play this move. So you can cancel here, for example. Bishop takes h4, sacrifice the pawn, and then you have this idea a4. Whoa. Very concrete now, because now you're threatening to play a5 and attack the knight on b6. Wow. And win and either a7 or d6 pawn, I guess? Yes. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there is the, the, there's actually a line where you give up the a7 pawn, bishop e7, a5. Now, if you go, you don't want to go knight a8. It will be very bad. Bishop takes a7. So you go knight d7. And now <coughs> bishop takes a7, rook a8, attacking the bishop. And if the bishop comes back to b6, now knight takes b6. A takes B6, you go Rook A, B8. It's, it's a very long line. It looks like white might have a small advantage here, but uh, after D5, it's, it's, it's not so clear because black still has a pair of the bishops. Back to you guys. Thank you for that, uh, Vara. Anish is one of those pacers. <laughs> you know, uh, they get up, uh, certain players get up from the board and they do a lot of their calculating while walking 
on a stage, Ani certainly belongs in their category of yeah. pacers. Uh, by the way, we've really been enjoying your uh, uh, questions as you channel, uh, challenge our panel, blah, 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 easy for <laughs> me to say, and there's a way for you to join the conversation. Right, you can uh, tweet us uh, by using a hashtag SuperBetchHasClassic, or you can send your questions on our YouTube channel or Twitch channel at uh, St. Louis Chess Club. Absolutely. I'm looking at the game of Richard Rapport versus Wesley So, again, where all of our four co-leaders are uh, clashing head-to-head. -head. I'm looking at this move A2, A4, and I'm kind of a little bit questioning that move. Uh, uh, many times when I'm white and in these Englishes, and I've been white in these Englishes mm -hmm. like my entire career, I've always aspired to be playing the moves B4 and B5. Mm -hmm. So normally speaking, I'm playing the move A3, A3 as a preparatory move to being able to play B4 and B5. And I've always eschewed, uh, avoided playing a move like A4 because if my opponent plays A5, and I'm not saying A5 is the best move here or anything like that, it just could put the kibosh right. on my whole B4, uh, B5 plans. I'm never going to get that in. Maybe in this case I'm going to play for Knight C4, but okay, that's mm -hmm. a different kettle of fish. And um, I actually like A5 right here for You one. do, yeah. you do. And I'm just saying that, yeah, uh, that, uh, you know, I, I won a square, so to speak, but black has two. Uh, black has these, especially the D4 square. I and think he did that, play it. And he did play it. Let's uh, throw the ball uh, to Christian in Bucharest. <clears throat> Thank you, Yasser. Uh, just to give you guys an update on what's happening in the game between Fabiano Caruana with the white pieces and Jan Nepomniachtchi with the black pieces. Uh, before uh, the round started, I have to say I was looking at the energy of uh, the players. And, you know, I said at the beginning of the show that Jan probably is a bit disappointed about the missed chance yesterday in his game against uh, Ding Li Ren, but um, he wasn't showing it. He looked very relaxed. He was uh, looking ready for a battle. And let's not forget, he is coming uh, from a world championship match. His preparation right now is at the highest level. And despite the fact that Ding Li Ren for uh, the majority of the match played the move E4, so Jan didn't have to show what his preparation was against 1D4, you know that he has something in the back. And this is exactly what's happening right now. He's showing residual preparation from his world championship match. And in fact, let's take a look at the big moment in uh, the early stage stages of uh, this game after the move a6 by uh, Jan and by the way up to this point up to the move a6 Fabiano has spent one hour has spent absolutely no time he had one hour and 34 minutes on his clock so he gained time he was definitely showing that he's ready for this variation the same with Nepo Nepo did not spend uh, any uh, minutes on his clock either but after the move a6, for the next move, Fabiano spent almost 20 minutes. He played the move bishop to d3. The obvious alternative is to take on c6 and change the structure in the position. Now, there's some interesting ideas behind this change of structure, but it simply just doesn't work for white because black, after knight to a4, for example, you need to focus, by the way, on the square c5. You have uh, to take control of the square c5 if you can in time. The problem is that white just simply is not in time. For example, castle, bishop to b2, give me one more move. For example, rook to e8, and I will play rook to c1. I will follow that up with knight to c5, and I will take control of the dark squares on the queen side, which is going to give me a tremendous strategical advantage. But what black can do instead of rook to e8, for example, is to immediately uh, take the full center with the move c5. And now we have the hanging pawns. But the thing is, this position and the hanging pawns uh, in the center on the c and d files are extremely well protected for black. The bishop on e6, the knight on f6 is doing a tremendous job. You have very good bishop on b2, but you don't have any targets as white. And I will just simply develop my pieces behind those hanging pawns and your pieces as white, they're just not on their ideal squares. So this would actually give black quite significant um, advantage chances in this game. That's why Fabiano, after a long thing, 
played the move bishop to d3, dropping back with the bishop. Knight to e5 came immediately from Jan, so he was definitely still within his preparation. This is what I'm talking about. This is preparation for the World Championship match. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, bishop to b2, and by the way, right now Jan has thought for a very long time and he just made a move that I did not anticipate. I was just about uh, to give a monologue about why is he thinking, why is he just simply not playing the move Short Castle, because Short Castle is by far and the only move that has been played in this position. And right now, Queen to D2, this is the critical position in the game. You have to know this move or you have to calculate this move, Knight to E4. If you give me one more move as white, I will get a not decisive but uh, quite a significant lead in uh, a strategical play for white. For example, if you play the move rook to c8, I just simply drop back, and now we can see the idea behind this move, queen to d2, defend the bishop on b2, and if we do exchange these two bishops, well, you're going to have huge problems because of your isolated queen spawn on d5. You don't have any attacking capabilities on the king side as black, so right now, you're in trouble. You cannot allow me to exchange these bishops after the move queen to d2. That's why you have to play the move knight to e4. If you know this, you're most likely going to equalize the position quite easily. Knight takes e4, take on e4, take on um, e5, and now I have a couple of options as black. But we see the presence of the opposite uh, color bishops on the board, limited material. There's no imbalances in the structure I can take with the queen, for example. And this is just going to lead to a very uh, equal position. Jan decided to play rook to c8. Is this signaling the fact that he wants more from this position? Perhaps he wants to play for an advantage? But now I will just simply go queen to d2. I'm trying to understand what his idea is. He can go castle, but once again, this transposes to what I said shouldn't be Jan's preference in uh, this game because of knight to e2 and strategic problems for a uh, black in this position. So after, for example, queen to d2, let's just go back to the game. After queen to d2, uh, not castle, rook to c8, queen to d2. Knight to e4 is an option once again, but this is a, a slightly different situation because you don't have castle on the board. So what's the consequence of that? Well, your g7 pawn is not protected. You cannot take, for example, on e4, take on e5, and now recapture on d3 because the g7 uh, pawn is unprotected. I will snatch that off the board, and that's going to give me a tremendous advantage. So I'm looking at the position of the rook to c8. Sure, I understand it's still within margins of equality, but after queen to d2, maybe perhaps, you know, Jan is taking a slight misstep in this position. Still very balanced, still is going to be very difficult for Fabiano to get his first victory in classical chess against Jan Nepomniachtchi, but definitely an intriguing battle ahead in this close matchup. Guys, back to you. Thank you, uh, Christian. Some subtleties there in that game of Fabi uh, uh, worth investigating. Uh, just saw that the MVL uh, is trying to make mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. of his h4 pawn uh, instead of uh, the engine prescribed move of bishop e3, um, as pointed out by, by uh, Verujan, by Var, um, MVL said, look, I put my pawn on h4, let me justify my earlier play. If you want to take on g5, bishop takes g5, h takes g5, you might be doing me a favor. That would be I might very be, good for white. yeah. I could, on a on a good day, castle and maybe play rook h4, and who knows, put pressure on the h7 pawn. But if you if you have to play f7, f6, then the move bishop <laughs> g5 is really fully justified, because in this case, uh, you just put your pawn on f6, and you're no longer, right. yeah, you you don't like this. You've undermined your bishop on e6. So is there a way for Anish to take advantage? What about just h6? h6, okay, Same well. Same idea as f6, but better version, right? All right, yeah, then, we, we, then we're going to trade trade. And maybe, you know, uh, there was this old guy, you know, uh, Jose Raul Capablanca, mm -hmm. and he, uh, like many world champions, gave the world an insight to chess. And one of the things that Capablanca said was pawn islands. Right. 
he always talked about pawn islands. And he said, whoever has the most pawn islands stands worse, mm -hmm. full stop. So in this position, you could talk about white as having two pawn islands. The F2, G2, H4 as being one pawn island, mm -hmm. a group of pawns. The A2 to C4 being another group mm -hmm. of pawns. But then you look across the board and you say, well, black has three, three. So black pawn islands. Be worse. <laughs> Bingo. And even though, you know, it's one of those things that's kind of subtle and you've got a lot to prove, yeah. I mean, Capablanca did have a point after rook to d4 and rook to d1. Uh, somehow the isolated pawn on a7 mm -hmm. can turn out to be weakness. We'll I see if we can exploit it. I think black has to play it. very uh, carefully here, maybe play d5 right away. Right away? Okay. Right away to get rid of... Some pawn islands. <laughs> okay. Try. Take it with the pawn, I presume? Yes. Okay. And I got to, you're frightening <laughs> me. I got I to gotta step off the... Actually, we have an update in the game. Anish played d5 without h6. Whoa. Okay. Things are definitely heating up. And just as we were getting ready to go on our first break of the day, uh, no h6, no f6, immediate d5. Well, is there is that a connection? Is that a logic connection there uh, that you that you play bishop e seven and then d five? Maybe he was not expecting bishop g five, okay. and if White played bishop e three, he was prepared to play d five anyways. Okay. So he decided to play d five here too because he's not afraid of bishop takes e seven. That won't change anything for Black. Okay, so bishop g five. logical. D five. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll play ball. Okay, we take. King takes. Take yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll take. Maybe and we can take with a knight. Take with a knight. Okay. Well, then, I do simply have split pawns, and this is yes. just going to be a long-term advantage. Black's going to try to exchange everything. Knight c3 and bishop d5 and to equalize as fast as possible. And uh, no, in, in the words of somebody uh, famous. You're just going to suffer. <laughs> you, you'll suffer for a long time. You've got these uh, split pawns on the on the um, uh, uh, queen side to deal with. I don't know, Var. Uh, what do you What do you think of? Oh, actually, you have the other game in front of you. Uh, what are you looking at, Var? Yeah, well, that game you guys were talking about. You cover most of the ideas. It's just it's very 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 slightly better for white. But I think Bishop G5. The main difference for that game is with the Bishop on G5. Uh, if you had a bush, bishop on e3, it allow you the a4, a5 plan. But without the bishops, you don't have that idea. But there is a very nice trick in this position. I know you guys were analyzing this, and you were uh, thinking about the move knight c4 here. But here, black has a very, very pretty tactic here. Bishop takes c4, d takes c4, and bishop takes f2 check. So Hello. you cannot take with the rook because you're going to lose an exchange after queen takes d1. Rook takes d1, now you're losing an exchange. Uh, rook takes d1. And if you take back with the king, then actually king to, uh, queen to c5 check, and black is going to pick up the queen on d1. So uh, white needs to be careful. That's why I think we haven't seen the move here. I like this move a, uh, a5, fixing the, the white pawn here, not allowing any a5 advances, and also securing the b4 curse. So I think perhaps here now, uh, Rapport realizes he cannot play the move uh, knight c4, and it's not so clear how he can continue because if you don't play knight c4, that means you don't have a way to get rid of this bishop or this bishop, and uh, both of these bishops are well placed here, and I think Wesley is pretty happy after the opening outcome here, and once again, he's been very, very solid and getting really good positions out of the opening. That knight c4, bishop takes f2, that's one of the nicest traps mm -hmm. I've seen in a long time because it's one of those moves that comes out of nowhere. Bishop yeah. takes f2, check with that beautiful queen c5. Thank you for that, Var. That's a nice trap indeed. As we get ready for our first break, uh, let's uh, tell um, you what uh, the good folks at Q Boutique have. This is a premier roll-up vinyl board. It's really, really nice. Features the World Chess Hall of Fame logos in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put it up oh. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, on the corner squares. Uh, very, very, very nice uh, for those of you tournament aficionados. 
who like uh, to take your sets with you. And uh, easy packaging, easy storing. So uh, go check out QBoutiqueSTL.com uh, and secure your uh, Premier uh, roll-up board. As we go on break, we have a feature to share. And I think everybody has this question. How do you recover from a very, very long classical game? Well, let's ask the players and see what their answers. This tournament is very long and very taxing physically. How important is it for you to relax and re-energize after each and every game? The games are extremely tiring, of course. As we, as we go with the tournament, it gets more and more tiring. And also there is lots of um, emotions and lots of um, physical exhaustion, basically. So eventually you're going to run out of energy from, from every possible aspect and then you're just going to be able to that. I think the best players are the ones who who can cope with this situation, or basically they reach the situation as late as possible in the tournament, or who can cope with it uh, the best and who can run their, uh, their way through the fatigue and the, and the bunch of errors that will eventually creep in and, um, and they can bounce back uh, quickly. It's important uh, if you think differently, see, see my games from the match. Yeah, of course. I need to rest uh, after this long and tough championship match. I didn't expect it to be so tough than I expected. But well, today after the opening ceremony, I think I was uh, get into the this tournament. I'm ready for tomorrow's game. Yeah, I think very important. Say it's at least half of what the most important thing you need to do during a tournament. You need confidence and a lot of rest, a lot of sleep. Your brain cannot function without getting a good night's rest. So you have to balance it with preparation. During tournaments, a lot of things can happen, mistakes happen. Uh, so you kind of need to be ready in those big moments. Yeah, I think classical chess is the only format where you have just one game to prepare for, and that really makes a difference because you can focus on the particular player or the particular color and uh, you know, bring your best ideas and have the time to work them out and uh, get them into your system. So I think that's, uh, that's quite exciting. And, uh, you know, despite uh, the rapid and blades catching on, you still see uh, what classical chess has to offer and uh, the kind of spectacular games we, we see. Uh, yeah, for me, sleeping is very important. You should have to sleep at least eight, nine hours because it, you will play for six, seven hours. So it, you have to have a lot of rest. If you're tired, you cannot mentally be ready and think. So it's very important physically also and mentally. No, definitely I prioritizing uh, after the games, uh, you know, uh, getting some rest and getting ready for the next games. And obviously I'm also doing that on a daily level uh, with uh, physical sports and trying to increase my, my stamina and, and such to, uh, to be ready for tournaments that are, you know, tough and quite exhausting. Okay, rest time is important probably for every player because they need some rest and to prepare for the next opponent. I think it's almost like the second most important after just playing good chess. Yeah, sometimes you, you know, there are of course strong emotions involved in the games and um, you, have to, you have to recover. Sometimes you have to, you know, lose, uh, forget about the lost game. I think we saw from the match that when, when people get tired, they're, you know, they're starting to make decisions that are atypical of them. They, they make mistakes that they normally wouldn't make. So stress and tiredness, that can really play a huge role in terms of lowering your quality or like at those critical moments, you know, when, especially when you're low on time and sometimes you, you have to like switch to instinct and you just need like your full capacity. So if, if you're a bit tired, if you're a bit stressed, these things, they, you might not even realize it, but they really can play a huge role.
Welcome back to our live coverage of the Superbet Chess Classic. Here are our current standings. All right, let's take a look at our standings. We have four leaders, Fabiano Caruana, Yanni Pomnichi, Wesley So, and Richard Rapper. They're all facing each other today. Absolutely. And then with 50%, we have champ uh, world champion Ding Liren and Anish Giri. And trying to catch up in the tournament, Firuja, MVL, Duda, and Diak. Nice. And as we just uh, jump uh, into the rounds, we can see these these head-to-head -head matchups that you just talked about. Richard Rapport, Wesley So, two of our co-leaders facing off, as well as Fabi and Neville. All right. All right. As we jump into uh, the round, I there's some, let's call it, controversy going on here. I really think that MVL has a, what I would call, long-term advantage. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much easier to play white, whereas the chess engines kind of say you got nothing to be proud of. And I'm sitting there, you know, like, you know, <laughs> pounding the table and saying, no, it's not true, it's not true. I actually have some serious advantage. Your, your thought, no, is chess, it serious or chess not? Chess engines are always taking our excitement away. <laughs> I know, right? And the mystery as well. Like, do you, do you think white has a serious advantage? Serious, no, but a tiny bit advantage. It's more a pleasant position, but I think it's closer to equality. Wow, Var, jump right in. Uh, tiny or serious? <laughs> no, very, very small advantage, if See? any advantage, actually. Even yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I would say, for sure, I would, I would pick white 9 out of 10. Yeah, there's still some dynamics here, and you're like a one or two moves away, Yasser, here, just from having that nice grip on a position. Right. And we can check some of the lines here to Please. see why. And uh, so after bishop e7 played here, again, uh, perhaps it's bishop g5, bishop e7 maneuver here, we were, uh, you know, we we're thinking that bishop e3 would have been a better choice here to have this bishop on a strong diagonal here with this a4, um, a4, a5 idea. But he played bishop g5 here. And it, 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 now the game continued with d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes e7. So now king takes e7 will be played. And the, if you play the move knight e4 here with the idea to put a knight on c5, then black should play the move c5 here and then c4. Another option here would be to play the move knight b4 here. So most likely I think we're going to see the move bishop d5 played. And when I was looking at this position, I thought after cd, king d2, if white can get a knight e2, knight e4, he should have some advantage. But even, even that position, it doesn't look like that much here. Let's say rook c5, knight e2, king is very well placed on d6. And every time you put a knight on d4, black can simply just play the move bishop d7, now <coughs> restricting the squares of the knight, and also play the move a5 next. And it's going to be very difficult to make much progress here. Let's say rook hc1, I can play a5 and very hard to get this a3 before idea going as well. So, and computer shows uh, zero, zero, zero here. Wow, uh, intriguing. I wasn't looking at the move bishop takes d5 though, Var. I was looking more at the move rook c1. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look. Rook, a, rook c1 here. Yeah. Okay, let's see, rook c1 and here, uh, a few different ways black can continue. Knight before is one idea, but even just simple capture. Knight takes c3, rook takes c3, and a very important move now, c5. Again, just in time to... Trying to play this move c4 here. Right. And in order to prevent that, you have to play um, bishop e2, perhaps, to control the c4 square, and then rook hd8. We see black has really good development mm. now here. It will be very no, hard no. to get a grip on the position here. Exactly. So... Uh, and that's not only only move here, knight c3. You also have the move knight b4 here as well too, if you want to keep some pieces on the board, knight b4 and rook h d8 as well. All right, uh, those computers, those pesky computers. Let's just jump into the game of Fabi and Nepo for a moment because mm -hmm. this game between these, uh, well, um, uh, current leaders, current leaders, uh, it's the it's the kind of clash that I like. I mean. Um, the strategic battles, this battles of ideas. And when you look at the position, you kind of think to yourself, okay, it's pretty balanced, uh, black should be happy, till you see the move f2, f4. And then you sort of like, well, I'm not 100% sure, because uh, you, you, you most certainly don't 
want to play into the bishops, the, the, the two bishops, because I'm just thinking, Unless yeah, you, you can, can put a knight. Yeah. yeah, you can put a knight on e4, but I just really like this, uh, the lord of the board, mm -hmm. if you will, this bishop lording over things in the center of the board. And if you go back with your bishop, I don't care. We're going to put it back on b8. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you could, if you could put it here on a good day, everything's looking really good. But then you kind of like, well, just a second. Um, f4, f5 is one possibility, but we've always been looking at this idea of bringing the knight to d4 as well as you know this bishop. And you start to, yeah. yeah, you start to feel that maybe white has a little something in the position. And the move f4 has uh, stopped uh, Nepo. Yeah, he's which is, a dip thing. you know, like, yeah. like that. that's a victory in and of itself. The yeah. fact that, you know, Nepo's not pacing and he's actually at the board thinking. And the move f4 is a challenge for what is going on in Nepo's mind facing the move f4. Actually, f4 is the best move, Yasser, because uh, it's also a very necessary move to play because there is no good way now to prevent the black from playing the move d4 here and completely equalize the game here. For example, we can check the move with, if you play queen d2 in this position, if you don't play the move f4, if you are afraid, you think it's a weakening move, you play the move queen d2, then simply d4. Right. It just immediately equalizes the game. You no longer have an ID2 idea because now D takes E3, will be attacking your queen, and That's then tempo. you're losing a piece actually in this line. So after D4, you, you, you can capture here, but as we know, oftentimes when I play D4 and let's say capture back, it simplifies the position. It's going to be uh, pretty much impossible to claim any kind of advantage here right. for white. Knight uh, A4, queen F4 here, queens will come off the board next, and... Uh, and position will simply simplify, and black no longer has that isolated pawn on d5 here. So I think f4 move is a is a very precise move. It's a very challenging move, and it shows that Fabiano is still trying to play for a win here. But position is equal here. Bishop b8 is one option. I know you were looking at that. Bishop d6 is another move that is playable here. Uh, with idea to control this diagonal, perhaps to play bishop c5 at some point. So knight e2. Right. Makes a lot of sense. And now queen to e7 here. Queen is very well placed in this position on e7 because, first of all, you're connecting your rooks. You have some options with bishop a3. I think you would be okay with exchanging this b2 bishop here. And also, at some point, you're applying pressure on e3 as well here. So the line can continue with h3 here. Bishop d7, for example, putting pressure on e3 here. Bishop d4. Rook takes c1. Queen takes c1, rook c8, attacking the queen, and uh, after queen b2, uh, there, there are options like bishop a3, bishop c5 as well. With the pawn on e3, there are always going to be some contraplay because it's weak here, so that's why black is absolutely fine in this position. Thank you, uh, Var, for that. A uh, game that kind of slipped away from us right. a little bit, uh, Ding Liren versus Duda. Uh, I'll go back to this position where a3 and knight c3 and uh, b5, uh, this b7, b5, especially as an anti-Catalan mm -hmm. weapon, I have a certain sympathy for it, I must say, and after a6, knight d2. Now, why did I go back so far? Because we've got a lot to go ahead, because it's almost like everything that happens from here on out uh, is a very forcing, yes. clear path. The move knight d2 has a singular purpose. We're going to play the move e2, e4, which uh, Duda allowed. He played knight e7, e4, and all of these moves came pretty much forcing. There was a trade on f6, there was a trade on b7, queen f3. So it all looks as if white right. has a certain advantage after all. He's the first to connect his rooks. He's made the break in the center, and he's flexing mm -hmm. this, and he's doing that, and you're all gung-ho. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, even without the c4, the position still looks very much Catalan type of position for white. Yeah, but it, there's really nothing that wrong with black's yeah. position either. At mm -hmm. this current moment, 
The only thing is there's a pawn on c7, mm -hmm. which we can defend, and there's lots of ways of defending it. In fact, if we were reach into the position and, and withdraw, uh, subtract the c2 mm -hmm. pawn and the c7 pawn, we'd say black is fine. It's yeah. an isolated queen pawn and nothing could be done. So everything that white has done since a2, a3, he's achieved. The question is, has he achieved anything at all? Queen d7, bishop e5, rook d8, rook D1, and here Is it comes. White planning to play D5 eventually? Possibly. Possibly, uh, taking advantage of the fact that he's maybe mm -hmm. uh, more harmoniously mm -hmm. developed in the center. But here it comes, knight yeah. D5. That is a kind of an in-your-face kind of move. Uh, just you don't want to trade on D5. If you were winning a pawn, it would be everything mm -hmm. that we would want to do, right? We would be very, very happy until we see the move rook c6, and oops, nobody's interested in trading off the c7 pawn. So the move knight d5 is a rather in-your-face kind of move, because if you if you allow black to follow up the move knight d5 with rook c6, he's absolutely fine. So do you see some advantage for ding? Because at the moment... I wanted to play knight e4, but yes. as you mentioned, rook c6 still looks good, even after knight e4, just and, right away. Right. Uh, 94 uh, rook c6, I, I absolutely agree with you. I also somehow mm -hmm. that Fabiano game where I played <laughs> f5, here I kind of played f6. You know, white spent time going bishop c1 to f4 to e5, and he's going to go backwards, right? Yeah. Now he's just, he's just, he's just going to go backwards. But your point of rook c6 is well made maybe queen c6, something to be said mm -hmm. for queen c6 as well. So at the moment, I think that dude has just been rolling with all the punches, and he's not unhappy. There is one idea there, please. guys. Sorry for interrupting. No, there, no, uh, no, jump in, Mark. It's bar. actually knight d5. Perhaps knight d5 is actually very slightly inaccurate here. Oh, really? Queen c6 was, I think, a better try here because of this idea. If you play knight d5, which you already did, White must take on d5 in order to obtain any kind of advantage here. If you play knight d4, rook c6, as you mentioned, black is doing absolutely fine there, and the knight is well placed. And you're never really going to be able to play the c4. The, it's going to take you a long time. So the point here is knight queen takes d5, five. queen takes d5, which you were looking at, Yasser. Queen g4. But there yeah. is this move, queen g4 now, putting pressure Double on g6, attack. forcing you to play f6 or g6, and in this case, actually, you have the bishop c7 move yeah, wins. winning. So this yeah. actually makes a big difference because now you're going to be forced to take back with a pawn right. on d5. And in that case, I stand white has yes. a small plus in this position because the rooks are not very well placed. If no. they were on a back rank, you already had a rook on an e-file, you would be able to uh, uh, easily equalize here. Still, there are some, some ideas here. For example, the move bishop f4 he can start with here and uh, try to control the e-file here. So you, you need some moves here to organize your defense here. You have some weaknesses on c7, on d5. If you play a move like c6, it's going to be hard to bring the rook back on b8 here, for example. So here, bishop f8 can be played, and now white can play rook d3 with the idea to bring the rook to e3 here, try to get the control of the e-file. Again, you don't have rook e6 because I can capture, and then you have the problem with the c7 pawn, and you don't really want to take back with the pawn here because then you're going to have a permanent weakness here, and there will be a lot of pressure against that pawn. So it's not so easy here to... Uh, stab stabilize stabilize yeah. the position here. So yeah. that's why I think it's very important for Ding Liren here to play the move knight takes d5. He will have a very small advantage here, but black needs to be very, very accurate to try to equalize. Thank you for that, Var. And uh, our challenge mm -hmm. to our viewers is coming uh, to fruition as we have our first uh, tweets from social media. And this one is from Rafal Snook. Snook. At YouTube. All right, the question is what do you think about adding chess 960 tournament, classical rapid, as a grand chess tour event? I love it. Seriously, yeah. I love chess 960. I think it just brings a completely different dynamic. You just take all of this opening preparation mm -hmm. and say, you know, forget about that, just, play, just chess. play chess. Yes. Exactly. I love our uh, uh, Fisher Showdown mm -hmm. here that we do nine, in nine St. Louis, uh, 960. Uh, yeah, and I think the players enjoy it too. It's a 
it's a kind of a holiday from their preparations, <laughs> yeah. right? They don't wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is <laughs> turn on their computer and say, let me remember my, my uh, uh, files. But that is coming up, at, it will happen in September? Yes, yes. here okay. in St. Louis. Uh, but as far as, ha ho as holding a grand chess tour event, um, if you have some sponsors in mind, uh, let, uh, do send them along because we'll uh, be happy. And further tweets. This one is from Stan, the swim man. <laughs> and the question is, I, st I still can't figure out, is there a luck factor in chess? Or is it only the case of someone making the mistake, another waiting to give a kiss to Kasparov, like <laughs> Yasser once said? <laughs> right. Uh, very good it, question. It's a very good question. And unfortunately, yes, there is a luck factor. Mm -hmm. And no, there isn't a luck factor. <laughs> Chess is one of those games where, you know, open cards, you know, so there shouldn't be anything like luck in chess, uh, but it happens all the time. And uh, one of those moments that you feel like, oh, I've been really lucky, is when somebody walks headlong into your preparation. Right. It's just like you, you, you have this beautiful setup. Uh, I prepared it for, for, for VAR, but, Christian is my victim, mm -hmm. right? So uh, there's that luck when your preparation is right on, somebody uh, walks right into uh, something that, that you've uh, prepared, and that exists. There's mm -hmm. just no, nothing around it. What about you? What do you think about luck in chess? You feel lucky? <laughs> <laughs> I would also say that uh, when we do the drawings of pairings, there can be luck example, involved. Exactly, absolutely. If you get more white pieces, that's a big advantage in right. tournaments like this. Exactly. So and I think some luck factor. I think VAR can talk to that as well. Sometimes you have a particular opponent, just one particular guy or gal, where you like lose five games and you draw five. Like, but you only lose when you have the black pieces. Mm -hmm and you get paired in the tournament where you have white and suddenly you have this kind of confidence, well, now I don't have to lose to uh, the guy who's always uh, killing me. Uh, Var, luck in chess? Absolutely, there, there is some luck in chess and uh, getting that crucial breakthrough, I think is very important to win any big tournaments. Like for example, myself, I was very close a few times to win the US championship, but just couldn't finish it. Just that final touch wasn't there. And speaking about uh, particular opponents, like for example, for many years I was struggling against Gadakamski. I always had the black pieces, I would play the French defense. It was a big fight, but somehow he would get the better of it. And uh, finally, I managed to win with black in a French defense in the 2017 US championship by uh, just turning it around and just being a little bit more confident in, in my abilities to finally win against him. Yeah. And uh, so luck, and then other times you feel there's no luck in chess. Like yes. your opponent's just playing really well, got all of the answers, <laughs> and there's nothing, nothing there. And uh, one more uh, challenge to, this one is from uh, Jeremy Jesse from YouTube who asks, Do you think it's worth the effort for someone ranked 1000 to study Queen's Gambit theory, or is it too much to study seriously? First of all, all study is good. Yes. End of story. Regardless yeah. whether it's you're studying your tactics or you're studying your end games, all study is good. Um, where you're at at a thousand, I wouldn't suggest that your your opening theory mm -hmm. should be your target. I would suggest end games. End games are like cheating. You're going to get into end games. You might as well know them inside and out. And when you're only a thousand, it means that you still have a lot a lot of ending work to uh, iron out. So iron out your endings, and those, your, your knowledge of your endings are gonna lead you to the type of openings uh, that you'll find attractive, because there, there are certain end games that you really like to play. Like mm -hmm. you liked, you know, these, these formations, end game formations where your pawn chain seems to extend across the board. You might find yourself discover yourself to be a natural born French defense player because in a lot of French defenses you get these engaged pawn structures that go all the way across the board. So study your end games, it might lead you, hopefully, uh, to find uh, your favorite openings. How about you uh, for Jeremy there? Got some suggestions for I him? completely agree with you, Yasser. Oh, you're just, <laughs> oh, you're just so smart. <laughs> uh, yes, I think uh, at 
level 1000, even 1500 and higher. Exactly. Your focus shouldn't be mainly on the openings. No. If you know the main ideas in the opening, which is try to control the center, develop pieces and castle, that should be enough. And you should focus on working on your calculating skills, how to, you know, doing tactics, a lot of tactics. Right. And cannot emphasize this enough, end games. Right. If you're good at end games, you're going to improve your rating so fast. Exactly. That was my strategy. When I was young, me too. I, I was lucky I had a good coach who was mostly working with me on end games. Mm -hmm. So my goal was in almost every game to quickly exchange right. queens yes. and get to the end game where I knew general ideas and my op opponents didn't. Right. Yeah. Coach, jump in uh, with some suggestions for Jeremy. I uh, absolutely agree with whatever everything you say, guys. And I, in particular, when I get, let's say, some new students around that level, the first thing I have this file of about 20 must, you must know endgame positions, just to make sure to cover some king and pawn endgame, bishop endgames, rook endgames. Just make sure you know your bas basics endgames first. And then I would recommend do tactics daily to get better. And then at the end, also spend a little bit of time studying openings. But definitely improving your endgames would be a big factor to to get better at chess and to doing lots of lots of tactics. Well, Var, could I put you on the spot for just a moment there? Because I think what you said was really, really important that you have in your files, your, 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 for your students, you work them, and you say, you guys, gals, you need to have these 20 endings. Have you put that out on the internet somewhere and said to folks, these are the 20 endings that you really should know inside and out? Can people look, whether it be a video or whatever? Uh, I've done some YouTube videos for the right. St. Louis Chess Club where I cover some of this position, but it wasn't like a particular course where I show all these positions. Right. Usually if people want to take some private lessons, I show them all these positions, maybe lesson one or two, I go over this uh, important end game positions with them. Exactly, so 20, and I know there was this, it was very nice, I think it was John Bartholomew who had uh, said something like there's a hundred end games, there's a mm -hmm. book, a uh, hundred end games, and Magnus Carlsen, <laughs> had been put on the spot and said, okay, what about this <laughs> ending? Oh, yeah, this is a famous bishop ending, and I'm supposed to do this and that. <laughs> Magnus did really, 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 really good, as you would expect. But uh, it was his intimate knowledge of endgames that just really stood out. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, there are certain ones. I want to talk about endings for a moment. Right. I want to turn our attention to the game between MVL and Anish Giri because, again, we had kind of debated the point of whether White had anything or not. And I was trying to make the argument, not very compellingly, I must say, that I really like White because of the split pawns. And after bishop takes d5, don't bishop you takes d5. Uh, and he should have taken with a pawn on d5? I didn't understand this bishop takes d5 either. I thought that it was all about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Var was explaining that in the position where white tries to bring the knight to d4, it's very important that the king mm -hmm. ended up on d6, the rook went to c5, the pawn went to a5, and the engines were just uh, showing yes. zeros right mm -hmm. across the board. Bishop takes d5, that might have been just frankly, an inaccuracy. And after the move castles, I think Anish was thinking he was picking up a tempo against the pawn on g2. Simply not true. Mm -hmm. You do not want to invite rook g1 and a recapture. Right. Why are you inviting me into your camp with rook takes g7? So the move castles now, this is starting to get a little awkward because if I'm white, I'm starting to think, well, maybe I can take this. And even though I'm giving you a pass mm -hmm. pawn. I've got it really firmly blockaded. It, uh, I've got rook e1 check. Pawn, right? Pardon me? That would be a weak pass pawn. Exactly. It, it may be more of a liability than mm -hmm. an asset. There's even a possibility that the king, which a moment ago was going to be really right. secure mm -hmm. on d6, is suddenly exposed on these open uh, files. So. MVL uh, with the move castles, a uh, bit of an advantage. Once again, let's jump to the games between our tournament co-leaders, and we'll we'll kick off with the game between Richard Rapport and uh, Wesley So. When we left it, we left it right in this position, mm -hmm. and this is one of the most beautiful traps I've seen in quite a while because it's really a bolt from the blue. Wes, uh, uh, pardon me, Richard 
had played the move a to a4, and after a7, a5 stopped. Yeah. It was like, oops. Oops. Uh, the move, yeah, the move a4 was played in anticipation of being able to play knight c4. Mm -hmm. But VAR pointed out this really beautiful tactic, which went bishop takes, pawn takes, here comes the reveal, uh, and it's right here where white looks fine. Like, you know, what's the problem? Spoiler alert, if yeah. you want to do a puzzle, pause right here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, bishop takes f2, kabang. Uh, the queen needs the protection of the rook, so you can't take. King takes, walks into a discover mm -hmm. check, costing the queen. So literally, you have to move your king and acquiesce to the loss of a pawn with check. Recognizing, oops, that is to say Richard recognizing that he cannot play the move knight c4 kind of improvised right. with the move queen c2, bishop d5, bishop takes d5, queen b3, knight d4, and this has been well known for whew, decades and decades. I think more or less I'm going to say Anatoly Karpov, but I'm sure it predates him. Whenever there was a pawn on d4 versus a pawn on e2, mm -hmm. the backward, the weak pawn on e2 is more vulnerable than the pawn on c7. And these structures have been known to be better for black right. for quite a long while. And already, uh, Wesley, you, you were talking about that on the opening of the show. Uh, Wesley, it seems like in all of his games, he's slightly better. He could have had more points. He could have had more points for, and he's done it again. I mean, we're 18 moves or whatever into the position, and blacks for choice. But I will point out Please. one thing. Please. Uh, if we didn't have minor pieces in this position, I would right. agree that black's position is preferable. Right. But we do have knight versus bishop. Exactly. And I'm not loving black's bishop on b6. True. You know, it's a bad bishop, except for one thing. The, again, uh, I'll point out that the pawn is on a4. So imagine that this ugly black bishop were on b4 and there was a pawn on c6. Then I would double on the e-file and everything, everything. Uh, again, there was this, um, I had uh, a bishop and knight, bishop on g2, bishop on e6 against Michael Tall, uh, and there was this bad bishop, the bad dark squared bishop. But Tall was better mm -hmm. because he had the same structure mm -hmm. in uh, our game. Um, with that uh, dark squared bishop. So, for example, white to move here, uh, I believe it's white to move, yes. Say I exchange the queens. All right. Queen d5 and... Rook takes c5. Let's play rook c2. Let's play rook c2. Okay, let's play c6. Now I have to stop you from putting your bishop on b4, but can I? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what, you know, it, yeah. whether it takes me, you know, a mm -hmm. long while or a short while, to put my bishop on b4. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to anchor it there. And the problem is that even if you were to somehow manage to play e2, e3, hmm. maybe you're just not even happy once you achieve no. it. Then d3 would become a weakness. Exactly. So for the, from, from a long-term perspective, uh, the, the bottom line is that white is going to be nursing mm -hmm. this pawn on e2 for quite the while. Now, again, this pawn on a4 really makes a s kind of a strange impression. It, it wouldn't it be like, <laughs> like, okay, let's just play another move for white, yes? If you don't mind, sure. we'll just play this, this, and again, we're just gonna, whoops, we shouldn't have put our knight on c4. And now, we'll put our knight here, and suddenly, we can understand what black is trying to achieve. He's trying to put his rook, his bishop on b4, it yeah. feels like the momentum is on, sure. on his side. Also, I've had these positions as white, where I very cleverly thought to myself, aha, I'm so clever. The rooks are going to be doubled mm -hmm. on the e-file. Let me plug up the e-file with my knight. But mm -hmm. as soon as I play knight e4, I know you're going to play f5. Right. So I'll prepare uh, with g4 and uh, eventually well, get my knight to e4. Move, <laughs> a little bit, because usually what my opponents did very, very, very slowly, they would put a rook on e6, and then they would play g6. Mm -hmm. And they were playing for f5. Right. Um, long term, it feels like Wesley has an advantage 
uh, VAR. And maybe, again, the engines are laughing and saying, no, it should be even, it should be even. Don't you get the impression that you'd much rather play Wesley's position? It's, it's, it's hard to tell, I think. Um, if he can get the bishop on before, as you mentioned, yes, sir, yes definitely, I like the, uh, the black's position. But I think most of these lines you guys were analyzing, white puts the knight on b3 just to specifically discourage that from happening and put pressure on a5 and the d4 pawn here. So we can take a look at some of the, of the lines here after the move rook c2. So here, uh, for example, black also has the option. It's a little bit strange here, but actually you can play a move like queen f5 here. At some point, you're looking for some maybe queen h3 ideas. And let's say knight c4, which is a very logical move. Try to put pressure. And here you play the move queen e6. Now you're pinning the queen here, and you cannot take on uh, b6. If you play a move like queen b5, then you're going to run into a very uh, unpleasant move rook d5. Right and some potential ideas with rook h5 and queen, uh, and queen h3 here. So, and here you're pinned now, and it's not so clear what can you do here to get out of this pin. For example, you play queen a3, rook d5 now, with that same idea, bishop c5, bishop b4. Black will be very happy to put a bishop on b4 because it will be very well placed here, blockading all the counterplay on the queen side, but also, very important, controlling the e1 square, which is gonna take away the defensive ideas such as rook e1 here. So here you already have to play for b4 here, which is, which is very logical to try to open the position, but it looks, it looks risky, yes sir. Rook goes on h5, right. and then you have to worry about the queen h3 move coming in here. Seriously? This so is... black has the option here to even keep the queens on the board with a move queen f5 in this position. Nice. Huh, I wasn't thinking of the queens mm -hmm. uh, staying on the board uh, at all, but uh, that idea of rook d5 to h5, queen h3. That kind looks of, so scary. Yeah, that yeah. sends shivers up my spine. That looks very, <laughs> very dangerous. A uh, game that kind of slipped away from us. It was a game that uh, Christian said he was going to keep his eyes on uh, Diak as white versus uh, Ali uh, Reza of Perugia. Then here we were kind of thinking that there was going to be a captures on b6 <laughs> and a captures on c4. Somehow I think we were leaving the rook on a1 in that position, just captures, captures, and it was going to be s close to equality mm -hmm. thanks to the tactical defense of the c6 pawn. Dayak had a completely different idea altogether. He played bishop b4, rook b8, knight b2. Mm -hmm. He wants to take the pawn on nice. his terms and maintain mm -hmm. this uh, split pawns. But Perugia's saying, wait a minute, are you sure about what you're doing? I'm gonna play the move a5, and suddenly Dayak went into a think here as this move wasn't really kind of a, a mm -hmm. expected. Uh, I want to put it that way. Uh, why has he gone into a deep uh, tank? Uh, uh, he's probably thickness. choosing between retreating bishop back to a3. Okay. Or going to d2. Uh, between these guys? Or c5. I guess. They're all options. Maybe <laughs> That's even e7? the problem. Is bishop e7 an option as well? Oh my goodness! I didn't <laughs> even. I saw bishop c5, and I was thinking that he was, he was having a a, a pause here because there is a a move c3 mm -hmm. that might like for example if we play c, bishop c5 and we just play just for argument's sake say, this move c3. Right. And we've got this discovery, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> and White says, no, 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 no. I've got this really great idea. I'm going to oh, play knight here. Uh, you can't take my pawn on a to, well, I've got another idea. I will go here. And you go, oh, oh, wait a minute. I can take this, take this, take this. And then you've got mm -hmm. uh, this other one. This queen takes a2. Like, wait a minute. Uh, so then more or less where you were going, well, maybe I shouldn't put my bishop on mm -hmm. c5. Maybe I should be putting my bishop on the, the comfortable retreat square d2. When you go d2, now there's no knight d1. c3 is going to yeah, force you to recapture, it, yes. and I could potentially take this pawn on a2. Now, if I put the bishop on a3, maybe the bishop's less vulnerable than on the c5 square. But I really like what you said a moment ago. Maybe bishop e7. Mm -hmm. Like, wait a minute. Uh, did uh, Ferruja, that's an easy move to miss, right? Yes. I mean, because if, the, if you do get to just comfortably recapture this pawn, 
then I can start to believe that whites uh, for choice. Is there an opportunity here for Diak with the move Bishop E7 bar? Uh, bishop E7 is definitely playable, guys, but I think yeah. he already played Bishop A3. He but did. But we can I'm look sorry. at some of the lines after Bishop E7 here. Sure. So he will play the move that you were mentioning in the different variations, yes, sir, C3 here. Okay. The, you know, most likely you're going to lose the pawn here, but at least you want to pick up the A2 pawn exactly. if, if possible. So if you take Queen takes C3, just simply Queen takes A2 here. Right. And Black is doing great here, and the Knight D5 idea is coming up here as well here. Okay. If you play Bishop F6. Uh, there is also this move knight d5 here, right. putting pressure on the queen. Your knight is also hanging on b2 here. Right. Uh, queen takes c6. If we go a little bit deeper on this line, queen takes b2. It's pretty clear black is doing great here. This a pawn could be very dangerous, a4, a3, a2. So that's why this line doesn't work uh, very well here. So after the move c3, you can play the move knight d1, right. but the problem with the bishop e7 now, you, you, you don't get the time to take on f6 here, and now he can play the move knight e4. Uh. And you're going to have to probably at some point move the bishop back to a3 here. And in fact, in this position, uh, black is already very slightly better here. And okay. uh, I think that's the reason why he played the move bishop a3 immediately here. And also, uh, bishop e7, c3, we don't have time to take on, c3, uh, on f6 because of the in-between capture on b2 here. So bishop, uh, uh, bishop a3 played, and Ali Reza immediately went with the move c3, which is the best move here. Now putting pressure on the knight, and you have to move the knight here again. If you take queen takes c3 after queen a2, black is already slightly better here. <coughs> so you have to play, uh, you have two options here. You can play knight d1, or you can play knight d3 here as well here. So I think knight d1 is probably more likely here. Just try to finally recapture this pawn on c3. Knight e4, trying to make it more difficult because, again, if you capture on c3 after the exchanges, the a2 pawn will be hanging here. Right. So there is a slow move h3 that you can play, but I think it's more likely we're going to see the move knight c3 played. Knight takes c3, queen takes c3, queen a2. Two. Rook a1, first trying to remove the queen. But uh, black, is, uh, black is doing uh, really well here, actually. Rook fc1, you're, you're up a pawn here, and let's say rook c8. Again, making it difficult to capture on c6 because of that same idea we looked earlier with bishop h2 here. So I think uh, Firuja is doing great, and uh, uh, Deak is, again, I think going to get into a time trouble. He's got about 25 minutes left on the clock. I, I see some opportunities here for Firuja perhaps to score his first win. Wow. Uh, slightly better for Ali Reza, his first win. Wow. Uh, okay, that's still a, uh, a leap. Uh, yeah. a leap. Uh, in the game between Richie and Wesley, uh, after the move Rook C2, I, I was kind of getting sympathetic to the idea of Wesley maintaining the, the, queens. the queens on the board with a move like Queen F5. Wesley said, no, 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 I know that these positions uh, are favorable for, for black. He just traded queens, popped his rook on d5, and, you know, slowly, slowly, but surely, he will start, you know, piling up the pressure against the pawn, the backward pawn on e2, and white is going to be forced into a defensive, passive White will posture. probably use the king to defend e2. Right, like I can imagine mm -hmm. you playing, for example, rook c1 or rook b1 and playing your king, king to f1. f1. Yes. One of the things, and I very, very, very strongly advise you not to do this if you find yourself in these types of passive positions. Let me just put this on the board for just a moment. Uh, what I want to say is do not think, oh, I'll use my knight as my defensive mm -hmm. resource. You will never break through thanks to this wonderful knight on c1. There is nothing wonderful <laughs> about the knight on c1. It defends a wonderful pawn on e2, but the knight on c1 is really uh, gross. As passive I mean, as yeah, it can be. Exactly, and eventually you will just discover that uh, the, the position of the knight is simply bitter uh, mm -hmm. sweet. It's just not a good knight. So yes, I can imagine what you were saying, Nasi, is bring your king to f1. Right. Use your king as a defensive piece. What about uh, Nepo's position, uh, Var, in our other key contests? 
between our tournament co-leaders. Who's done what to whom? Who's, who's made progress? Yeah, let's try to catch up because they've played a lot of moves since okay. we last look at it. The sure. position is just equal right now, and uh, by looking at it, I see that I don't see any problems for Nepo here. So, but uh, let's look at the last few moves here, so see how they got here. Right. So we left off somewhere around here, bishop d4, right here. Uh, bishop b6 was played, so we played bishop d4. Fabiano trying to exchange uh, this bishop. And again, after the move f4, there is always going to be some problems here. Some way black can generate counterplay against the weak e3 pawn here. So bishop takes d4 played, knight takes d4, and now queen a5 played. Uh, attacking the pawn on a2 and also keeping the queen very active here. There are a little bit of dark square weaknesses in the white's positions. As you can see, a3, b2, c3 squares are a little bit weak, and the queen is actually very well placed in this position here. And uh, another thing to mention here, you're never really afraid of this exchange here on e6. If you're wondering, what if you take on e6? After fe, I think black will solidify the center and will actually have perhaps maybe even a slightly better position here. So black is never really afraid of this move, knight e6 at the moment. So Fabiano played queen e2, logical move, protecting the pawn on a2 and also connecting his rooks. So Nepo played rook e8, h3. Uh, good move here, controlling the g4 square, just in case you want to put the rook on d1, you don't want to run into ideas such as bishop g4 here. Mm -hmm. And also, with the pawn being weak on e3, there could be some options, knight g4 at some point. So h3 is a very useful move here. And bishop d7 played. Uh, logical move, opening up the file for the rook to put pressure on e3. And rook c8, rook c8, and now queen b2 comes in. Queen is well placed here, protecting the a2 pawn and also controlling the c3 square at the moment. Queen c5. Black is trying to fight for the only open file here and make it difficult to play the move rook c1. Very logical play so far. I see a4 controlling uh, some squares on a queen side and a5 fixing the b4 square because at some point now <coughs> b4 could be a possibility for white. Mm -hmm. So a5 played, queen d2, b6 protecting the a5 pawn and a lot of moves played as you can see here, queen a3. King h2 and now h6. So it's an equal position here. 38 minutes for Fabiano, 51 for uh, Nepo here. Uh, I, I think this game is probably going to uh, fizzle out to draw at some point with some kind of repetition. Again, isolated pawn on d5, but the pawn on e3 is weak. And it's very hard to find any weaknesses in a black's position here to generate some ideas to play for a win. Yeah, that adjustment of the queenside pawn by Nepo, putting the pawns on a5, b6, fixing the, 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 the white queenside on light squares, I think that was a very good choice. Very by, precise. By, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it is a day for social media. We are yeah. getting some uh, tweets. Thank you very much. This one is from War Daddy. And this question is for you, Yasser. It says, hello, Yasser. I think nobody had asked this question before. Why do you think Bobby never played first move e5 with black against Spassky in their World Championship match 1972, but instead went for Alhein or Nidorf? Or Nidorf. Well, first of all, uh, in those days, the Soviets most especially, they were very, very, they were the world's leaders in just everything to do with chess, most especially opening theory. And, you know, when you think of the hierarchy of the chess world, Boris Spassky sitting on top, all of the Soviet theoreticians, uh, uh, Boris knew theory very, very well. And if you looked at the old ECOs from those days, the encyclopedias of chess openings, it was like E4, E5 was the thickest Bible <laughs> there was. And from Bobby's point of view, it was sort of like, I'm playing against a Soviet player, but I'm playing against a Soviet school of chess, why should I go into the swimming pool that's deepest and where he has a great mm -hmm. knowledge? Whereas I, Bobby Fischer, on the other hand, I've studied all of these other variations, but most especially, I'm the world's leader in the Sicilian. Mm -hmm. So I want to play in my part of the swimming pool. And E5 would, I think Boris would have been very, very happy I, so a good question, uh, but it just helps to know that 
you know, the Soviets at the time, they were, they were, they were really, really good yeah. in their opening theory. Yeah. And by the way, unfortunately, uh, uh, World Chess Hall of Fame, just across the street from the St. Louis Chess Club, was just having a 1972 uh, exhibition of the uh, Bobby Fischer match. And just, I don't know, well, you went to Paris to help uh, garner some of the artifacts of uh, that exhibit, exhibition there of our uh, Boris Basky Jr. you had a conversation with. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun to meet Boris Jr. and spend five days with him and going through this archives of his father. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot. And uh, I, speak to, uh, I speak Russian, so I was able to translate a lot of this thing and bring the most uh, important stuff. So it was, it was really interesting to get to know. I, I feel like I got to know Boris Spassky, the world champion, a lot from doing this and his... Uh, his communication with his peers, with Bobby Fischer. So it was, it was, it was a very interesting experience for me. And uh, I learned a lot uh, by doing this. So it was, it was really, really enjoyable. Nice. And we have another tweet. So let's see what this This one is from Tobias S. The question is, uh, why do so few grandmasters play openings like the Vienna or Scotch Gambit? Most main openings lead to equality on this level anyway. So why not play lesser known ones? Well, uh, Var, uh, you're a chess coach, so why aren't people playing Alakines more often like Bobby uh, did? Why are they more fixated on uh, mainstream? Well, I think some of these openings, uh, more rare openings these days with the modern engines, you're going to be able to achieve a pretty decent advantage. So that's the reason you have to stick with the Petrov or Berlin to try to get the absolute, give absolute minimum to white here. It's mm -hmm. just um, analysis and engines are so much stronger these days and we have a lot more data. So that's why a lot of these openings that were playable maybe 20, 30 years ago, these days are, you're just gonna be in an inferior position right out of the opening and mm -hmm. struggle. And yeah. uh, your I think, perspective? Uh, I think it's misleading to assume that a lot of these openings lead to equal positions anyways. Right. Uh, it may come off as it's, oh, everybody knows this, so it's going to be equal. But it's right. actually very hard to achieve that equality with the right. black pieces. So that's why there are certain openings that are preferable for the grandmasters to play, where they know for sure they can get cl as close to equality as possible. Right. Uh, for me, I have a little bit of a different take myself. For example, in my uh, career, I really like what we call the modern uh, defense or maybe the perk defense, uh, depending. Uh, and I like the flexibility of black in the perk defense. The problem when you play something like the perk defense is that white has a, an enormous mm -hmm. array of options, uh, options against uh, an early kingside fianchetto. And sometimes knowing all of those different sub Lines, whether you should be playing bishop e2 or bishop c4 is white, <laughs> or maybe f3, bishop e3, queen d2. And you've got to learn a lot more than what you probably intended. Yeah. So sometimes adopting a particular defense ends up causing you to analyze so much more than you... Then you have to remember all the slides exactly. and review all the time. Right, so it's, it's one thing work. to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to learn to play the, the, yeah, just stop and think about this. I'm going to play the Alakine defense. Mm -hmm. and then you think to yourself, okay, if white wants, he can play the four pawns attack, mm -hmm. which is very, very, very serious. Yeah. Yeah. Or if white wants, he can play knight f3 and bishop c4, and he play, can play these really, really mm -hmm. slow positions. Or <laughs> he could play uh, the, these double-edged uh, gambit positions with knight c3 and, mm -hmm. and, and, and c4, c5, and knight c3. So suddenly you start thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I wanted an easy life. I wanted to play something mm -hmm. that was very concrete and clear. And now I've got three, four main uh, lines that my opponent can choose from. Okay, I've got to cut down the options. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting tough. I just wanted to turn our attention to uh, world champion Ding Lirin, who is struggling uh, against Duda. And when we left it, we were looking struggling at this position. Struggling to get an advantage. Correct. Yes. Uh, knight d5, knight takes d5. He did spot that the recapture with the e pawn was required. This rook on uh, uh, b6 looks a little forlorn out of the way, but Duda successfully 
traded one pair of rooks. You say you can't I think take they them. They are heading to a completely absolutely equal and end game. Exactly. Look and at that pawn structure on the it, one side. <laughs> it really is. And this move, rook e6, means <coughs> a complete trade of everything. By the way, that is Probably. a kind of funny. Are they playing checkers? <laughs> yeah. Did somebody look, tell yeah, them that? It looks like. It looks like. If he plays g6 now. <laughs> right? And uh, there's only one weakness in the position, but that is easily defended on uh, the king on f7. And I'm sure the players will be looking to find a, a repetition in the mm -hmm. position as this game's headed for a draw. For Ding Lorin, again, uh, the newly crowned uh, world champion, starting with four draws and probably a very poor one at that in, mm -hmm. in, in yesterday's outing. He's not going to be happy. He's had three out of four games with white. And What's th happening? Three games with, the... with white also, yes, sir. Three games right. with white. Three, that's what I mean. Yeah. Three out of four games with white. Why is Ding struggling in this uh, tournament, Var? He's not getting the positions he's known, known for. I'm, th I'm thinking my guess is perhaps he's just a little bit tired and overwhelmed after the match and it's just uh, and not, not getting uh, that many chances here. No. And, uh, especially with the white pieces. I mean, he had some chances earlier in this game. At some point, he played the move rook c3 where I, I found that move just slightly strange here. He could have just played c3, maybe have a little bit of pressure here. Um, yeah, he's, he's not getting anything, uh, anything uh, significant. We, we used to see him play some sharp lines where he sacrificed a pawn, some, some spectacular wins, complicated position. Exactly. Right now we are seeing more of simple play. If I can get maybe some advantage, I can press. Otherwise, uh, he's okay with uh, the draws. Okay, well, uh, I, I see what you mean, by the way, that moment where rook c6 was played by Duda. Rook c3 was simply a helpful move uh, by Ding Lerin. Uh, it didn't put enough pressure on Duda as this uh, game is heading for a draw. Uh, can we uh, jump to MVL? Because that was the Scotch uh, yes. uh, he still has a opening. A lot of pressure that he's putting on Anish. Well, the game. last move, knight e4, uh, that's kind of a, a clarion bell. Uh, I, I'm hearing a bell ringing over here. If you let the knight get ensconced and you, you can't get rid of that knight, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, on the c5 square, um, that could be just simply bad news, like After knight, really bad news. Knight c5, black pieces, king and the rook look so limited. True. Uh, the rook. So last few moves. Let's see what happened. Uh, rook c7. I like seven. that rook lift that MBL did. Rook e4, rook a4. Right from this. Um, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, rover. Rook mm -hmm. up and over. See, when he played h4 early in the opening, his goal was to play rook h3, rook a3, which didn't happen. But, but, he, but he found another way. Of to getting get the to the a file. file. That's yes. exactly right. Uh, okay, so in this position, somehow Anish contrived with the idea that he was afraid that the a pawn might be weak, so he brought his king over to the queen side to kind of reinforce the a pawn. But now this move, knight e4. By the way, let's just go back to the Ding Lerin game for a moment because we, our producer reckons a handshake is in the offing. Do you think Tom's right? I think so. Absolutely. He's rarely wrong. Oh, <laughs> you suck ups, both of you. You're terrible. First of all, Tom's there right. There you go. <laughs> and that's what I'm telling you. What's the one here? <laughs> I'm surrounded by geniuses. Yeah. Wow. I am too. Okay, uh, Ding Lerin. Um, Okay, it's still, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of tournament ahead. I mean, there's no question and about it. In tournaments like this, you really need to score just one big win, and you, you can suddenly become a leader. Yes, and as we know, we've yes. got four people at plus one. So I think uh, to what Var said earlier that Ding might be a little bit tired, I would say he must be more tired than he has ever been in his life. Yeah. I mean, not just physically, but emotionally in every way possible. Yeah. I'm, I was surprised he's even playing in this tournament, you know, and yeah. not taking a longer break to process that he just became a world champion. Except for one thing. It's called exhilaration. <laughs> Nothing gives you as much energy as a victory. I mean, you know, you, you just played the hardest Sinkville Cup tournament of your life, and... You should have seen Ali Reza after he won. 
Uh, the Cinco Cup last year, the guy had more energy and but was so happy. But he also took a very long break. Yeah, that is true. Because I can't I think argue what we that. can't see is how tired they feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's your take, uh, Var? I, uh, uh, energy I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, lack of energy, definitely. But one thing with Ding Liren, we know he is a strong finisher. If you look, go back and look Resilient. at the candidate tournament, look, he started really poorly and, you know, he was Slow. on a last place, you know, really bad start. And then somehow he just, at the end, he won several games and just got back into it, winning that last game against Hikaru and securing the second crucial. place, which yeah. turned out to be absolutely crucial for him to play the match against, uh, against Nepo. So it's possible that, you know, he will need one win at some point, maybe, you know, in a couple of rounds, he get, get to that plus one here and uh, try to fight for the first place here. So far we see it's a very tight field here. Nobody is running away with the tournament. Nobody has plus three or plus two at the moment still. So right. I think one win and he will be back into the race for the first place. Okay, if I can draw your attention, Var, to the uh, end game between MVL and Anisha as we get uh, our uh, Yeah, we standing. only have one result so far. Ding oh. and Duda made a draw. Ding and Duda made a draw. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Uh, uh, th th break, break down this ending for me between MVL and Anish for a second. Um, th I'm, uh, two great pa The problem is the bishop on d5 is a very good piece. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's anchored in the middle of the board. It's, it's looking queenside. It's looking kingside. The knight on c5 is a very, very good piece as well. Um, I like White's position because of the structure, but is it significant, Var? Um, not really. It's a very small advantage. It looks really nice. I think uh, optically, yeah. yeah, optically looks very nice. Especially if we get the rooks off the board, then I think White, White will be extremely happy. Okay. Let's say you put a pawn on GT, rooks are off the board, you bring the king to d4. But I think Black is not going to exchange the rooks. He's going to try to keep his rook here on e7, try to generate counterplay with the ideas like rook e2 here. Uh, very small advantage. We can we can look at some of the possible ways how the game can continue here, but Please. evaluation is very very small uh, edge for white here. So for example, after the move rook e7, you always have to look out for the move rook e2 here. So and also your g2 pawn is hanging here, so you need to do uh, something with this. So g3 is the best option here. All right. So let's say you start out with that, and here actually, uh, black has uh, some options here. He can play even the move f6, for example. Then you play king d2, trying to improve the, the king, and bishop f3. Now trying to get some counterplay with the move rook e2 here. If you play rook f4, trying to remove the bishop from there, bishop goes back to d5 here. It's very hard to attack the pawn on a7. I mean, you can attack it once, and I have the rook on e7 already guarding it. And this bishop is doing a great job controlling a lot of the squares the knight can go to, such as e6. Uh, e4. So it's uh, it's really hard to see how to make another weakness. We know that we need to create more weaknesses in this type of endgames to have some real winning chances. But the rook on e7 is also doing a good job uh, controlling the file and also at the right time getting to rook e2 and try to attack the pawn. So very hard to make any progress in this position, Yasser, for white. Exactly, which uh, brings up the question that I had. I was about to ask the question mm -hmm. when Boink, obviously, uh, MVL played. We had just seen the position bishop d5. I want to refer you, I think it's a move 25, bishop d5. And I was wondering about the move knight d6 check. The idea is to put the question mm -hmm. immediately to the black king. You've got to make your choice. Do you go to d8, d7, or b8? If you go to b8, I actually wanted to chase you mm -hmm. all the way into the corner with rook b4 check. So let's just imagine, for argument's sake, you went to d8. Yeah, just throwing that out there. Then my idea was to play knight to... Um, um, provoking g6? To provoking g6. And somehow this bishop on d5 really is kind of bothersome. I wanted to put the, I, I, I'm trying to play, if you don't mind, a, a kind of a dark squares, right? I, I want to put everything I can mm -hmm. on the dark squares. And the knight on e3 gets rid of the bishop. The knight on c5 looks good, but maybe it doesn't do as much on right. c5 as it might do on e3. The current position, uh, I agree with what you're saying. The very hard for white to make inroads on a7 and in the meanwhile in the current position 
with the uh, rook on e e7 always threatening to come down, I feel that uh, the game is uh, really balanced. I think we're going to be going to a uh, Bucharest. Uh, Christian uh, is going to uh, have a a guest. Uh, not quite at this moment. Or let's go to Christian in Bucharest. Who do you have, uh, Christian, with? I have a very special uh, guest, Yasser. I have Gary Kasparov uh, here once again with me in the studio to look at the games and share his impressions of the tournament so far. Gary, welcome back to the show. Um, have you been watching the games today? Yeah, I've been watching the, the games. Not, I have to say, not much uh, to watch, but still, you know, that's they, they, they try. Obviously, uh, um, uh, you look at the Ding games, for instance. Yeah. He's, He's tired. Yeah, yes, he's yeah. tired, and he's, he's he's still probably trying to recover psychologically from his victory. <laughs> Speaking of that, that was the big game yesterday, Nepo versus Ding, and yeah. I think we discussed it in the middle of the game. Nepo lost some of his advantage, but still he had some chances. He did not put any pressure yesterday. How did you internalize that result? I think it's it's probably at one point he just uh, he just lost hopes and. Uh, Actually, they followed the line that we discussed of the rookie four. Yeah. And he just, he recognized the take on the four and winning the pawn in the end game might be dangerous because black will have to pass pawn and this he decided that draw is okay. Uh, and probably at that time he was more thinking about where he missed his chances. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's typically happens, you know, you just, you play the game, but your mind is Somewhere else. Around. Yeah, yeah, you just think, oh, I missed this and I missed that. I just, yeah, I think that's what that was the case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's discuss uh, today's games. Now, for me, at least to my eyes, before uh, the games started, this was an interesting one, the one between Bogdan Daniel Dak and Ali Reza, because, you know, both of these players minus one, they don't have tremendous tournaments up to this point. And Ali Reza with the black piece definitely wants to put some pressure. How, uh, how do you feel? The opening went for on in this yeah, but one. Yeah, naturally, Bogdan played uh, cautiously. Cautiously, yeah, cautiously mm. yes, because I think his his plan was to push Ali Reza because you know he knew Ali Reza would try to to do something. Yeah, and uh, and he just you know tried to keep uh, you know position under control. Uh, but you know it's 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 it, it was not as dull and 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 uh, uninterested as one could have expected. You know after. Bishop with two, Bishop with three. Actually, yeah. the idea is just you know because pawn on h6 is a little bit you know. Um, uh, At this point, yeah, Bishop yeah, with two and Bishop yeah. with three. Yeah, because yes, h6 is not you know great, I, it, I, great great uh, um, idea for Black because it's just for instance, yeah, after Bishop d3, if you play immediately Bishop, then a Black could go Bishop g6. That's one and and, and stay there. Yeah. Another one is pawn on h7 is better better than than than, than on h6. Uh, and Ali Reza tried bishop before, but preventing e4, because mm -hmm. that's clearly after e4, white has a slight edge. Yeah. So, for example, if you go bishop yeah, 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 e4, slight edge. And, and actually, h6 here is not, not, as not useful. No, no, not, 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 very, not very useful. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, in theory, you know, just enough exchanges, white rook can appear on d3, knight on d5, rook on g3, okay, in theory, yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, 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 it might, might be a little bit, you know, just it's uncomfortable. So, Ali Reza played bishop before, he tried to keep pressure, and, uh, and, um, and uh, bishop um, d2. d2. Yeah, and now this is an interesting moment because, uh, yes, this is after bishop before knight takes d5. This is a trick. Uh huh. Yes, no, yeah, here. Yes. So after bishop no, no, d2, no, no, if no, no, you go no, castle. No, ca but even, even after bishop f5, yes, bishop f5 before. Yes, yeah, still, still knight d5. Still knight d5. Yeah. Yes. And after bishop a5, if you do yeah. take, still, still I'm not I'm going to go rook b1, no, try to go for bishop I think knight d5. I think knight d5, yes. Knight yeah. d5, yeah. yes. And, uh, and then just, you know, just black is, yes, yes. Your yeah, king yeah. is not uh, yes, castle. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So I think that was interesting. So that's why he, they created some complications. Very nice. Yeah, and uh, uh, b5. Nice but but, but the, the problem is, typically, you know, this is, you, can, you can make many active moves with your pawns, but there's one rule, pawns don't go back. So that's why, you know, when you attack, yeah. it's like in, 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 in military uh, <laughs> game or just in battlefield. So you, you create weaknesses in your camp. So by, by aggressively pushing, you create weakness on c4. It's a square. So yeah. Yeah. ideally, you know, black knight could appear on, on, on the square and, uh, and it could... Uh, Which almost yes. happened, in fact. Yeah, well, but, see, the knight, but he took but the, the pawn, pawn. yes. Uh, yeah. 
This was an interesting I, moment I, here. I, I, I think it's interesting. It's, I'm, I was curious to understand who's playing for what. Because, right. because it is, Ale Reza, it's, it's, Ale Reza has to, to um, I'm sure he had some aggressive intentions, but he had to be very uh, creative because if, if Bogdan takes back the pool, he has, he has much better structure. Of course, yeah. much better pawn on c6 is just. So he has to actually mm, lose c pawn, but creatively. Mm. And, that's, and it was interesting. So this he is. He tried it, right? C3. c3. Now I thought about knight d1. Yeah, but yeah, knight d1. And then he goes knight d4. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Again, this is. This is it's, it's, he cannot win, win the pawn. It's yeah. a dance, right? Because yeah, you, now you take yeah, on. You take, you take a an a2. a2, yes. You take an a2, yes. And you don't have time to take on c6. Yeah, because, because I think yeah, it. yeah, it's the. Interesting dance. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Knight so he, play, he, he played, played knight d3. Knight d4 and, and he played knight c5. Right. Trying knight d2. So it's, 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 it's trying to give the pawn back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but again, give the pawn buy back in, in a comfortable situation. Creative, yes, yeah, create, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, take, take, e5. Uh, so why not knight c4? I, I thought this was his idea. Yeah, but, but, but he's still trying to win, I guess, yes. Queen ah, so with e5 he's... Queen a3, yeah. and now e5, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's this e5, he can maybe take on e5. Yeah. And then g3, queen e5, g3. More or less equal, probably. Definitely black is not better. I mean, this is, they still have this, this weak pawn on c6. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. That's why I had to... Yeah, and he played um, e5 directly. Yeah. This is the position we yeah, currently have on the board. I just, it's the... Yeah, I... Uh, I had a funny idea. Can you play queen c2 here? Okay, of sure. Course this Let's take this. E4. And now e4. Okay, to play it like this. Yeah, just Let's say I go here and now you just stop me with f4. Well, so they play f4. Yeah. Then I will go knight d3 and, uh, you know, block It's a it. nice pawn sacrifice, yeah. Yeah, this, this idea, this can, maybe, but maybe we should d6, yes? Yeah, yeah, the thing is the knight on b6 doesn't have where to go. Yeah, but still, it's, this is, but you have to do something with your... <laughs> um, maybe queen d3 here, right? Yeah. I don't want to take, to take c5. It's an interesting position. Nice, I don't know. Uh, nice the, middle game. Yeah, it, it's, again, this is, it seems that this position is, is, looks very simple, but many, but of this course. This is the problem, uh, the time. 17 minutes for DAC, yeah, move the, 23rd. Exactly, that's, that's, that's a problem. That's a lot. Timing, time, 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 time. Uh, oh, by the way, you know, this is the, what about playing e4 immediately? Oh, that's okay, I'll take, take. this. Take, take. Knight d3. And just play like this. Mm. I'll just take I will take that pawn back, yeah. Yeah, I'll take the pawn back. So yeah. you'll go knight a4 probably, yes? Knight a4, rook takes c6. And then just defend like this. Yeah, and then the bishop goes on. I guess he knight, wants to go knight, knight, knight c3, knight. Yes, knight c3, yes. Knight c3, yes. That knight on c3 is going to be pretty good. Yeah. And yeah. you cannot touch the yeah. d4 pawn. Yeah, like this. No, 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 this you is lose. no, 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 yes, yes. yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Still thinking. All right. Uh, by the way, I do think that Fabiano, I'm not 100% sure if they have repeated already, but they were going to repeat. Maybe we can get a uh, panoramic of the playing hole and maybe we can see whether they yeah, repeated but the or not. Yeah, the position is dead equal. I'm so, so yeah, Fabi played so, you know, quickly in the opening and I was curious because I think that's the, this is the game that uh, it's just the opening. Yes. Uh, CD4, is, that's what Kramnik played, played against. Yeah, yeah in okay. 1996, I lost the game. Actually, yeah. this is because it was, uh, I would say, novelty, but just I was a bit surprised. And it was a blitz tie break. Mm. And I lost the game, so and I didn't manage to win the game, too. So this was a final of Moscow Rapid in 96. And how did uh, I played Bishop that? E2, but uh, poorly. But that's but exactly what I did 9 3, B3, A6. I, put, I, I no, think Bishop I came back, I came back a little too, but Black has a very comfortable position. Mm. Very comfortable position. <laughs> So he played bishop d3 and knight e5, and by the way, Nepo was blitzing out his moves, maybe some yeah, residual preparation from no, the world championship. No, it's, it's, it's easy. Easy, it's easy draw. Very yeah. Easy. yeah. I almost felt like at some point he was trying a little bit on oh, Nepo. Nepo. <sighs> Probably not. And this is what we have right now. Lots of exchanges, nothing has okay. changed in the position. <laughs> Repeated once, probably they will repeat twice. This is uh, pretty dry. Um, which one? Dingley Ren, we've discussed that now. No, it's not, not too. Yeah, this, that, that was interesting. So that's the. Yeah. MVLs, MVL. H4. Yeah. H4, Scotch. And, uh, Scotch, yeah. yes, I... <laughs> What's your experience with this? Not with H4. Not with, with this position, a lot of experience. <laughs> yes. Not with H4. Yeah. You, you've never played H4? No, mm. H4. I will play C4 here. 
C4. C4 yeah. Yeah. But H4 is, yeah, it's, that's, uh, he got some, some slight edge. He did, he There's did. Some slight edge, slight edge. He yeah. did. Yeah, the, they invited this endgame, and then this is what we have right now. Bishop G5, make use of that H4 move yeah. at least. Yeah. And we are in this position right now. How would you assess it? Any chances for white? Maybe king d2, try to invite rook e2 and king d3 or king c3. I don't think you can take, right? They take or king d3 first. Take. I mean, this is with the a pawn running, the knight on c5 pretty strong. Bishop d5 and then a pawn is running, you think, yes? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I can find the construction, yeah, to put some pressure on Bishop is strong. Yeah. Bishop is very strong, yeah. The bishop is good, yeah. yeah, this yeah. Is the question is whether it's enough or um, a serious advantage or not. So rook f4, bishop, where, where, where bishop goes on rook f4? Mm, so I cannot start giving you checks and pick up the pawn because I lose okay. the piece. No, so I'm I not sure. You're, 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 you, maybe, maybe you can do it. Can I? Yes. So here, here. Okay, check. Here. Uh, rook c2, you take attack on f7, yes? Rook c2. Ah, yeah, but yeah, you maybe take yeah, on rook yeah, f7, yeah. So it's pretty bad, yeah. That's, that's a bad end yeah, game. That was a king, yes, rook f7. Yeah, that's winning. Yes. Bad end game, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So, rook f4. And so he played king e2, by the way. King e2? He played king d2. I was still playing, but rook f4. Um, but he wants to keep this king there, yes? Yes. Still some pressure, it feels like. Yeah, but I still think rook e2. So, I think he. Oh, sorry, this is. This, the, I think he, he, he has to go uh, because otherwise. It's the yeah, you drop the bishop back, but you just got there. You just played bishop f3. Yeah. Some pressure for for white. Yes, for, some pressure. For and now he has to. Uh, what what about timing? Thirty-four minutes for MVL. Twenty-six minutes doesn't seem like they're headed towards yeah, any sort of time. But it's almost, it was unpleasant. So I think this is you, you know it's you. You're worse. It's probably a draw, yeah. but you don't know how to make a draw. Fight. Yeah, you have to fight, and uh, now he has to decide whether he, he, he goes for this just for this exchange. I think it's probably typically bishop versus knight. You know, you have to open the position. Yes, so yes. Make it this balance. Uh, by the way, uh, we're being told that Richie versus Wesley are repeating right now. Let's see where the, the repetition is. King G2, to H5, King G2, Rook E5. Um, are we seeing a handshake right now, or is the big question? Can Richie try for more with h4? h4, you go g5, right? Is that the move? Yeah, g5. <coughs> so now you cannot take, take. Yeah, Richard is still trying to find something. I don't think he's going to. But playing rook c2, but that doesn't make much sense. That seems both of king g2, rook if I have rook c2. Uh -huh. You can play, but this, but. But so what's next? Yeah. What's next? So knight cannot go from b3 to c4 by magic, yes. <laughs> you would love to get there. Violation of the rules, yes. <laughs> you would love to get there, yeah yeah. 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 Yeah, no. So can I do rook e1 and then rook c2 knight? No, but that doesn't work either. It's just, it's the, I mean, don't forget, black has no weaknesses. Seems like they're stuck yes. in, in this position. Total, total, totally just stuck. Uh, repetition is incoming. Um, and the final game, I actually think we've seen most yeah. of the games. Well, the, the, it's okay. The uh, Ali Reza, it's probably the one, most interesting one. So that's uh, that's the uh, yeah. that's that's the one. Oh, he some, played e4. Some stuff has happened. He played e4 immediately. Yes, he did. E4. And queen d8, not queen takes d4. I suppose queen d4. I thought maybe 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 he wanted to play quick. No, maybe he wanted to play queen c2. Now he has to go back on d8. Uh, your queen gets trapped. Yes. <laughs> you have to go back on d8. And then maybe, I don't know, rook. Rook d1? Rook d1 or knight. Yes, or maybe knight. Knight d3 first. Maybe, uh, maybe rook d1. Rook d1, queen e8, knight d3. I like it. Yeah, that's so pawn on c6. Is There's some pressure. Yeah, that bishop on c7, if you don't find a good spot for it soon. Yeah. yeah. And where is the good spot on f6? I mean, that's not really a good spot. So that's the. So e4. Yeah, yeah, I like this move. I play queen d8, yes? Queen d8 is, uh, we have this on the board right now. But after rook d1, white is better, clearly. Nice advantage for Bogdan. Mostly, 
not a lot of risk, right? Yeah, there's, there's no, that's no risk. No risk at all, yeah, yeah. No risk at all, it's just because Black Knight on B6 is, um, yeah, okay. it's not, uh, it's not ideal located. Just yeah. Let's say diplomatically, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting position, definitely. This one developing nicely. Um, still long time, Bogdan, but he's accustomed to it. That's his usual playing style. Gary, thank you very much for joining. What are your plans for the... You're leaving Bucharest tonight, uh, tomorrow, is that correct? Morning. Or tomorrow uh, morning? Early, early morning, so that's the, I uh, go back to New York. I um, have a few events there in New York and then I fly back to Europe. You're excited so, uh, about uh, having Magnus in Poland in a oh, couple yeah, of weeks? Oh, yeah, great, yes, so to see Magnus back at the chessboard, though it's not classical chess, but yeah, still entertaining, so I now um, see all of you guys in Warsaw. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Thank Gary, you. thank you very much thank for joining us. And we will be going on a short commercial break before we return with the rest of the games. It's 2023, and the Grand Chess Tour is back for its eighth trip around the world. Inspired by former world champion Gary Kasparov, the Grand Chess Tour hosts the top players to compete for top prizes. Eight of the world's best join tournament wild cards and travel to four different countries to fight for a $1.4 million prize fund. The tour kicks off in Bucharest, Romania for the Superbet Chess Classic. Then things speed up as we move to Warsaw, Poland and Zagreb, Croatia for the first two Rapid and Blitz events. The tour then makes its way to St. Louis, Missouri for the final two events. We're back in November for the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz and the illustrious Sinkfield Cup. When points are up for grabs, the best players show up. Who will be crowned the new champion? Find out when the Grand Chess Tour returns. Meet me at the Muni, the Muni in Forest Park. The Muni's premier season bursting with comedies, romance, and magic begins June 12th with the Muni premiere of beautiful The Carol King Musical. The epic summer continues with Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Chess, West Side Story, Little Shop of Horrors, Rent, and Sister Act. Single tickets are now on sale at muni.org. The Muni in Forest Park.
Hello and welcome back to our coverage of the Superbet Chess <laughs> Chess Classic. And these are the results so far. Right, so far we only have one draw between Ding and Duda. Uh, we expect more will be coming shortly, but that's where we stand at the moment. One of the most confounding decisions I've seen in a long time uh, between Richard Report and Wesley So, uh, two of our co-leaders uh, clashing in this all-important game. And I had been extolling the virtues of this position for uh, Wesley for some time, mm -hmm. exp explaining why and how this pawn on d4, this black pawn on d4, really cramps white's structure, that white is perpetually tied to this pawn on e2. And then, out of the blue, Wesley decides to give up this powerful d4 pawn for a lousy h2 <laughs> pawn. And the players are now in a four rook ending where I think nobody has an advantage but I don't even think white's worse at all anymore. No, not at all. It After this move, B3, equal. yeah, I'm just re white is, uh, Richard, that is uh, to say, is ready to play rook C4 and keep making a few more mistakes and maybe I start mm -hmm. getting interested for white suddenly. So that was a very strange decision to, to, to voluntarily trade the pawn on D4 for the pawn on h2, and Richard is uh, doing fine. Going to our other two co-leaders, and that of course is between Fabi and um, uh, Nepo, um, one of the great myths in chess is this idea that queen and knight usually outplay mm -hmm. queen and bishop. Well, for those of you who have ever read John Watson's modern chess, uh, a work on modern chess, he just, puts pay to that idea. And queens and bishops actually do work well with one another. However, this is one of those positions where I might make an argument that the knight on d4 is doing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I have a few more options. I don't think it's anything at all, per se. But, okay, maybe maybe Fabi is, uh, has to be preferred by a smidge. What's your take? Uh, if they exchange the queens, then I would prefer white. <laughs> oh, you think the queens <laughs> off yes. would enhance? And why would? Why do you think that? Just a simple good knight versus bad bishop. Because of the pawn on e4. Exactly. Just because of the pawn on e4, which is over pushed maybe. Right. Where a white, if a white were to rearrange pieces and put the king on d4 in the end game, okay. that would be a problem for a black. So then I can put it to you very succinctly in this position, a move ago, Fabi played the move queen e2, and that would not have been your move. <laughs> your move might have been queen c2. Right. Inviting the trade of queens, and this is, this is what you were saying that you would aspire to, to play if you were in Fabi's shoes. So he did play the move queen e2. Is he thinking he's going to... Queen a6, maybe? Uh, yeah, kind of crawl his way into the a6 square. Far jump in. Is this a position where the chess engines are enamored by the knight, or...? No, it's as expected, yes. There's just zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's... <coughs> And then if, well, is Nazi right? Should, she, should Fabi have played her move, queen c2? Let's take a look uh, okay. if queen c2 played in this position. So if you play queen c2 here, try to trade queens, I think what's going to happen is this blocking is going to try to get to c5 pretty quickly here. So queen takes c2, right. knight takes c2, now king e7. Right. Let's say you bring the knight back to d4, because sure. if you play knight d6, there is some knight f5 ideas. But bishop d7. Okay. Just, uh, it's actually, this concept is very important to you know. If the knight is on d4, you want to keep the bishop on d7 to control the squares. f5, b5, so it's kind of, you're restricting the knight on d4 by putting the bishop on d7. So if you try to, because my king is coming to b4, you need to bring the king to c3, actually. King e2, king d6. Uh, king e2, king d2, king c5, and now king c3. And now in this position, you, might, you may try to play the move g4 here to expand a little bit. So that's why this move h5 is, I think, quite important here to try to prevent that from happening. And here, 
but white doesn't really have any options here because with this pawns being fixed like this, a3, b4, you can never really play the move before because you're always going to have problems with the a4 pawn hanging. So computer is suggesting just to play h4 and just try to shut down the game like this with g3 and uh, so it's, it's going to be a So just never here. makes it to d4. So. Yeah. Right. yeah, if you trade queens, I think there's just no winning chances. Perhaps Fabiano is trying to keep the queens on the board to see if he can try to create some chances there. Um, let's let's see here from uh, the up, current position. Yeah, with the current position, Queen C3 played actually by Nepo. It's a very good move here, trying to activate. If you move the queen now, you always have to worry about the move uh, queen, queen D2, D2 check. Yeah, yeah. So Queen D1 is one of the best moves, but now I think Black has uh, many options here. Can play the move Bishop D7 once again to get that same concept of restricting uh, the yeah, knight right. on D4. Uh, of course, if knight f5 played, you have to be careful. This is not a blunder. You're not blundering the knight. There's a background <laughs> checkmate here on the 8th, so you have, to, you have to watch out for that. But against knight f5, you can play the move queen c6, for example, just to defend, and now you have to move the knight probably back to d4. Uh, if you put it on d6, it's not really attacking anything there. So so for, so for after knight f5, there, there, there are some options here to play f5, but I think Black position in general is very, very solid here. So mm. I expect this game to end in a draw at some point. Well, thank you, Vora. Uh, it's not like the, the excitement is overwhelming and boiling and something like that. But I will point out that in the game between Diak and Ali Reza, uh, a double-edged positions on the board. I like White's position. I hate Diak's clock. Times. He's got 13 uh, moves to make, and he's uh, always been the one who's perpetually in time trouble. All of his games up to this point. I mean, shockingly enough, uh, uh, he's two out of three draws. He did lose the one game. But if you look at the positions, he could easily be 0-3. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could bring up uh, the game and just take a look at his clock... For a moment, and again, uh, De Diaco yeah. on the white side against Ali Reza. Hard for me to six see minutes. six minutes for, yeah. for 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 the time control. Well, for, he just played I think rook f one. Yeah, right. but things have changed a lot since we last looked at this position. He did, and somehow it became very favorable for uh, for um, Deak. When we saw the position, we had seen it more or less uh, mm -hmm. with the move c three, and we thought, okay. Uh, these black is fine. Black maybe even more yeah, than fine, better, right? Yeah. Like he could be better. And after knight d3, knight e4, knight c5, knight d2. Uh, okay, that's strange move. And it was this move e4 that really kind of turned the tables in white's favor. Queen d8, rook d1, and we're catching up quickly to the players. Rook f1. Whoa, really? Would you have played rook f1 there? The idea g3 and f4? Yeah, I guess he was afraid of allowing a, a trade of uh, Also, maybe rooks. black was threatening rook d8. Yeah. Not threatening, but But, okay, planning. rook d8, queen a1, I have to defend. Take and put the other rook on d8, maybe? Okay. But uh, it's kind of strange, uh, because there was this rook on d1, and you kind of voluntarily... I'm not one of those who gives up the open <laughs> pile easily, you know, with my rook. Uh, rook f1, right here. Uh, var jump right in. Uh, would be would rook f1 been your top choice? Uh, rook f1 is actually one of the top moves here for wow. white here. Okay. Uh, but I want to go back a little bit, Yasser, to point out where Ali Reza made a mistake because Please. we actually liked his position. And I even mentioned that I think he has some chances here to try to play for a win. But there is one particular move he made uh, that actually turned things around here, and he's slightly worse right now. So right in this position here, uh, 92 is actually fine, this idea, to try to trade. But the logical continuation after this would be to bring your knight into the game with the tempo, Clear. now attacking the queen. And uh, even though the bishop might seem a little bit passive, but it's still it's, it's, it's important to, to capture this bishop here. So queen d3 or queen c3 forced. And now you take 
and queen take. Perhaps here he thought he you know he has this a backward pawn on c6 here, but it's still not so easy for white to untangle here. So you play the move bishop d6 now. That's you're pinning pin. this knight, and now you're threatening rook b5 ideas. And you cannot easily move the queen from a3 because you have the a2 pawn hanging. So still black is the one, uh, white is the only one who needs to find some accurate moves here. So the best way to equalize is to play queen a4. Right. Now rook to b4 comes in with the tempo, perhaps queen, uh, queen c2 now. And here you have options. You can play rook a b8, but simplest is simply to take on c5. Queen takes c5. And now you can even play rook a4. Putting pressure on a2 and queen takes c6. You can play rook a2 here as well. And uh, this a pawn could be very dangerous here. And I think with accurate play, white should be okay here. But uh, right. black is the only one who has chances. Like if you try to exchange the queens now and try to go after that pawn, that line is very dangerous because the a pawn is going to be very, very quick with a4, a3. And uh, uh, speaking of the current position for a moment, w with the inclusion of the move rook f1, uh, white has an upper hand, but it's about the clock. Right? How big is White's uh, Deox advantage, Daniel's advantage uh, at this moment? Yeah, it's not very big. It's just a very small advantage oh, very and small, uh, okay. very small advantage here. Uh, this e4 move on move 24 where he played, this was a critical move, I think. Perhaps maybe Ali Reza missed this move e4 because uh, he, if he takes on d4 after the recapture here, then you have the move rook fd1, and the position is more simplifying, and <coughs> white is slightly better here. And if you play a move like a bishop e5, then this knight d3 is just going to be excellent here, putting pressure on the bishop, and now you can pick up the pawn on c6 with a very nice advantage. So I think perhaps he might have missed this move e4, and now the current position after the move queen c3 here, um, black still has some ideas here. Queen h5 in particular is the best move here. Very concrete, putting pressure now on uh, h3. h3. You can play the move g3, and then bishop will go to e5. It's 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 hard to consolidate the position. If white can manage to that, maybe he will have some chances. But I think it's uh, dynamic equality, and with the clock situation, I think uh, there are still chances here uh, for for Firuja. Ten more moves to go, Yasser. Yep. Six minutes for Deak. All right, thank you for that, uh, Var. I'm just looking at. Uh, Fabi versus Jan. Again, it's queen and bishop versus queen and knight. And there's some toing and froing. I got excited for a second when I saw the queen on a6. Right, that's what he played. The queen d2 check uh, forced the knight uh, to drop back. Uh, check forced the bishop to drop back and somehow the queen. So back and forth, but all right. Uh, from uh, Fabi's point of view, if it was his turn, he played the move knight d4, and the e4 pawn could be a concern. And our other game, it seems to me that Wesley and Richard uh, are racing towards a draw. Again, this was the four rook ending, and I don't know. I think the I players, think. after, for example, rook a5, we could see mm -hmm. lots of trades and three versus three. Yes. I think MVL is still trying to find a way to put more pressure on Anish. All right. Yes, this was, again... Uh, the position hasn't okay. changed that much. I think they moved, shuffled the pieces around, but it's, it's still about the same position. Uh, professional wood shuffling <laughs> going on here. Knight c5 check. I'm just looking at... I don't see any... Uh, I always look for those... Can, can my opponent uh, walk into a checkmate? Maybe he can. King b6? Yes, exactly, if king b6. And if you're, if you're not paying attention, if you don't mm -hmm. cover the a6 square for a moment, you, I could make you walk the plank, mate. Yeah? Yes. So. Uh, I don't like b4 and black in the rook on a4 either. No. Because right? if black doesn't miss the mate, then. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. If the cheapo doesn't work. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your opponent walking in, into a mate. Um, I mean, it's it's still early days, but somehow 
uh, exciting games kind of turned into a little bit of a yawner. We might be seeing more draws today than we're used to. We're kind of getting spoiled. Mm -hmm. I think so. We're going to see some draws here yeah. for sure. Not much is happening in this game <coughs> here in particular. But I think in one game, I think Jan made some inaccuracies. And now I think Fabi has some, some advantage here. I want to maybe switch to that game. Sure. So... So here, actually, it's already we see a little bit of an advantage here for white 0.6. And we see now the bishop is very passive on e8. Right. So let's go back to this position here. So he played uh, queen c3, queen a6. And he, had, he also had the option of playing queen b2 check. This was another alternative here. The idea is you, if you go back 92 here, the b3 pawn is hanging. That is the difference between uh, the move queen d2 check here. The game, so yeah. here, actually, after queen b2 check, computer shows king f1, queen c1, and uh, a draw. But let's, uh, let's go to the west list game because I think uh, we might see a draw in that game. Yeah, very, very shortly. As the players have transposed into rook and three versus rook and three, they'll be uh, looking uh, to after a move like g6, figuring out, oh, excuse me, h4, uh, an extra pawn trade, uh, figuring out the fastest way to a three move repetition. Mm -hmm. Handshake coming up in this game. Is this the only time the situation's like this where I don't like the no draw for rook. <laughs> right, yeah, here you, you sort of, but you know, I'd much rather Mm -hmm. You know, suffer through the players uh, doing it, uh, what they're doing now, mm -hmm. than the alternative. I agree. Which is, I, I, I really love those positions that they're super sharp. You know, somebody's made some sacrifice to create an attack, mm -hmm. and then the players suddenly agree to a draw. Because one of them is in time trouble. Uh, yeah, and, and everybody's yeah, scared. Yeah. And the audience is so dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. You've made this great attack, and... You made a draw offer. Why did you make the draw offer? Oh, my clock was short. Mm -hmm. Two draws, uh, as that game is official. Uh, back to you. You were just saying, uh, Var, uh, that uh, Nepo made some error. In yeah, I think Nepo misplayed it here. In the current position, I see some chances here for Fabiano. In particular, the bishop is quite passive on e8 and is going to take some time to bring this bishop into the game. Let's take a look where are the some of the options in this position for, for, for Nepo try to defend here. So it's already showing that he needs to play a move like h5, which is not easy to find here because you don't really want to push the pawns uh, in this position uh, that early. There is, a, there is a defensive move, queen e7, but again, not a very natural move. The queen is kind of active here and you're bringing it back to the defense here. Now I think white wants uh, to put the knight on d4, and then you can have problems with the e4 pawn here. Exactly. So somehow I think Fabi uh, tricked uh, Jan in this position, and again, I think this move queen d2, it looks very natural, but queen b2 was much more precise here to make sure this b3 pawn is hanging. Right. And uh, after queen b2, uh, one of the main moves here is just we, we could see the game actually ending like this into a repetition here. At the we, we already analyzed the move queen e2 here because right. the queens will come off the board and bishop d7, that, that is just the equality. But so what happened now after queen d2 check, uh, Fabi played knight e2. And now we, we see a problem here. b6 pawn is hanging. So he had to go back now, a queen, queen b4, and now queen c8 check. The bishop is hanging. Now forcing the bishop back to e8. And now... Queen c2, very good move here. Perhaps this is the move maybe Nepo missed. He was maybe thinking knight d4, he has queen d2, and they will repeat here. But after queen c2 now, white is consolidating the position and now threatening to put the knight on d4, and you mm -hmm. need to protect this e4 pawn. So it's not so easy now. Again, you need to find some h5 move, for example. Again, this is counterintuitive now, knight d4. Now perhaps you have to play h4, give up the pawn on e4 and look for some counterplay with the move queen d2 here. Counterintuitive indeed. And uh, let me just uh, th uh, throw the ball uh, to Bucharest, uh, Christian, with a special guest. 
We are here with uh, Andre Diaconescu, uh, co-founder of One United Properties, one of our uh, big sponsors here at Superbet Chess Classic. Andre, welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself as well as this partnership between One United Properties and Superbet Chess Classic. Well, thanks for the invitation. Um, well, uh, we love to be part of this uh, of this event. Uh, we love to be part of the uh, phenomena of uh, chess in general. Uh, I've myself have been passionate about chess uh, from a very young age. Uh, fortunately, I didn't go um, deep into it because I had other priorities. But now that you know we established the business and we've grown and so on, I've, I've found enough time to allocate uh, to both playing and um, providing by way of sponsorship uh, towards uh, this sport. You're also the vice president of the Romanian Chess Federation and you're talking about the young generation. How important it is for the young generation to have these role models come here in Bucharest, like Ding Li Ren, the world champion, Jan Nepomniesi, Fabiano Caron, players of this caliber? Well, I think, um, uh, I think an event like that and, and the presence of such important players uh, will uh, give a big boost uh, to uh, an entire young generation who is passionate about chess. So I think uh, that uh, the fact that we, we, are, we are being involved in this and we, uh, we have managed to organize uh, such uh, an event at such a level um, will, will for sure um, feed uh, our our young generation for the next perhaps five to ten years mm -hmm. and will for, for sure uh, see results in that period. And we see already results. We have Bogdan Daniel there here. We have Richie Report. Uh, when do you think we're going to see the next big super talent come from Romanian chess? I think, I think, uh, I hope actually that the next super talent is already born. Mm -hmm. It's just we haven't seen him yet. Uh, obviously, these two players that you mentioned are extremely good. Yeah, they, they play at the top level. Uh, but I truly hope that the effort that we are doing now, especially with the chess in schools and so on, with more than 20,000 uh, um, players that are certified, uh, will, will bring uh, the big mass uh, and, and will, will have enough res will provide enough, enough resource for many top level players in the years to come. I'm feeling the strategic thinking behind all uh, this plan. Uh, great, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for all the support and we'll let you go enjoy the games now. Thank you very much as well. Thank you, uh, Christian, and indeed at uh, all of the support that uh, is going on in Bucharest. Mm -hmm. is really uh, laying a, a very fertile uh, ground uh, for the rise of a future champion, Absolutely. whoever they may be. Yeah. Um, looking at the game of uh, Anish, I feel that uh, MVL, that game s seems to be heading to a draw. The the, the action sure is in... Sorry to interrupt you, yes, but sorry. I think White actually has some idea. While, oh, please. while we're listening, I was thinking about this. What please. if I go back Rook A5 and I want to give Knight A4 check? Okay. So Rook A5, I'll play along. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Knight A4 check. I've got to... Uh, Keep uh, mm -hmm. the pawn. Now I bring the rook to the king side. Uh, F5. Let's go to F5. F5. All right. So essentially, you're saying you want your knight back. Yes. But your rook on a4 yeah. is kind of like okay. I'm freeing the you. rook. You're freeing the rook. Uh, fair enough. And um, I'll, I'll I'll play like go ahead. Uh, I was do, hoping do. you would play g6, so I could get oh. my rook on f6. <laughs> That would be too compliant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I won't be. I won't go that far. <laughs> but all right. And and here I wasn't sure if White should include a4, a5, or okay, a4. or wait for a bit and maybe improve the king's position. King d4. I don't know where I'm going though. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the question. I always yeah. thought that the rook on e e7 was a counterplay. In this particular case, I I probably want to release my rook. So I'll mm -hmm. play a move like f6, just so that I can go yeah. to the seventh rank, or second rank, pardon me, in this case, without allowing rook f7. 
still a lot of work ahead. I, I understand what you're mm -hmm. saying. I'm sympathetic to the idea that uh, the rook really on A4 isn't that good. F5 makes a better impression. The question is, will it be enough? Mm -hmm. uh, really, I think the action uh, VAR is in the Diot game. Uh, Ali Reza uh, being uh, the ones who's maybe in the worst position, but has his opponent in serious time trouble. Absolutely, Yasser, and that's why he played the move uh, knight c8. He's trying to keep the pieces on the board. In particular, there was a line if he had played rook ab8, it would have allowed white to repeat the position with knight a6, rook b7, knight c5, for example. So uh -huh. Reza is playing for the win. The act just made a move with, I think, three seconds on a clock. What? So, three seconds? Yeah, yeah, I think he has now uh, 33 seconds after completing that move. So. So let's take a look uh, at the current he position. He played bishop c1, looks like. Knight c8, so. bishop c1. Okay, so bishop to c1 came. Bishop c1, and now um, rook b8 would be a logical move to finally bring this piece into the game. Yeah. Putting pressure on the queen there. There on move number 32. So still eight more moves <coughs> to go for Deak. Basically, he has to play this move on the increment. And now the queen is under attack, so you need to find a good square for the queen. It's not easy to see where this queen should go, because if you go to e3, then it's, you're going to run into bishop d4 idea. It's still OK, but you have to go queen a3. So I don't think we're going to see the move queen e3 played. Okay. Another option is queen, c, queen c4. But in this case, now we see the knight jumping in on d6 with a tempo. And uh, you can play queen e2, but this seems like uh, yeah, you don't you don't have any any advantage now, and I think Block is going to try to create some chances, perhaps right. at, at least Black, until the time control is completed. Sorry, for I was thinking Black Knight could come to b5 and d4. So Knight b5, yeah, yeah. this is an also a possibility. Or um, you, do, you, do you like including Rook b8 Nasi, or do you want to play Knight d6 at I'll once? I'll go Knight d6 right here. Knight d6 right here, okay. Ah, let's go back to that then. Um, so knight d6 immediately. With ideas of knight b5 to d4. The, it's strange, this bishop on a3, I assume he brought it back because he wants to put his bishop mm -hmm. on e3. Would you continue with the knight b5? Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Because you can't play queen c4 now. I have a four. <laughs> uh -huh. True that, true that. Queen c4, knight a3, uh, would uh, force me uh, to uh, offer a trade of queens. Um, it's strange. I mean, there's this weak pawn on c6, but this knight on c5 <laughs> is is blocking my view. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very hard to get to that c6 pawn. Uh, truly. Yeah. Uh, Rook b8 just played, by the way. The queen is Rook under B8. attack. Rook b8. And now queen a4 by Diak. And did he do that with, uh, with with time on his clock? Queen a4 looks like a bad move after rook b5. Yeah. Uh-oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rook b5. Yes. I could get my queen trap, can I? Rook b5 and rook d4 is the idea. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Or even knight. It might have been ooh, ooh. a blunder. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Even knight. Like, for example, let's say I play a weak move, mm -hmm. and I, I could easily mm -hmm. be, you know, uh, yeah. set up for uh, bad, bad things. Queen a4. I don't know, Var, my spidey sense is tingling. Uh, Diak may be in trouble. Big trouble, actually. Queen a4 is a blunder, and if Ali Reza finds the move rook b5, I think he has a very easy plan after. Knight b6 is coming up. If the queen doesn't have any scores to go to, if you go to a3, you're always going to run into the bishop d6 idea. And with the time situation, I think if he plays rook b5, he will have excellent chances to win this game. And again, a uh, lot of complications, and Diak didn't navigate through it correctly right. and because of the time situation. And uh, rook b5 is a very logical move. Instead of move uh, queen a4, he had to play, as we were looking at, possibilities of a queen c4, probably the best way to play. That's what I would probably try to do in this position, knight d6 and queen e2. Just try to liquidate the queens off the board and perhaps you know endgame should be about equal in this position so 
now after queen a4, um, yeah, rook b5, and it should be a very, very well, big advantage. I have a question advantage. after queen a4. Of course, rook b5 looks great, but can black also play rook d1 instead? Rook d1. Let's see here. Rook d1. Actually, uh, in this case, now they just take on d1. Queen takes. King, uh, queen takes d1 and just king g2. And rook b1? This is not winning. Let's see here. And it looks rook scary to me. B1. I mean, we're in this very unpleasant pit. And um, okay, there is uh, queen takes c6. What? Looks like just escaping on time with this queen c8, queen f5 idea. Oh my! And I've How? Got, I've got oh, we get to, to. Oh. Wait, g6. Is uh -oh. g6 just losing? Uh, queen c. It might be. Well, losing yeah. is strong, but queen f7 and. Seven, I'm not losing. I've got a. I've got a perpetual. No, right. Mm, wait, queen e4 got, check. Oops. What? <laughs> okay, I, I was about to say. I thought I had a perpetual at least. At the moment you play queen e5 to defend the bishop, right? I would. I would have knight just, f8. Just bishop e3. Yes, yeah, sir. After bishop g7, just play bishop e3. You already have two pawns, and uh, actually a very strong compensation here. I see. Mm -hmm. And knight okay. e6. Yeah, and knight e6 is not running away. Okay, we have some moves Oh, we on have the a board. lot of moves. Let me just Alirash refresh did my... Play rook d1. We have rook d1 on the board, and... Well, when you see the move rook <laughs> d1, you're really attracted it's so to it. I mean, yeah. you're right. I mean, the moment you started talking about it with rook b1, you go, wow. Okay, rook d1 on the board, not rook b5. <coughs> Excuse me. So if white, if Diak found the queen c6 idea, I guess it was equal. Yes. But he has no time, so. Yeah, but rook d2 uh, was on the board. So h2 is hanging, but d8, um, shall we have a look? Yes, let's take the pawn on h2. Let's just have a look and to see what's going on. We, we're allowing a rook d8 check mm -hmm. and... Um, I'm not worried because I'm not pinned. My rook is protected. Right, yeah. and you, you, you always have this kind of... Uh, rook to b1 ideas, mm -hmm. and here we go. Ali Reza is is asking the same questions. Diak is so happy that he could play mm -hmm. king takes f1 <laughs> and gain 30 seconds on his clock. Uh, coach, what do you tell uh, your students who are time trouble addicts, as seems to be Daniel's problem in this tournament? Yeah, it's a really difficult <laughs> problem to fix, Yasser, because uh, it's, uh, it will take a lot of time. And uh, luckily, I don't have too many uh, students right now that uh, uh, have this problem. Are suffering. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely, because it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not easy. It just one thing I would say, just you need to be more practical, be aware of, of your time situation. And one of the recommendations I have is just try not to spend more than 15 minutes because if you already spend that much time, you already know what the move you should play and you should just go for it. Basically trust your instincts. If you spend more time, it's just uh, more thinking, it's just gonna, you know, you're gonna hesitate more and more likely to make a mistake. If, for example, if, knowing myself, that's when I, I make a lot of mistakes when I spend more time and I don't trust my intuition. Exactly, it uh, shows a, a, lo a lack of self-confidence in the fact that you're, mm -hmm. you, you keep analyzing the same things. By the way, instead of allowing a rook to, a rook to d8, uh, queen takes h2, rook to d8 check, uh, Ferruja thought he was being clever by including the move knight d6. And I have a little questions about that because, again, that rook on b8 is being blocked. And we like right. the idea of rook b1. <laughs> I like your idea of rook b1. Uh, very much. Uh, so can Naji, white when play you could... queen d1 here and still have rook d8 ideas now with a better version because knight on b6 would be hanging? Oh, uh, lucky for if... Ferruja that the, that the uh, the, the rook on b8 is de de defended. In queen d1 looks right. Queen takes h2. I liked your check. And if mm -hmm. I was forced to play rook takes right. d8, I'd be crying. The king h7. But I think uh, Dia queen played Queen takes queen c6. Takes. We yeah, like queen d1. Pawn, yeah. Queen That's d1 right. looked logical, and we were just looking at that. Queen takes c6. Again, 
uh, uh, Dioc playing with uh, literally increments. Um, queen takes h2. Whoa. Uh, isn't he playing with fire after queen takes h2? I mean, there's a bishop hanging. Knight c4 is coming. Rook b1 Knight c4, still coming. rook b1 on... Uh, black is one having a lot of fun suddenly. Queen takes h2. Hold on, do we... Do we Hold have on. immediately knight c4? I was about to ask. <laughs> Can't, why do I need queen to h2 anymore? I mean, if I could play rook b1 right mm -hmm. here, right now, I'd be golden. So knight c4 immediately? Um, my spidey sense is tingling here. I'm sensing opportunity, Var. Is there opportunity after knight c4 or queen h2? Knight c4 still is better, Yasser, but white has this move rook d5. Okay. Uh, instead, uh, instead of the knight c4, rook c8 is actually winning. Uh, I can show that line, but let's take a look at the knight c4. How is white holding here after uh, that? So if knight c4, yes. rook d5, it looks rook, looks very, very scary here. <coughs> rook but b1. Rook b1. There's knight d3. Crazy, damn it. Now queen c8, queen c8 check, or actually knight d3 here right. Im immediately. Yeah, you're, you're defending and all the knight key. knight d2 check, it's just incredible. <laughs> you have to play, king e1 loses to knight f3, so you have to play king g2, and then allow this, queen f3, and here actually, black doesn't have anything better than just to give a perpetual. No. So, uh, Triple zeros, you know, that's crazy. You, you just, you march the king up the board, and you can't... Uh, no checkmate. No checkmates. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. So, so but, sorry. Queen but, takes uh, c6 is uh, a uh, mistake. Mistake. Though, right? Queen takes h2 is just winning now. Just he winning. Because threatening to check on h1 and pick he's, up the bishop. He's on munched. C1. He's munched on h2, yeah. as you're about to suggest. Yes. Knight d7 is the best move. Then you have rook b8 attacking the queen. Queen has to take on b6. Then we have rook takes c1 check. King goes to e2. And now a very important check here. Queen h5. And now you're forced to play f3. Sorry, let me just catch. Okay, first of all, uh, apologies uh, to interrupt you there, Var. Uh, he didn't play the knight d7 move that you suggested. Mm -hmm. We do have queen takes c6, queen h2 on the board, knight d3. Please pick it up from this moment after knight d3. Yeah, after knight d3, here's just uh, queen h1 check. Yep. Now uh, you have king, to go e2 king e2 is forced. Yep. And now a very strong move here is bishop d4. Quiet killer. Quiet, uh, but it's got a very nice idea behind it. You first protect your knight on b6. I love it. Putting pressure on f2. And actually the most important threat now is rook c8. Exactly. Put pressure on the queen and try to move the queen from this diagonal to pick up the e4 pawn. And here Excellent. the best line actually is to play rook c2. Okay. And just to sacrifice on c8 here after the move, rook c8, queen takes c8, knight takes c8, rook c8 check, king h7, but this is just a uh, completely losing position. You have a uh, rook and a knight, but your e4 pawn is still hanging, your king is weak, and right. uh, black is just winning here. And we do have queen h1 check, king e2 on the board. Now it's the time for the quiet killer, bishop d4, and things have suddenly perked up big time. Uh, MVL, Anish Gary, draw. That's not an expected, but in a marquee matchup of our tournament co-leaders, uh, holy smokes, is Fabi? Wow, what a move, F7, F5. It's hard for me to imagine that, that, that Nepo voluntarily played that move. Black has weakened the king side so much. What if white just Terrible. plays queen c7 right now? I mean, wild horses could not <laughs> stop me from playing queen c7 <laughs> right now. That is looking, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, alert, alert. Will Robertson, uh, danger. And I think uh, Nepos reaching second time trouble because they have passed the time control. They're on move 45. Okay. He's down to 10 minutes in this very uncomfortable position. Nepo who is down. Yeah. Wow, uh, for a player who is perpetually ahead of his opponents, this is, uh, is very unusual to see Nepo, uh, the one suffering on the clock. Uh, well, we'll keep an eye on this one. They have still lots of time. Let's go back to the Diak Ali, Re Ali Reza game. And we do have 
I believe bishop d4 on the board, that quiet killer, rook d2, d1, tempo against the queen. Uh, Var had been pointing out that rook c8 was on uh, the agenda. Ooh. I think black's about to win. Queen h5, that's the best move, nasty. The best move and the only winning move. Wow. The only winning move. Wow, but that's yeah. nasty. King e1 on the board. We're and still rook c8? Rook c8, right? Rook c8. Now, the problem is if I just move my queen, I'm allowing mm -hmm. this. White uh, king looks uncastled, <laughs> even though it was castled before. Right. Maybe your best move is to castle <laughs> and put the rook on f1. Uh, this looks terrible. This yeah. looks terrible. Uh, a lot, does, uh, do, does Ferusha have over? a lot of time? Ferusha I mean, has I know. Uh, 19 minutes. Yeah, I know D Diak mm -hmm. is relying upon his They increments. just made a 40th move already. They uh, did yeah. make the 40th move. Okay. But after Rook C8, I think the engine eval is going to be huge. Am I guessing correctly? Uh, yes. Yes. It's like a plus a plus seven right now. Uh, actually, plus seven. Yeah, plus seven. In fact, uh, uh, maybe he hasn't played it yet. Rook c8. But uh, in, in, just in case, he asked if he wants, he can repeat one more time with queen h1, uh -huh. and, and then then play the move rook c8. But I think rook c8 is very natural move, and uh, it's just the uh, game is over after this. Well, exactly. That once you see this move, bishop on e5 to d4, protecting the knight and unleashing the rook with a gain of tempo. Uh, one of the things that I, I really felt that I was becoming a chess master mm -hmm. when I began to really understand the idea of winning tempi, mm -hmm. attacking my piece, my opponent's pieces, uh, and, and gaining uh, development for myself. So as I became stronger and stronger, I was always looking out for those game, those, those moves that would win me tempi. Yes. So to, to my way of thinking, rook c8 was embedded suddenly. I was hardwired <laughs> to finding moves like queen h1 check. Checks I always looked at first because those were the most forcing. And then the secondly, those attacking moves mm -hmm. that gain time. So rook c8 would be like, you know, ingrained in my mind and I would be looking at that. We do have rook c8, queen b7. And is it that rook c2 move, or is there something even more decisive than rook c2 at this moment? Uh, queen f3 is the key move here. Queen f3. And rook, c, rook c2, I think white has knight f4 with a tempo. No, I don't think so. There's bishop f2. Never mind. <laughs> Let me explain to you what you may have missed. Yeah. Good morning, St. Louis, right? Uh, uh, queen f3. Oh, that looks really nice. I mean, that just... You so know, then why wasn't rook c2 winning immediately? That is a good question. Why wasn't rook c2 immediately? Uh, rook c2 is also really good, okay. but there's a rook d2 defense <laughs> there. A uh, rook d2 defense. Just, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. But queen f3 is like one of those moves that just asks, the, asks your opponent, find a move. <laughs> You're, you, you can't move your knight. This, this fellow's hanging. Um, you can't play Why bishop e3. Why is Every move is bad. Your queen is somehow st stuck in rook d2. Every move drops something else. Exactly. Exactly. It looks, it looks like queen f3 is almost a, a, a kind of a zugzwang. Now maybe we can just take a pause and take a look at uh, the other uh, remaining game. We have three out, of five, three out of the five games of the round have been mm -hmm. drawn. Uh, but in uh, a matchup of the co-leaders, we think... Fabio has a great chance right here, right now. After f7, f5, queen c7, tickling the bishop. And uh, how is Nepo supposed to resist uh, uh, Var? I think Nepo is in very, very big trouble, Yasser. Just that, it's yeah. that simple. It's, it's yeah. really bad. If Fabi plays queen c7, he has excellent winning chances. Big advantage. I wanted to go back a little bit and maybe sure. analyze this position here and just get your opinion, guys. Uh, so. Uh, like, for example, if I'm here blocking this position, I would be a little bit hesitant to play the move knight e4. Because that changes the structure and frees up the, uh, you know, position for the knight to be on d4. So uh, I, I might consider, like, maybe playing uh, queen c7. Just try to s sit on the position for a second here. Because the last move was knight c2. 
And uh, I'm not sure exactly what is white trying to do, because you don't really want to play before a four pawn will be hanging. So knight e4 is still okay, but it just changes the character of the position. So for example, I think queen c7 would have been a, a good choice as well, just to ask a question, what are you going to do next? Right. Because you don't really have uh, too many ideas. And again, computer now suggests to go back here and then you go back to c5, for example. This is maybe a way that uh, Nepo could have just played and made an easy draw here. But instead, he played knight e4. And now this leads to a completely different type of position now. Bishop takes c4. And at least now, knight is well placed here. Anchored, and, yeah. and again, in this position, I'm not sure if I want to move this bishop from d7 because the bishop is doing a great job now to restricting this knight here. Right. So I think uh, he could have maybe played <coughs> some other moves, even king g8, just to sit on the position to see what is the next thing Fabiano can try to do. I don't see too many options here for him because you don't have a b4 break. You don't really want to play a 5 in this position. g4 also I'm not sure because it weakens the position. So this is, I think, a pretty easy way he can try to hold this position. But instead he tried to activate the bishop. And now there's some possibilities of the f5 square. And if we go back to the, the current position now, and here he misplayed it with the queen d2 move, of course. And uh, after queen c2, bishop d7, knight d4 here, he had to play this move king g8. This is the best defense. And try to give up this e4 pawn here. Not an easy decision to make. But the point is now, if you play queen takes e4, he can, he can perhaps play this move b5 to try to Not exchange easy. some pawns. And uh, if you take on b5, bishop b5, and play the move a4 and try to get some endgame four versus three. And again, this would have been the best way for uh, Nepo to play. But instead, he played the move f5, which I think really weakens the position now. Mm -hmm. Now the knight is going to be extremely strong because this f5 pawn will be hanging in all of the variations. And Fabiano just played the correct move queen c7. and. This is a big problem now. Knight and queen are very <coughs> strong when opponent king is weak here. Earlier we didn't have that, but here there are a lot of weaknesses in a black position now, and it's going to be very difficult to defend this position. If you play, let's say, king e7 loses to knight c6, so lose Oops. your queen immediately, and you need the way to protect your bishop. You can't really move the bishop anywhere, so you almost have to play king e8 only move. And now check on b8. If you play king e7, then you're running into a queen e5. <coughs> you're in big trouble. If you play king f7, now this very nice move, queen d8 now. Putting pressure on the bishop and very difficult to defend this position here. f5 yeah. is hanging, so suddenly a lot of things are loose and hanging for black here. He did have, he had to play queen d2 check against queen c7, and he did. And uh, Fabi played bright d4, e2. That is the current position. It looks like Fabi is about to win the pawn on b6. That's the problem. How yeah. are we going to defend the pawn on, uh, on uh, b6? We've got to keep, the, the, the bishop has to, do, and these are the results so far. Right, so far we have three draws uh, between MVL and Geary, Robert and Wesley So, and Ding and Duda. Ding and Duda kicked it all off. Yeah. With, uh, but uh, we are expecting two wins out of the two remaining games. And if Fabi should uh, win this game, it might be turning into the All-American show. Yeah. As uh, we would have a clear American leader in Fabi. And Wesley started it out as being <laughs> a clear leader uh, in the first round. Uh, he would be tied for second. But most importantly for Fabi, he'd be kicking down mm -hmm. a key rival, and that key rival being Nepo. Uh, but the point is, the move 92 really leaves Nepo in a, in, a, in a very serious predicament. The bishop on b7 needs protection. The pawn on b6 needs protection. It's not easy to do yeah. both. You know, just a few moves ago, before the time trouble, yeah. it looked like we would have five draws. Yes. And then we came back. And, and all of a sudden, Diox position imploded, as did Nepo's, uh, Nepo's position. And I couldn't agree with you more, uh, uh, Var, as you were pointing out, what a strange decision right here mm -hmm. to play the move knight e4. If I were in Nepo's shoes and I was determined to, to play actively, you know, 
I would have been attracted to the move b5. I would love to take the light squared bishops off the board. I'll give up the d4 square. That's a square. good knight on f6. Yeah, yeah, that's a good knight on f6 and maybe even a better knight on e4. Yeah. Than a, so if I could get anything, you know, like resembling these and uh, yeah, our number one well, seed is back to 50%. Yeah. And he played the move queen f3, queen queen guys, f3. and after queen f3, Diak just immediately resigned. He just said, oh my gosh, I've got no <laughs> moves. And yeah, we thought Zuxwang. Uh, mm -hmm. Our uh, producer loves that. I mean, Tom, Tom likes Zugzwang. I mean, he's he's all over Zugzwang. Queen F3, uh, nice, nice win by Ferruja, but maybe again he really time trouble. He really outplayed his opponent in time yeah, trouble. Yeah, the time trouble was the was the factor there, and it's been a, it's been the case for Diop the whole time. All four games, Entire all four, four games, games, guys. He's yeah. been, and the other two games also, he was in serious trouble. You remember against Fabiano? Exactly. He was in a losing position as well. He somehow escaped. It's it's very tough to play in this kind of tournament against some of the very very best players in the world. And if you're in time trouble every single game, I think this is going to make your chances <coughs> very, very slim to do well. I know in the previous years he did okay. I think last year actually Diak uh, finished fourth place in this yeah. tournament. Yeah. So, but this he, year he is more, more tough, more difficult for him uh, to do well. And uh, turning to our remaining game, as we hope to have an interview with Ali Reza, um, Bobby said, "Gift me the pawn." Yeah. Uh, queen takes b6, uh, attacking the bishop on e6, and Nepo said, "Okay, I'll defend the, uh, I'll defend the bishop." But here, I have never seen such an open invitation <laughs> to trading queens as I see right now. Let's start with the move queen d4. Please do trade queens and the knight takes d4 just perfectly in time to Better hit the bishop. And extra pawn. And mm -hmm. your idea yeah. of getting that, that, that those queens off the board so never looks so d4, good. Uh, what if black goes after the b3 pawn by playing queen c2? Okay, now we've got mm -hmm. this fellow on tap, uh, but uh, I almost feel like, no, I don't have a, the one thing I don't want to allow is something of this nature mm -hmm. where I may be right. forced to give a perpetual check if I have one. <laughs> so let's just see that one again, queen c2. Let's go take this guy. King g6. King g6. Pause for just a moment because I'm thinking I can just uh, go queen b6. I, I, I want to pin mm -hmm. you. Uh, queen do, do, do. I have queen takes b3. Ah, thank you. But you can't play queen a6. Ah, that was a, that, that mm -hmm. shakes the cobwebs. Now, if you take, I do mm -hmm. have knight d4, right. and I can, any checks, I can go king g3. Mm -hmm. And you're forced maybe to go back. Right. Okay. Oh, Oh, I want to play queen e6 and knight d4 so badly. But. Exactly. You <laughs> know that th th this really happened, uh, this exact kind of thing. It was a game between Granda Julio uh, Zuniga uh, from Peru and Michael Gurevich. And literally, there was queen takes e6 check. Michael took the, took the queen, and at the same time, mm -hmm said, you can't move the knight. <laughs> the knight is pinned, you know, so he took the queen and he stopped him from moving the knight to fork the king and queen because it was an illegal move. And, oh, no. you know, you had to resign because he gave up his queen. And uh, let's jump to Bucharest uh, as Christian is with our sole winner, at least so far, of today. Thanks, Yasser. Ali Reza, first of all, congratulations. A big victory for you yesterday. You came to the studio, you seemed a little bit disappointed, but also hopeful because you felt like the dust is off the shoulders and finally you're uh, starting to play some clear chess. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I think, um, my, as I said yesterday, my game throughout the tournament is decent level, I think. Just my results were not good and now I'm happy that I got this win. He's a very solid player with white, and uh, it's kind of impossible to beat him with black. And 
I'm really happy to get this win. Definitely a solid player, but he's been struggling in this event. Uh, outside of that, minus one. Also, his positions haven't been that mm -hmm. good. Was that part of your strategy, and did you try to complicate matters early on in this game? Yeah, the last year also, for instance, he was in a lot of losing position, and he was getting out of it very good. He was losing his meal, and he was defending very well. So that's kind of his style, and of course, he has to improve it still. But um, yeah, for me today, my plan was to just play solid with black, and yeah. I didn't try it. For instance, last year I played King's Indian. <laughs> This year I just wanted, for me, draw was okay. Actually. Draw was okay, okay. Yes, and um, if he wants to force things with white, I cannot do much. Anyway. So let's talk about the game, because... Uh... Yeah, he chose the most solid line that there is in Slav with white, <laughs> except c takes d5, and I thought he wants to make a quick draw, but I, man, I played a tricky move with bishop before to not allow him to go for e4, which is also okay, bishop e7, e4. Was this uh, your preparation without you don't have I, to really I don't it think it was my I don't I just remember uh, there is this possibility but I I didn't prepare this because everything is okay here yeah so he played this and suddenly he got very aggressive with before but I think it's a good move but I think there is no need I think just rook e1 rook d1 also but before is a good move and here he has to go for e4 because as we saw in the game Knight b6, if I get it's not good. And here I think I'm just okay after takes, 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 and castle. And knight f6, b5. Play a normal game yeah, of chess, and it's, right? it's very equal, so. Equal, yeah. Yeah, so. So he was definitely getting ambitious at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think he just uh, miscalculated something. I don't know, because normally he would not go for this pawn sacrifice to take it back again. And for me, it was weird. I think like maybe he missed knight b6, bc, dc. I don't know. Yeah. Because normally, either you go for e4 here, or you don't go this, to this line to take back the pawn and equalize. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so at this point, you are already starting to get some hopes of yeah. maybe you know getting but, a game at least. Yeah, yeah, of course. But still, it was a bit risk to go for this because I was not sure of, for instance, this plan e4, and. Because my bishop is on c7, it can be dangerous. e5, knight e4, but I like to. It, I like the fact that it's complicated. So. Finally, we get to yeah. play some chess, right? Yeah, yeah. And it definitely felt that way. Uh, yeah, let's here, keep going. He's trying to equalize. So. At this point, you felt like he was trying yes. to find the equality in the position. But he, after knight b2, a5, he got everything got out of hand for him. I think because. He missed the plan of c3, c3 yeah. but he played perfectly, I think, <laughs> here, knight c5, and he equalized probably here, but, yeah, this knight d2 was very important, I think, my only chance, and yeah, e5. It's funny, Gary was in the studio, and we were watching your game, and he was saying that you're really trying to give back the pawn, but in mm. a creative way, right. to get some yeah, yeah, action. Yeah, exactly, because this pawn was going anyway, because it's <laughs> not defended by the <laughs> end, so. Yeah. Yeah, e5 was not so good because I missed e4. Mm. His, his e4 is just brilliant. And I think I have to go to take the bishop and then push e5. And here maybe I'm better a bit. But it's still very dry. Looks very. Uh, yeah, dry I wanted yeah. to make things still complicated, but it could have backfired, of course. Takes. Yeah, bishop b2. I, I, saw. I was confused why he didn't go bishop b2 here, actually. Mm. What? Okay, go Maybe knight d7. Yeah. And it's, it's around equal, probably. Equal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so takes, probably missed bishop before. Yeah, queen c3, I was, I was like hoping he just doesn't go for it because... <laughs> so you saw this move? Yeah, of course I yeah. saw this move because first I saw this, this line I'm just lost here, 96 and everything collapses. Yeah, I was just praying that he doesn't <laughs> see queen c3. <laughs> because I, I bluffed a bit with bishop f4, and it <laughs> works. <laughs> but, you know, practical chess is also important, right? Yeah. And at this point, he only had 12 minutes yeah, yeah. for a lot of moves still right. left in before you reach time. Yeah, before, queen c3 so. is not an easy move. Not easy, yeah. yeah. And you have so many moves that you can right. play, right? Maybe queen a1 even in this And position. he was also yeah. still in the mood to make equality. I mean, he was not thinking about advantage. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. So and here, queen g5. I was trying to be practical. I was not thinking to how it here. Rook f1. 
Yeah, queen h5. Yeah, h3. Okay, g3, bishop e5. Yeah, knight c8. Here he had 30 seconds. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I cannot explain what I mean because he's under a lot of pressure with time. So, but yeah, this king g2, queen f3 is a solid plan. Yeah. But he blundered here, rook d1. Ah, rook b5 was, it was better. But yeah, I wasn't. But rook d1 definitely looked like a very, right. very good Yeah, to move. take is a bit crazy to take on king g2. To. And what if rook b4? Ah, oh, he could take queen Just c8, take. queen f5. Yeah, yeah, because take, rook takes. He could take. Oh, yeah, it was, I thought I'm winning here, but he says. Ah, oh, yeah, I can 96. take a 96 maybe? Is that it? Bishop b3. Bishop b3, not 96. Ah, 96. Oh, 96 yeah, 96, 24. Yes. Ah, I missed. Okay, this is a bit yeah. strange, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I missed this, but. He's, he has 30 seconds this here, so. Takes, knight b6. Yeah, in here, it's gone. For I him. think it's so. already gone. Yeah. Ali Reza, a big victory, especially with the black pieces. Never an easy uh, feature. Uh, congratulations and good luck in the Thank rest you. of your games. Thank you. Guys, bye. Thank you, Christian. Uh, good luck indeed, Ali Reza. Um, earlier, a viewer had asked, mm -hmm. Is there luck in chess? And we go, yeah. actually, yes. And uh, you just heard it yourselves there in that interview where Ali said, I bluffed. <laughs> I played the move bishop f4, yeah. hoping. And it's quite true. If, if Diak had played bishop b2, it would have been so much easier because right. remember he was playing bishop c1 mm -hmm. and he was kind of flip-flopping around. But bishop b2 would have clarified everything. Uh, we have a remaining game of our two tournament co-leaders, Var. Is uh, Fabi uh, making progress? Yeah, he's making some progress, but it's not so easy, Yasser. I will show you a key line here where I think Please. he needs to find the only move here to have uh, winning chances here. So this is the current position we have. Jan actually is trying to activate that bishop, and that's why he gave up the pawn and hoping to win the b3 pawn here. So let's take a look now here. So after king f7, um, queen d4. Yeah, is the best expect. move. Yeah, queen c2, keep an, uh, keeping an eye on b3, and it's very important to keep this knight uh, pinned at all times so he doesn't jump in on d4. So, right. uh, queen a7, check. <coughs> I think you guys were looking at this line king g6, queen, queen a6, g6. king f7, queen a5, bishop takes b3. And now, black uh, wants to play bishop c4, and also the a4 pawn is hanging. So, here actually, if you play king e1, just queen d1 check, king f2 will go back to c2. So again, the only move here actually is to play queen c3. Not queen takes f5 yeah, check. If you take queen takes f5, right. then king g8. And bishop c4 is a big problem. Bishop c4 is a big problem and mm. black is just very, very active here. Gotcha. So for example, you can even play the move a5, bishop c4, queen a Queen h5, you're, you're sort of defending, but then you cannot really make progress in this position. You're like in a permanent pin in this position right. and can't really do anything. So you have to uh, give a perpetual after, let's say, f5, queen e8, queen g6. So that's why in this position, it's uh, very important to find this move here after bishop e3, queen c3. Okay. And now after you take on a4, then the queens will come off the board and this Tempo is crucial. Knight d4 attacking the bishop and the pawn on f5. So white will be probably winning in this endgame. So black that. doesn't have to take on c3 here and can play the move queen a2. Try to keep the queen on the board and still threatening the move bishop c4. But here again, another difficult move that Fabiano needs to find. He can play a5, bishop c4. He has to play the move king g3. Breaking the pin. Breaking the pin. If you take on e2, actually, queen takes b3 check, and uh, king has to move, let's say, to f8, and white is actually just winning here. Queen will go to b6, protecting the e3 pawn. King will be uh, will go to back to on h2, and then you continue pushing the a pawn, a5, a6. So this is winning. So, so in this position now, uh, Queen a2, looks like uh, they're actually following this position, queen a2. And um, uh, in that line, if we continue, um, actually, so here, queen c3, queen a2, king g3, 
and uh, bishop takes a4. So this is your chance to eliminate the pawn before pawn reaches a5. Queen c7 check, king g6, and knight c3 here. Attacking the queen and a bishop. And again, the line continues. Queen b3, queen d6 check, king h7. You capture on a4, and after queen d5, you're going to be winning this f5 this pawn. This endgame so, wow. is winning. Wow. Uh, and good, uh, this is, I think, very good winning chances because the e4 wow. pawn is going to be really weak after you capture the f5 mm -hmm. pawn. Wow. This is not easy. Not at all. Uh, in fact, that's, uh, that's some, some, some very, very, very serious work. Uh, as we get prepared for break, just uh, give me your intuition. Is this game going to be our second decisive game? or Yes. Yes. yes, it will be. Okay, okay. Well, that would give us a clear leader. As we go on break, uh, Christian caught up with some uh, fans in uh, the playing hall. I think you're going to enjoy uh, the upcoming special. We are here with Anna and Elisa. Anna, Elisa, welcome to the show. Tell us a bit about uh, how are you feeling to see all these great players here. The world champion is here in Bucharest. How do you feel about that? Enthusiastic. Yeah. We are excited. I'm quite nervous, actually. <laughs> it's my first time going to such a big event, and it's We amazing. can't wait to see what happens next. When did you guys start playing chess? Uh, she's more into chess than me. Yeah, she just kind of accompanies me. Uh, I started playing like one year ago. And what would you say was your uh, favorite player as you were picking up chess? Oh, that's hard to pick. Um, I got into chess because of the famous, you know, YouTuber Debbie Osman. Mm -hmm. Got on chess. Um, but it's hard to pick. Um, I'd say Hikaru. Hikaru, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I watch him on streams sometimes. Very cool, very cool. And how about the Queen's Gambit? Did you guys see that show? I wanted to see it. I think I'm going to see it. <laughs> I saw it like twice or three times. I'm not sure. It was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. And from this tournament, who is your favorite player? Who do you think is going to win this tournament? Mm. I'm not sure. We'll see what's um, next. what happens next, honestly. Yeah, Nepo, I think. Nepo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw that he was like one pawn up, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is us. We're getting a lot of Nepo fans here. Mm -hmm. What is it about Nepo? What uh, attracts you to his playing style? Um, not sure what to say about that. I don't think I can say anything about the playing style, but I think he's a good player. I mean, I saw that he was against Ding Liren in mm -hmm. uh, the world championship and yeah well guys thank you very much for uh, joining us Anna Elisa go enjoy the show thank, thank you. you chess in St. Louis is back with nine major tournaments throughout the year it all kicks off in March with the second edition of the American Cup with 16 players across two fields fighting for a $300,000 prize fund in this double elimination tournament with both classical and rapid time controls. For the first time since 2020, the Cairns Cup is back, featuring the world's best female chess players competing for a $180,000 prize fund beginning June 3rd. Seasonal classic events are back, starting with the Spring Chess Classic on April 5th, the Summer Chess Classic August 2nd, followed up with the St. Louis Norm Invitational and the Winter Chess Classic wraps up the year in December. September brings back everyone's favorite, Chess Night on Legs, where some of the world's best don't even know what's coming and compete for a $150,000 prize fund. 30 players across three fields come together in St. Louis for the U.S. Juniors, Girls, and Senior Championships starting July 15th. In partnership with U.S. Chess, the best in the U.S. fight to be the nation's best and a $400,000 prize fund in October as the U.S. and U.S. Women's Championships takes place in the chess capital of America. A year full of action-packed chess is just getting started. All broadcasts are available on our St. Louis Chess Club YouTube and Twitch.tv channels.
Hello and welcome back uh, to our coverage of the Supervet Chess Classic from Bucharest, Romania. We have four results. Yes, Russia. we had one win today by our top seed Firuja with the black pieces and three draws between MPL and Giri, Rapport and Wesley, and Ding and Duda. Well, the remaining game features a matchup between two of our tournament co-leaders. Coming in today's competition, we had a quad. Four players tied for first, including the man you're looking at uh, sitting on stage, Fabi. Uh, his opponent, Nepo, uh, came in with a plus one score. And at the moment, well, what to say? Two extra pawns for white should yeah. be winning. Is it going to be difficult for Fabi to convert, uh, Var? Um, it's not so easy to win. I mean, I think he should be able to convert this advantage into a win, but we can take a look at some of the lines. At some point, yes, sir, he needs to sacrifice one of the pawns to get rid of this pin, this unpleasant pin So uh, on, of the knight only two. So okay. let's go back here to the current position. So king h8 is just played. Again, if you get rid of this pin and put a knight on d4, you'll be just simply winning. But it's not so easy to do that. So I think he needs to start with the move before in this position. You can give a check, but after king h7, it, you don't really make any progress. So you need to come back queen a5. So before is necessary. So if he plays that, then bishop c4. Right. Very logical move, putting pressure on the, on the knight. And now queen d8 check. King h7, queen d1. Defends the knight, defends the pawn. Exactly. And now a4 pawn is also defended. If you take only two, I think this endgame is just going to be very, very comfortable here. You can play queen b2 or queen c4. So you have really good winning chances here because there are a lot of pawns on the board. So it's going to be hard to generate a, a, a perpetual ideas here, perpetual checks. So for example, queen to b5, yeah, like queen d4, and f5 pawn once H2 again. Square. As a pocket, yeah. Yeah, yeah. f5 pawn once again is a big problem. So black shouldn't take on e2 okay. uh, in this position. So let's go back um, in this position. So bishop d3. Sure. He, he can just play bishop d3 here. And the question is now how to get rid of this pin here. So you have to continue with b5. Okay. Trying sure. to advance the pawn. And now queen b2. So we're a little stuck. Yes. Again, if we if we play king e1, there is a queen b4 check. So we're not really making much progress. So we have to play the move b6. Okay. To sacrifice the pawn. And now, if you take on b6, then finally we can put this knight on d4. Uh. Then we are very happy here because the pressure on uh, f5 and with the a pawn, this should be winning here. It's like plus four here for white. Gotcha. You know what's surprising? Looking at this line. And I can see the engine behind VAR, it says plus four, when we're only up one pawn. <laughs> well, two I, at the moment, right? A4 no, after B6, B6 queen right, B6. Right, I'll be one. It still says plus four. <laughs> I know, that can be really disconcerting. And uh, the line actually continues here, guys. Bishop A6, if black right. says, you know, I don't want to take this pawn, I just want to keep this pin. Keep the and pressure. And now you play A5. Right. Now, it seems like you should be just winning. Your pawns are just keep progressing. But it's still, it's still not easy to untangle here. So, for example, Bishop D3. Okay. And now, again, we have um, uh, d different ideas we can try to do. Again, b7 is one option. Queen takes, and finally we finally again, get the knight, knight on d4. d4. And uh, queen b2 check. We can play king g1 or king g3, and this should be winning now. Right. So this is the, the main idea how Fabi should try to win this game by advancing the pawn, eventually sacrificing one pawn, and putting the knight on d4. Thank you, Vara. Let's take a sneak peek at what we can expect tomorrow before the rest day. All right. So we'll see Nipomnishi against Vashela Graf, Duda against Fabi, Firuja against Ding. Very interesting matchup there. So against Diak. Okay, maybe opportunity for Wesley. And Giri against Rupert. Nice matchups, absolutely. Uh, I really like that idea of what you were saying from the current position. Play the move b4 and go queen d8 check and queen d1. I think that that, mm -hmm. that that makes it very, very clean and it's very clear what you have to do. I think uh, at this moment, uh, because we have one remaining game, it's nice to give a shout out to our audience and say we enjoyed 
your testing uh, the your panel. Yeah. And uh, we invite you again to uh, join the conversation. And you can uh, send your tweets or right. comments, you can suggestions. Send your tweets using hashtag SuperBadChessClassic. Or you can send your questions via YouTube uh, or Twitch on St. Louis Chess Club channel. Right. Now, Var, uh, we had had this question earlier from the audience about whether or not there was luck in chess. And while there isn't that much luck, yes, there is. <laughs> we had it today when uh, Faruja came on uh, with Christian and he said, I bluffed a little bit with the move bishop f4, that I bluffed. If you don't mind bringing up that particular game and that particular moment, because did you catch what he was saying as to what it was that he had bluffed? Had he bluffed bishop b2 or something? Yeah, I think this is the position where he played the move bishop bishop f4 here. Right. Let's, let's take a look what else uh, he could have done. So engines like the idea of queen takes d4, but I think he never really wanted to exchange the queens because of the clock situation and knowing right. that the act is probably going to burn more time here. So the move bishop f4 here played here, and uh, so queen c3 was played. So he's he's attacking the rook on uh, c1. Right. And uh, the problem now, if you take on d8. Rook takes d8. There is a back rank problem here, uh, yes, sir. You don't have the move rook c2, the desired move rook c2, to keep right. a control of the c4 square. And you have to move the rook somewhere, and then you're going to run into some problems with the move uh, knight c4. Right. So that's, that's why he played the move bishop f4 here. Objectively, again, this position is actually slightly better for white after the move bishop f4. And Deak played the correct move queen uh, no actually he didn't he didn't play queen c3 queen c3 would have been a best move perhaps this is where things started to go slightly wrong for him when he moved the rook up and remember in the rest of the game he always had some background problems in this game here right so had he played the move queen c3 here yes. attacking the queen let's say queen g5 and now you just put the rook not on c2 but on a very stable square on b1 mm. and uh, you're never going to have any problems on a back rank it's going to be protected and i think uh, i don't see how black can win this position because g3 is coming up you still have the weaknesses on c6 and a5 in fact white is slightly better there so the bluff paid off uh, thanks to the time trouble and here we are looking at fabi and the current time is is that accurate so nepo has 32 minutes yeah. let's say and Fabi has 11 and 20. But did he already get his 30 minute increase? Yes, yes he so, did. He did. So yeah. that's it. He's not mm -hmm. getting any more time. And I think Fabi is doing the right thing by taking a long thing here, because this yeah. is the critical moment. If he finds the main idea of putting the queen on d1, yes. then throwing the b pawn yes. back to black, and then freeing the knight from the pin with knight d4, from yeah. there he won't need much time to convert and, that game. Exactly, using the pawn as a decoy. And from this current position, this is uh, where it, it kind of looks a little bit counterintuitive to play the move B, uh, b3, b4, because it's almost like, oh, the one thing I shouldn't allow is the move bishop c4, because then the queen and the bishop are nicely coordinating, mm -hmm. and suddenly white's in, no, white is not in trouble. In fact, the move b4 is really good, because as Var was saying, what you should be willing to do is your two pawns up, give one of them back. Yeah. Just drop back with the queen, it defends the knight, it defends the bishop, and if you try to maintain this uh, pin, if you will, uh, like this, uh, I'm going to use the pawn eventually <laughs> as a decoy uh, so to, to get you um, off the pin. Also, when, once we get into these types of positions with the pawn so advanced, I'm almost starting to think I could just, just give up the knight and, yeah. and away you go. <laughs> exactly. So the the sometimes you have to overcome your reluctance to play a move like mm -hmm. b4 because you see bishop c4 and you go, why should I give my opponent this kind of counterplay? Do you think, Var, that that's what uh, Fabi is dealing with, that he has to allow bishop c4? that he, he, he wants to win the game cleaner, if you will. Uh, absolutely. I think he's feeling that he should be winning here, and he's sure. trying to work out the lines where 
he doesn't have to play this move, but he has been spending about 10 minutes already on the clock, and he's getting low uh, at the moment. So he really needs this move before to win the game. I don't see any other moves or alternatives. He's, he's got nine minutes right now, so he needs to, he needs to go for it. Uh, you know, hopefully he sees this idea of before and then transferring the queen to d1. Um, otherwise, I think Jan is just going to pick up the pawn on b3 and uh, he's going to have really good drawing chances here. Well, okay, so before you showed me the move b4, before you, you showed me b4 and queen d1, the moves that were going through my mind was this idea that, yes, I should use my queen side as a decoy, but to do it in this way. So what I was thinking was that in, whenever you play queen takes b3, uh, I, my knight is released, I'll go knight d4. You mentioned yourself, your king on h2 yeah. is very sweet, safe. you know, very safe. And if I could get you to play bishop takes b3, well, now I was happy mm -hmm. because I could play queen takes f5 check, et cetera, et cetera. So my thought process because I wasn't on the b4, queen, d1. I was thinking I would go queen, f8. Is that uh, good or bad? Uh, queen, f8 is actually another alternative. You can definitely okay. play like this. And this will most likely lead to a position where we will have queens left on the board and four pawns versus three. Uh, so in this position, um, after, after queen, f8, the best uh, try is queen takes b3. Okay. Knight to d4. Knight to d4. And queen takes a4. Okay. And if you take the bishop, there's a queen a2 check, and queen will pick up the bishop on e6. Which I don't want, of yeah. course. And then you will, yeah, you will have to play knight takes f5. Okay. And uh, you have, we have, black has to take the knight on f5, otherwise it's just completely lost. Okay. Um, and then queen takes f5 check, king h8. And this end game is, uh, it's it's around plus two for white, but with the queens on the board. And now we see Fabiano is, the clock is still ticking and he hasn't moved yet. Right. I'm not sure how easy to win this queen endgame because it's going to be a lot more difficult with the queens on the board. You always have to watch for the checks, exactly. the perpetual ideas. And sometimes even with two extra pawns, it's not a trivial that you're going to win the game here. Mm -hmm. So I think this is not an easy win in this position here. Exactly. Uh, you had shown also, well, uh, queen d8, uh, are we going to see b4? You had shown also a, a previously a, a, a variation where you got this queen and four versus queen and three as well. Um, Fabi played queen d8 check. So we king h7 expect. will be played king instantly. H7 rather instantly, which in mm -hmm. fact indeed has And now has let's happened. see what he wants to do here. Queen a5. He He's repeating it. Yeah, and uh, my guess is he's going to push b4 right away now. Yeah. After king h8. Okay. Uh, because Fabi came on our show yesterday and in his game with MVL, he said, well, he had expected MVL mm -hmm. not to play the move queen h3 when he played knight e2 resigns. He expected MVL to centralize his queen and he was going to repeat mm -hmm. once yes. and then decide how he was going to play. So. <laughs> um, definitely, Fabi is one of those players who enjoys. Uh, uh, re re repeating at least once, not necessarily to gain time on the clock, although there is that factor, but just Psychological. remind your opponent, yeah. like, I'm the one <laughs> dictating. <laughs> yeah. I'll be telling us when, you know, we're going to be making a draw. It's all about those little victories. Exactly. <laughs> and we live for those small, tiny uh, moments. But Fabi doesn't look like he's completely at he's ease. not sure. I mean, before Sims... So unnatural to allow opponent to play bishop c4. Yeah, b3, b4, allowing your opponent, uh, you're, you're, you're in this pin, which is never easy, but then to allow the one remaining piece that your opponent has to hit that uh, pin piece. But it's all about the timing. And in this case, the queen comes back perfectly in time to defend both uh, the knight as well as the pawn, and then as we've been discussing, use one of the pawns on the queen side as a decoy to break the pin so you get to play knight d4 and eventually win. Uh, six minutes, six minutes, uh, kind of a, a nervy make. sign. Yeah, he needs he, to make that decision. 
What for you mm -hmm. is time trouble? Like you look at the, you're, you're, you're sitting there happily playing the game. There's 15 moves to make for the time control, right? You're going to get your bonus, yay. And you look over the clock. You're not nervous mm -hmm. because it says 10. Right. <laughs> you're not nervous because it says 6. <laughs> Are you nervous when it says 4? When do you get nervous? 5. Five. As soon Me as too. It hits five. Exactly. My brain switches. Oh, it's this blitz now. Now it's scary. And right. switching from classical to blitz in the middle of the game is a very difficult thing to do. True. And you immediately feel the butterflies and the nerves and starting to. It's that five minute. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. that five minute mark. For you, Var, when do you feel that added <laughs> tension of the clock? When it hits three, when it hits two, when it hits five? I think it's also depending on a position, yes, sir. If position is complicated, then I'm a lot more worried. Yeah. But if it's like a simpler position, I see it's a technical end game, I can try to play the moves by intuition, it's a little bit different. But I would say, yeah, when I get to below, let's say, three minutes, it's, uh, I'm already concerned. Yeah, and, and we're talking to, complicated yeah, position, yes. too. Yeah, yeah I, I need mean. to simplify it. I look ways to simplify the position. If, if I don't see anything concrete that I can do. Definitely not, I don't try to complicate more than it already is the position. Well, we're seeing four and a half minutes and the clock is ebbing away. I tell you, uh, when the clock does reach that moment of danger, it does feel like the seconds fly faster. Oh, you know? yes. it's, it's, it's the craziest thing. Uh, and you're also just not used to making moves quickly. Right. Like physically. Under that pressure. Yes, and moving your hand quickly. Yeah. And yeah, it, it will affect the rest of your moves. Yeah. Which, which, which game from the tournament? Did somebody forgot their clock recently? No, it was Ding Loren in the World Championship mm -hmm. match against Nepo. He just, like, it was crazy. We're, yeah. we're watching the game. We're watching the Dude, move. <laughs> Dude, move. 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 Yeah. And then panic and collapse. And Ding lost that game. Uh, what what are you expecting at this exact moment, Var? I know the engine has been harping on B3, B4, but Fabi still doesn't look like he's ready to make that commitment. Yeah, I think the more he thinks, I think uh, less likely he will play this move, Yasser, and I, I'm afraid I don't see any other way he can try to play for a win in this position. So I think uh, Jan is, Jan's, Jan's chances are getting uh, increasing right. of trying to hold this game and... Uh, but there is really no other alternatives because if you just play a move like queen c3 here, opponent will take the pawn on b3 and you play a5 and again bishop comes into c4. Anyway. And then you only have one pawn left and you're still under that pin. Right. So again, that idea is very important as you mentioned and I did earlier just to the He's end. He's done it. Wow. it. Wow, it took him almost 12 minutes including a repetition to uh, build up the bravery of B3, B4, but he d did overcome mm -hmm. this reluctance to allow the bishop to C4. <coughs> and that's, again, um, calculation. Yes. He, he, he is a great and he, calculator. He trusts himself that he yeah. can finish this game with just three minutes on the clock. I know, and that's That's nervous. confidence. <laughs> yeah, that's nervy. <laughs> but B3, B4 indeed is on the board, and we've been talking about bishop C4, Queen uh, D8. By the way, where is Nepo? <laughs> Jan is nowhere to be found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pacing. Uh, <laughs> He's like left an the building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's a... Well, Christian hasn't taken us to the VIP room where the players l likely have snacks and drinks. So we expect... Uh, I suspect he's uh, hiding out there for the moment. By the way, when my opponent gets into time trouble, I like leaving... Most of the time I like sitting at the board, but I like leaving the board and letting them get nervous and yeah. using their clock. But B3, B4 on the board, and why do we like this move? Because once again, there is this nice move, Queen D1. Oops, excuse <laughs> me, that is a mouse slip from yours truly. But Queen D1 defends uh, the knight, defends the pawn. And yes, we can get into a queen and pawn endgame of five versus four, but as VAR made it very clear, this is an ending where your chances of making a perpetual check against White's king are close to zero, mm -hmm. which is a bad sign. And in the meanwhile, your queen will eventually right. have to take up a very passive square. 
I'll tuck my king over to h2, and eventually I'll play queen to c5 yep. and drive Pretty your queen away. Uh, Nepo is queen. back uh, with yeah. us, and he's <laughs> seen the move of b3, b4. You know, it's funny. Uh, do you think that this move came as a surprise to Nepo? I think he was hoping that Fabio wouldn't go for it. Ah, <laughs> that he had, it, that that he was aware yeah. of it, mm -hmm. and he's just like, "Don't play it, don't play it." Yeah, just you're in time trouble. Let's just make a draw. <laughs> right, right. How about you, Var? Did you think uh, Nepo was aware of this move? I think so. I think he was aware of it. And again, when Fabio was spending a lot of time, he was hoping maybe he would do something different. Right. But now he can actually uh, try to make things a little bit more difficult for Fabi to bring this queen to. D1. He can play this move queen c2. Queen c2? Yes. The idea that you, when you play queen d8 check, king h7, you don't have this move queen d1 anymore. Okay. And here actually, uh, uh, Fabi has to find uh, the, another move. That, because bishop know. c4 is yes. a massive threat. Yes. And here, actually, very, very important after queen c2 that you have this move b5. b5? Oh. Okay, and bishop so c4, you have this e1 square for the queen to go to. It looks really it, bad. You're completely pinning yourself, but again, you're going to put the pawn on b6 you, and you're then using, pawn on a5. Yeah, you're using uh, it as a decoy to break the pin. Yes. But if white loses both a and b pawns, then that end game, I mean, white's well, better, but. If the knight is on d4 and I capture f5. Okay, so we take f5 for a and b. Exactly. Mm -hmm then uh, I think that's something we can work with. But queen c2, that is a, because again, it's not an intuitively, obviously, uh, uh, an obvious uh, b5, queen e1, yeah? And can white play queen c5 here with the idea that on bishop c4, I can give check on the last rank and take on a5 with a check? Yes, and then, okay, so you yeah. won a pawn mm -hmm. with a check. I'm. I'm more than eager to make a draw, <laughs> so go ahead and take a perpetual. How are you going to defend this knight? It's a good question. You could check me. I have queen g4, but I'm afraid of h5. <laughs> you, you can count on h5. And by the way, he went for bishop c4 directly, which does allow queen d1, which, mm -hmm. you know, oh boy, was Makes he it happy. easier for white. Yes, uh, Fabi was very happy. He, that move, queen c2, was, was asking more pertinent questions. But I do like b5 and queen e1. Uh, but we do have our, uh, our uh, position after all. Yeah. The players are doing a great job at following uh, the analysis. So what if black plays h5, h4, with the idea that when we reach that queen endgame, when you wanted to hide your king on h2, Made it I would have some queen g3 still check perpetual ideas. ideas yes. So like something like this. Queen b2 maybe or this, not yet. Not yet, right? I don't know. I'm just I'm putting up mm -hmm. the position, not necessarily uh, how we get there, but something like this. Right. And so you like the pawn on h4. So let's say you throw b7. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, so what are we going to do with black? Bishop d3. Yay. Sure. Okay. So we throw the pawn to b7. Yeah. I take. Queen takes b7. Yeah, I put the knight on d4 at last. Ha! g6. Okay. You could have thrown in check. I don't know if it, uh, how pertinent it is. You can't put the queen on a1 now. Or b3. Yeah, I'm st I was kind of still going in this direction. One of the problems is that maybe my knight could be, you know, nasty check mating. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your, your king doesn't have too much shelter going all, on over there. All black needs is the queen on c1. But <laughs> yeah, getting there. Yeah, okay. Uh, queen b3. Okay, well, let's do it, right? Let's, let's try to get the queen on uh, c1. You came too slow. You can play knight e6. You, can I? Yeah. Yes, because queen b7 should be checkmate. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Right, I just come right over. Gotcha. So knight e6, yeah, I guess g6, expo yeah. lifting your kimono, he exposed. Uh, bishop c4, uh, queen b1. Um, we need 
we need Nepo needs help, Bar. Uh, you got to call a friend here. Tell us what Nepo could. It, it is H five H four. Um, you, you can try H5, H4, definitely, but uh, the line that you guys were looking at it pretty much at some point, you're going to lose that H4 pawn. Okay. And, uh, but he can try to make things more difficult. Fabi <coughs> has about uh, four minutes on the clock. Uh, let's, let's take a look at exact how this line can follow after H5. So right. uh, white can play B5. And now if you play H4, right. you can just play B6. And the idea is to play queen e1 now and also play uh, the move a5 to secure the pawn. So let's say if you play queen b2. Okay. a5. Bishop to d3. And right around here when the bishop is already on d3, you can play the move b7. And if you take the pawn, again, we see this idea. It's like a theme of this position. As soon as the queen is moved, you put the knight on d4. Sorry, Var, actually, what if I take the knight first on e2? Uh, after after on b7? b7? Right. Okay, so let's say if you take here, queen takes e2, queen takes b7, and here I think uh, queen takes a2, threatening to play a6. So let's say I play queen a6. Queen a6, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think this, again, the problem is this f5 pawn is just too weak here. So you can start with the move queen d5, putting pressure on f5. And um, queen c8. Queen c8. And here, I think we're going to be able to win the h4 pawn in this queen endgame. So we can start with the move a6. So I don't have time for queen c2 and. No, I think queen c2, king g1, queen c1, king h2. Queen takes e3. Now, of course, you threaten queen g3, mm -hmm. queen e1, perpetual, but then queen f5 check. King, king goes g8. to g8. Now, queen, c queen d5 check. King h7 and just maybe. Pick up the h pawn. Yeah, queen yeah. h5 and pick up the pawn. But what if I play king f8? Queen, king f8 here. Yes. Same thing. Then, I same thing, queen the oh, we still check. Pick, it up. pick up yes. the pawn on h4. Okay. So, <laughs> putting a pawn on h4, it's, it's fixing. Uh, uh, white's position a little bit, but also uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be an easy target uh, for white to win it. Right. I just like the fact that behind you, you're seeing this plus <laughs> two, plus three, and then it went to plus 10 and plus 60. Yeah. Like right now behind you, plus 60, you know, has uh, occurred. Uh, so that's rather definitive. Uh, good play will get a, a, a stone cold win. And again, Fabi winning this game and going to plus two, that's would really, make really, soul really leader. good. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure soul leader, but it's sort of like Fabi, you know, he's been working on his game in terms of, of um, bringing his rapid and blitz to a higher level. I mean, before he had been like solely concentrating mm -hmm. on his classical chess. And then you saw his classical chess rating go down as his uh, as his blitz uh, rating went up, and a reminder how uh, Fabi got here, uh, we thought he might have win, missed a win in round one. Yes, he missed a win in round one. Uh, then he had a quick draw against Ding in round two. A well prepared draw, I might even and add. And extremely that. well prepared and a quick win yesterday against MVO. A miniature. <laughs> I I asked Fabi when was the last time he won in let's say 25 moves or less. And he paused. <laughs> he said, classical, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, classical. And he still paused. It's been a while, but he did win a miniature. And today, yeah. if he were to win against Nepo, he'd really be feeling uh, great. Um, oh, sorry, I wanted to ask, is there a way that Nepo... You, you, you showed us a, a moment ago where Nepo could have maybe played queen c2 instead of... Uh, the, the the move that he played bishop c4 yeah. bishop c4 uh, is, is there some way that he can throw throw throw, throw fabi a complicated how could he make life difficult for fabi can he in the current position yes uh, let's take a look so what are the options here again yes. we we looked at the h5 and we kind of get it's the same idea we just start pushing the b pawn here um, there, there are not that many alternatives because our plan is very simple. 
I have one crazy idea. Please. So. G5. Yeah. <laughs> a look at that. Oh, reaction. that was a look of a, the, the, the coach looking at, the, at his star player and saying, what are you G5. doing? <laughs> what are you doing putting a, launching I'm a three-pointer from the half court? I have nothing to lose. I'm G5 here? Anyways. Yes, G5 yes. here. I, I've, I'm behind you. Go, go, go. <laughs> G5, go, go okay. Um, go, Najee. <laughs> and B5, if we continue. Okay, I take on F4. Go At least Najee. I open one diagonal. I'm with you. That's I'm something. With you. That's something. You're my hero. Go, um, Najee. Queen B2, just to get. That's that, that, Because that, 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 that yeah. way you can't play B6 as a mm -hmm. decoy because you can actually take it with a check. So Queen B2 here. Uh, uh oh. Now, Our bishop is hanging. Yeah. You so I think we had to start with King G6, prophylaxis move. King G6. King G6. Yeah. Okay. And now we, we just continue with the plan as, as B6. Before. Okay, Bishop A6. Okay. Just A5. And the open diagonal doesn't benefit me in any way. <laughs> well, I mean, but you, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm warming up to what you're doing because at least you've got a passer in the position. Right. Right. Bishop takes e2, and queen, queen takes e2, queen takes a5. I mean, at, at least you're kicking here somehow, mm -hmm. aren't we? Or, queen c5 check. But the king is now, getting... Now if I also had a pawn on h4, I would feel happier. Okay, but queen c5 check, he can't go to g3 because of queen e3 check. He has king to go F1. to f1. Now king's gonna try to hide on h2 again. Okay, is there any way we can use our e3 pawn? So queen c4 check. King g1. Pawn e3. Are we just one tempo behind? <laughs> no, unfortunately, B7. we might be uh, in e2. As we see, uh, we're F2. reaching for something. something. Bishop b3. I don't okay, think we consider that, that move doesn't feel particularly uh so G5 no. wasn't that crazy <laughs> no 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 I mean uh compared to everything else bar, was but really, <laughs> uh, yeah it did boy uh, that was but no it wasn't the shock that the VAR had this look like <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, you like you dribbled the ball out of bounds or something. No, yeah, that was I, great. I have I, to admit, G5 is actually it's uh, it's 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 tricky. It's challenging. Well, with, that's with, what I was saying. You know, I'm trying to. Mm, what is there a way of mm -hmm. making Fabi work hard? Yes. And by the way, after Bishop B3, Fabi said, <laughs> "Just a second, just a second. That F5 pawn is your problem. Let me go after it. Queen D7, and Jan quickly." dropped his bishop back to e6. Now that the pawn's on b4, can we just simply play queen b5 and just say, hey, your bishop can't move because of the f5 pawn? Absolutely. Now it's just the uh, evaluation jumped, and it's almost plus 6 now for Fabi. If he finds the move queen b5, yeah. there is one line that he needs to just calculate after that. So let's take a look. Queen b5 yeah. and so now, if you play bishop c4, then f5 is hanging with the check. Cool. So it will be the same thing, check. And we already seen this position, but actually we just won the pawn on f5. So we go queen d7, check, and we just come back to d1. So right. it's a better version that we're getting here. So and Fabi, you found it. Found Fabi it. quickly <laughs> played queen b5, by the way. I mean, his, somehow this pawn on b3 magically yeah. <laughs> moved to b4, and it's uh, Can it's Blank nice. go back to the same idea of queen c2 here? Yeah, queen c2 in this position. Now you're threatening bishop c4. But here, actually, the knight is already <coughs> protected. So you can simply play the move king g3. Oh, we can move the king uh, now. And bishop c4, we have queen f5 check. But again, the line continues. There is, uh, for example, a move, qu uh, not, not queen d3, sorry, queen d2. OK. And uh, here, uh, you just play king h2, simply putting your king to safety. You ignore the fact that he can take your pawn. But then you play the move queen e5, centralizing the queen and protecting the f4 pawn. If you move the bishop, I just play knight g3, and I have knight h5 ideas, That's mating hard. on g7. And if you take only two, the queen endgame is just simply hopeless because f5 pawn is hanging with a check, and then we just continue advancing our uh, a and b pawns. So you can play e3, 
just yeah. to go a little bit deeper on this line. Queen f5 check, king h8, and we can just play b5. And the fact that we're going to queen with a check is going to make a very big difference here. Truly. It's strange, black pawn looks much closer to promotion than white. And yet it's not, <laughs> a, it is not the clay case. It's more about king safety yeah. uh, than, than the faster pawn. Uh, queen b5, uh, very powerful setup here. That was, uh, this is the current position we were looking at, queen c2. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, Fabi found queen b5 so quickly. Mm. I think he spent 10 seconds or so. One of the things uh, that was very different in my day is we had adjournments. And those adjournments, so we had these five hour playing sessions, we would stop for a few hours or even an entire day and resume the mm -hmm. adjournment. And I always thought the end game play was really remarkably good. And you could see that, for example, Anatoly Karpov was just a fantastic end game player. Because of the adjournments, you mm -hmm. could study the end games. These guys <laughs> play from the opening to a finish. Yeah. And some of their end games are simply excellent, like like flawless. And it yeah. it's shocking to me to see uh, today's players playing end games so well without a Germans. No, they have to. They that's how they've been trained. Yeah. Yeah, that's the level of that these players are competing at. Right now, uh, for yourself, Var, in your career, you. Did you play also at German positions, or it was just fading? Uh, yeah, it was just fading. I had maybe one or two a German games in uh -huh. uh, uh, late '90s, I think. Right. And I think uh, pretty much early 2000s, they already they were completely gone. Uh, were gone once the computers got better. So I had few adjourned games here uh, in my career. Right. But you, but you hear what I'm saying there is that. Uh, that as adjournments allowed us to really work out the end games to a precision. Absolutely, analyze deeper and try to get more ideas. Right. Uh, in a few German games I had, I remember analyzing with my coach. This was back in Armenia and uh, trying to find, uh, uh, you know, winning or defensive ideas to try to save the game. Right. I have a question, yes, sir. Please. So during those adjournments, was it allowed to get help from yes. other people? Yes, and in fact, uh, most of my Soviet opponents actually came with an entourage. Mm -hmm. Like it was very common to see uh, uh, Karpov with Podgayets or Zaitsev or somebody mm -hmm. was with him or even a, a group of people. And one of the most extraordinary things I, I've ever seen was during the World Championship match in Murano in 1981 was one of those buses, those massive, massive buses came and it was the Soviet delegation arriving and Michael Steen and I counted 37 Samsonite suitcases. Like they all for came. one player. No, well, the, for, there was the team right. of Karpov. Like how many just persons yeah. came wow. and mm -hmm. just for Karpov. And it was sort of like it was Michael, myself, Lev Goodman, <laughs> uh, Petra, Victor, and that was our team. It was like, oh my gosh, were we, were we out there? 37, that sounds like too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> and that sometimes is a problem. But yeah. yes, uh, you were allowed to have a, a, a second a, a trainer or more. And um, we do have some moves, by the way. King h8, just queen c5, getting the queen away from the bishop c4. Yeah, Fabi didn't play that uh, king g1 idea to get rid of the pin, but the queen c5 is still very good. Yeah. He's looking like bishop c4 is going to be met by queen check so that you could pick up this pawn on f5 with a check. And anytime this pin is released, knight d4 is an automatic answer. So queen takes a4, be my guest, mm -hmm. munch on that pawn, knight to d4. One of the a, a surprising, uh, uh, I was in, it was the last round of a tournament in Linares. Uh, Spain. And I had a, an adjournment. I was black against Anatoly Karpov. And uh, if I make a draw, Boris Spassky is the winner mm -hmm. of the competition. So 
I was very confident in my analysis, and uh, I, I was a little bit worse, let's say, against Karpov. Uh, but I was pretty sure I, I, I had analyzed it well. It was a knock on the door. Mm -hmm. Open up the door, and there's Boris Spassky. Yeah, sir. <laughs> How are you? Fine. How is your position with Karpov? He asked. I think it's a draw. Can I help you? It's not necessary. <laughs> all right. Have a good evening. <laughs> and but, and it, that, that's all it was. It was a very short, very sweet conversation. Thank you, Boris, uh, for offering me help. And then as I closed the door and went back and I was thinking about it, well, Boris was from the Soviet Union. There was Anatoly Karpov from the Soviet Union. The Russian, the Soviet ambassador was in the playing hall waiting for the game to resume. And I was like, wait a minute. You know, the Soviets were sending me a Soviet guy to help yeah. me. And it, was, it was a little bit uh, messed up. But, and the game was a draw, and um, Boris Baskey won the tournament. Maybe they were just checking if you knew that it was a draw. I don't know. I don't if know. They wanted some intel from you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, what could it be? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Queen C5. Uh, good move. Yes. Uh, second best move here, and uh, uh, White is uh, White is just winning again. If you take the pawn on A4, then Knight will jump in on D4. Exactly. So I think Jan is going to try to play G6. He's looking for yeah. some kind of trick to protect f5, so he can he can threaten the move bishop c4. But let's take a look. If he plays g6, for example, looks like he wants to do that. And actually, um, this is a little bit different idea. Now we're gonna see. You can still play. You you can still play the move b5. Okay. Um, so in, that in this position, but you also have another alternative here. You can play the move king e1 now. King Edgar won. Yes. Whoa. You're just defending your knight still, and now you're getting ready to play the move knight d4. Okay. And if queen a1 check is played, you actually can play the move knight c1 here. Knight, okay, that's a different setup. Yes. Yeah? And now everything is protected. If you take on a4, I have a queen e5 check, picking up the bishop on e6. That's and fair And if you play game. something like king g8, I can just continue pushing my a pawn. Everything is protected. There are, there are no checks even in this position. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that yeah, that's fair. and he has played G G seven G six. Yeah, Nepo. he just played G six and uh, and to here King E one could be uh, the most precise way uh, Fabi can win this game. But yeah. he can also he can also play the move uh, B five. It's another alternative because so Bishop C four check and then he will go back to this line with a Queen on D one. Ah, King. so simple. Queen d4 check and queen d1 yes. once okay. again. Mm -hmm. Somehow we've gotten into that mm -hmm. same setup, but this time we've in, mm, induced the move g7, g6, which <coughs> may be out, actually helpful for white mm -hmm. as it makes black's uh, king that much more vulnerable. So g7, g6, okay, things are yeah. getting desperate. Fabi's down to 1 minute and 40 seconds. And he plays king e1? King e1, nice. By the way, again, very nice. That uh, you know, you you you've been thinking about King G three for so long, mm -hmm. and and we all love a safe king. So King H two is like the natural drawing. That's the magnetic square that we want to move the king to. So you again, you're overcoming your natural desire to play your king to safety. King E one. Nice. Trying to explain like an engine, not like a human. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, there was some, there was some match that I, I saw. I think it was from a, the TP Sigmund tournament that is actually ongoing now. Our big shout out to Mishra and Peter Svidler who tied for first. But uh, there was one game that was played almost with absolute perfect accuracy. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> it was so impressive. King E won, uh, accurate play. Was it Mishra's game? Sorry, I forgot who okay. the players I'll were. Check. Yeah, but uh, yeah, P you know our colleague Peter Spindler mm -hmm. uh, in studio, and he's always he's in studio. And Peter is, is it's he just loves beating himself up. Oh, I'm so <laughs> awful. I'm so terrible. I'm so awful. You put him in a competition, and he's in first. <laughs> you know, like what? <laughs> Get out of and here. And he won the World Cup twice. I, I yes. Think. yes, 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 yes. Uh, King E1, and we have King G8 on the board. It, so both kings coming to the center. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. is it time? Are we finally ready for Knight D4, or is it 
Should we just push the pawns? Should we just push the pawns? Anything, yeah. yeah. And I actually, knight d4 is, is good. You can also try to play queen d6 if you want to be a little bit more precise to put pressure on g6. Okay. But knight d4 works. And uh, there is really, with a knight on d4, there's no really perpetual ideas or anything black so can try to do. If knight d4 and queen a1, would we bring the king more towards the center to d2? Uh, if knight d4, let's say bishop c4. We do have, by the way, queen d6, as yes. you just said it. Like you I know, said, to be a little bit more like precise, <laughs> you know, you're putting pressure on the g6 pawn. By the way, just, uh, you know, a moment ago, I, I believe Var mm -hmm. Var had said, put your knight on c1. And even at the cost of the g2 pawn, you know, somehow, you know, getting your knight on c1, your pawn on a5, Everything is super protected. Uh, I found that very attractive mm -hmm. to my eyes. Uh, queen d6 on the board. Yeah, that's why I was asking if we put the knight on d4, then we don't have knight c1 anymore. Uh, correct. So yeah. Yes, that line, if you put a knight on d4, <coughs> instead of queen d6, bishop c4 comes in. And you can just continue playing b5 because there are, as I mentioned, there are really no threats. Uh, there, if you play queen uh, a1 check, just king goes back to f2. There is a queen f1 check, but I just go to g3. And okay. uh, queen e1 check, king g1, and you cannot take only three because the c4 That's bishop check. is hanging <laughs> with the check. Nasty. So, so yeah, I think it's, we're getting very close here uh, for Fabi to win. And uh, king f7 played, and now I think Yasser, it's time to activate that knight that we've been waiting for. Uh, <laughs> for a long, long, yeah. long time. I mean, the patience of a sphinx. Uh, yeah. Fabi has. Knight d4 is just gonna, it's very natural now to play this move. Bishop is under attack. Bishop c4 probably will be played. And again, there are no threats here. The way that the white pieces are set up, everything is protected. You just continue pushing the b pawn here with b5. Right. There is nothing really you need to even calculate or worry about. And just, just b6, b7 will win the game for Fabiano. Nice. Uh, I love this knight on d4 and getting uh, the pawn to b5, just as you've prescribed it. Uh, and I can't help but look in behind you and see a plus 7 uh, going there. So uh, Fabi uh, is doing well, but now it's all about the clock because uh, he's got this winning position, but at the same time he's got, well, with that move, he's got... Uh, 48 seconds, but he was going down to 20 there for a moment. Uh, I don't like this move, guys. Queen and, uh, d2 you don't like? No, he's just gave up the a pawn. I mean, it's still winning. It wasn't necessary. He could have yeah. played a5. He could have played a5. He could have played knight d4. He could have played b5. And it, it's still winning. I think he's going to play the move queen b2 now. And just to uh, cut <coughs> all the squares. But again, it's just... Uh, it was not necessary to allow this. Uh, still winning, so let's take a look. Queen takes a4. Now he will play queen b2. This way now everything is under control, and the knight is going to go to d4, so... Uh, it still feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's still pretty good. I mean, <laughs> the best move here is actually queen a2, but I think that endgame is... Hopeless. Sh ...should be just hopeless here. But if you keep the queens on the board, I think it will make things even easier for white because he will continue... Uh, with the knight d4, b5, and uh, this this should be just winning here. Uh, bishop yeah. c4, we can check here, for example, knight d4. Well, we have on the board queen takes a4, knight uh -huh. d4. Knight d4 played, okay. Yeah. And uh, the idea is to play b5, of course. Exactly, if queen b2. Queen a1 check, if black tries to... Activate the queen, just king will simply go to f2 here. Yeah. This is what we've been trying to achieve for the better part of the last yes. hour or so, is our knight is and no then, longer pinned and we're going to go b5. Yeah, or, or even here, if you play bishop c4, just knight c6, and now getting ready to play queen Oops. d7 and organize an attack with the queen and knight here. That could so, be a checkmating attack. And if you try to play bishop d3, then at least... You have a few different options. Knight e5 check, picking up the bishop on d3 and two extra pawns. That should be winning. Yep. Uh, b5 is winning as well here. So still winning for Fabiano, but uh, he's, <coughs> he's got a minute on the clock. And again, until uh, 
the game is completely over. Right. You know, you, you still have to be alert to make sure well, you're missing uh, anything. The, the move bishop c4 did not catch Fabi unawares. On the contrary, uh, Fabi, the moment he saw bishop to c4 by Nepo, king f2 instantly, and we're talking about the safety of that h2 square, sort of like a magnet. Uh, if you can put your king on f2, and we've been talking about this forever, put your queen on b2, your pawn on b5, it's, it's, it's game over. So king f2, uh, everything's going still according to plan. Yes, yeah, it's still uh, completely winning uh, for white, uh, but uh, and uh, very difficult to prevent this b5 move. So you can try to play queen a6, okay. for example, and then we have the move queen b2. Love that move. Getting ready to play b5. Queen is very well placed here. Um, you can try maybe bishop b5 just, just to prevent. Sure. Uh, but here, black can, uh, white can actually just even improve the position of the king. King g3 yeah. first, go away from the chase, <coughs> and eventually uh, bring the queen into the game here. So with bishop c4. Bishop. Oh, well, that allows but b5. But then that allows yeah. b5. Obviously. Okay, king e7. King e7, for example. Do you want to improve the position more with king h2? Yeah, I can go, I can go queen b3, threatening uh, queen g8, and forcing you to play the move bishop c4, and then queen to c3. Now if the bishop moves away, I can enter on the c file. And you're threatening b5 as well. This is yes. nasty. B5, this is terrible. Yeah, if let's say h5, we have b5, bishop takes b5. Check. Queen c5, check. We'll win the game. Oops. Sorry. That's the mouse slip. Yeah. So h5 just played by uh, Nepo. And uh, let's see. Okay. H5, King G3, very King G3. quickly on the board. And yep. thanks to these last three moves by Fabi, at a moment where I started to get a little concerned for his clock, he was down to about 20 seconds. He's now even close to two, thanks to these very, very rapid last few moves. And I like this move, King G3, a lot. Uh, Queen B2 and B5 is not going away for white. Yes, at some point, uh, if it's an endgame, you can even go king h4, king g5. So uh -huh. that's another way that you can try to win the game. If, let's say, the queens are off the board, you yeah. can even enter with the king now. So, And you also prevent black from putting the pawn on h4, which sometimes will give him some uh, you hope. know, ideas for a hope for a perpetual. Yeah. Uh, so king g3 is a great move, and almost two minutes for Fabiano versus uh, about a little bit less than 10 for Jan here. Uh, I know as we came on the air, uh, Var, you gave a head-to-head -head, uh, between Fabi and Nepo. Could you just remind me, as well as our viewers, how they match up uh, prior to, the, to today's game? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can maybe pull that graphic to see. And head-to-head, uh, -head, Fabiano versus Jan. Only uh, one win for Jan, no wins for Fabiano. This is what I remembered. Yes. And I, I wanted to specifically mention that this could be the break, the, the break uh, that Fabi never had achieved out of the 13 previous games. Right. Now, see, the, the, he never managed to best Nepo in classical chess. There's first time for everything. Guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, guys, I'm thinking this might be the only player that Fabi doesn't have a win in a classical chess. Uh, I mean, he's, I think he has wins against all of the, the very, very top players. Yeah. Including Magnus. We yes. remember when he won in Singfield Cup years ago. Sure. Well, that's... Uh that's a, it's kind of a relief, actually, uh, to get in that win and to say that, you know, against all the top players in the world, I've won at least once. And for Nepo, he's sitting here saying, okay, how on earth could I not necessarily trick my opponent? I think we're beyond that. But how do I make it as difficult as, as humanly possible? Uh, what kind of obstacles can I throw in um, the pathway mm -hmm. of Fabi? Does the engine come up with anything decent, or are you keeping your eye on it, Var? And I, I don't see uh, the engine <laughs> making a good suggestion. 
Uh, no, I'm keeping my eye on it, yes, sir, but I don't see any, any uh, real ideas that will allow uh, black to get some chances. The way that white's pieces are set up, the queen on d2, the knight on d4, and now that after each tribe there's some dark square weaknesses as well. So it's just a couple of uh, more moves, precise <coughs> moves, a couple of more moves, and I think uh, uh, white should be able to win this game. I, I must say I do like this move, queen a3, because the, the reality to my mind is if white is just allowed to play queen b2 followed by b5, mm -hmm. you can resign. I yeah. mean, that's it. So at least... When you play the move queen b queen a3, you're being that annoying, <laughs> irritating person that an opponent is supposed to be, right? You are looking towards the e3 pawn, so you're kind of saying to your queen, remain tethered there, and I'm not going to allow you queen b2. I'm probably still going to play b5, by the way. Yeah, b5, I think that's just I also like knight c6 here. Is that Knight, a I think, yeah, isn't that oh, b5 on the board? Yeah, but I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think we had actually seen this mm -hmm. and seen the move knight because we're like, right. this is a checkmating attack, right? Uh, there is a bishop d3 move there. I think that's why maybe Fabiano didn't play uh, queen d b5, queen d3. Check them apples out. Just a second. Queen d3. Okay. So I don't want to trade <laughs> queens, right? Because My king this is, is so where far I can. Now. Yeah, this is yeah. where I can mess things up right here if I trade queens and allow takes. The king is a little bit too far away to deal with the d3 pawn. I don't want to lose this guy. If I go queen e1, you can take. Queen right. e1, bishop b5. Yeah, but so I, think I have queen to go c1. queen c1. So I've got, a, okay, you got to take, right? Yes, I mean, you got to take, and then we check. have queen c7 check. Right, king, he's done it. King g8 and that picks up the bishop right king oh, g8 yeah. queen b5 check king f6 queen b6 check does yeah. black queen have b8. any checks after queen e3 king f7 yes yes <laughs> just a reminder everybody if fabi wins this game he will be the sole leader going in the, to round five tomorrow so okay so like but let's say you go mm -hmm. king g8 king g8 okay i go check let's say you move your king doesn't matter i can take and then this way yeah. i keep f4 protected but at last we've got the pawn on h4 and this is what we'd always and dreamed now queen about a, queen a7 yes of trading oh, queens queen a7. oh <laughs> Oh, 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 good morning, St. Louis. Look at that, queen trade. I'm glad you guys saw that. I really, you make me proud. We're not sleeping. <laughs> I, uh, That's it, queen c5 and Fabiano wins. He resigned. Wow, impressive, uh, impressive play as Fabi uh, <coughs> ground. Nepo down, uh, check, king, well, king f8 was probably, of all of the oh, places to put his king, wasn't f8 the worst place? Yeah, because now queen c5 check, and then knight takes b5, and the e3 pawn is protected. Exactly, that was precipitated resigns on the spots. We were, we were expecting <coughs> king g8. Yeah, and just queen, queen b8. Yeah, at king the very b8. least. Knight takes b5. And... And thanks to the move queen a7 check, my h4 is a little slow, but if I don't have h4, I'm losing, I understand. So, But with <coughs> that one in the history books, here's where we stand. We have a clear leader. Our congratulations to America's Fabiano Cariwana with three out of four. He is followed closely by two players, Wesley So, Richard Rapport at two and a half, two and a half, Ali Reza and Jan, as well as Ding Larin and Ani Shigiri, are all at 50% chasing the pack. And for tomorrow, here's what we are expecting with the pairings. Nepo versus MVL. Duda versus uh, Fabi. That will be nice. Ferruja versus Ding. I see that as a super marquee matchup. 
Wesley So against Diak. Maybe Wesley is sitting there, okay, uh, Diak, get into time trouble, I'll be happy. And Anishgiri versus Richie Rapport as uh, round five uh, looks to be uh, a very exciting round to, for sure. And also, uh, as we get ready to wrap up, we hope we'll get an interview with Fabi uh, coming up in uh, just a moment. Uh, it turned out to be a, a pretty interesting round after all, uh, Var. We were a little bit worried that everything was going to go five draws there for a moment, but uh, these last two games, uh, victories in fact, uh, have made the tournament ever more interesting. Absolutely, yes, sir. And I'm very impressed by Fabiano. I mean, he started a little bit slow, but now with two consecutive wins with the white pieces, he's, he's showing some good preparation. He didn't get much day, uh, today out of the opening, but uh, no, he took his chances. And when Jan misplayed this endgame, which yeah. looked kind of equal, he took advantage of it. He played really well after that uh, change in a structure after the move 94, which we both thought maybe was unnecessary for Jan. Exactly. Uh, but his conversion was very, very precise, and he took his time at the right moment to find this move before, and <coughs> which was the only way for him to win. So far, I'm very impressed by his play, and I think uh, uh, he has some good chances in this tournament to win this event. Absolutely. Well, your confidence always builds as you uh, uh, win. Uh, victories come, your confidence goes up. Uh, this was the, the moment where I thought that uh, Fabi uh, was happy with this move F2, F4. Yes, you weaken your king side and you weaken the pawn on E3, but putting that bishop on E5 under duress, because if you don't play the move F4, uh, D Five d4 is on Black's agenda just to trade off his isolated queen pawn, and thanks to this imbalance, it it's not easy to outplay these guys, especially when the position's really balanced. And uh, well, kudos to Fabi uh, for outplaying Nepo, a player he has never defeated before in 13 attempts. It took the 14th time uh, for him to finally break through, and he is. Clearly, clear first as we're getting ready for an interview uh, coming up, we hope, shortly. Absolutely, I agree with you. It's always nice to win finally against an opponent that you never you know, I wouldn't say he really struggled against, but you know, he was probably getting frustrated in some of these games. I'm sure he had some chances right. here and there. Uh, to maybe score a win, but finally getting that win, it's uh, it's a hu huge boost for his confidence. And I think Nepo is a player that he's probably going to face a lot in the next couple of years, perhaps in the sure. future candidate tournaments or maybe some other very important events. So I think it's a very, very important win for Fabiano today against Jan. And let's take a look at our remaining schedule as tomorrow uh, the players come back for round five. And that's a big day. Why? Because it's a day before the rest day, and everybody before rest day is willing to put out everything they've got because they know they get a chance to catch up uh, uh, their battery. So expect a big round tomorrow. Then after the rest day, four rounds in a row to complete the tournament. And let's just remind everybody of round five's pairings uh, coming up as our tournament leader, Fabi. He's going to be playing Duda. And you know, Duda has not played a great event. He's only at one and a half. He's minus score. Yes, Duda will have white, but Fabi might be feeling it. Perugia versus Ding. Now, that's going to be a great clash as the number one seed, Ali Reza Perugia, up against the new Chinese world champion, Ding Lorin. And Wesley So, uh, half a point behind Fabi, will try to do the same against Diak. Looking for an opportunity, Nepo trying to bounce back versus MBL. And the other two and a half, Richie Rapport, will have black against Anish Giri. So a nice round coming up prior to the free day. Absolutely. And we are just seconds away from our interview. And uh, what question should we like to ask Fabi? When did he know, <laughs> when did he know that it was, oh, when he saw that move B4, B4. and Queen D1. Absolutely. That was, that was very special. Yeah. 
and the fact that he took his time, he spent more than 10 minutes and left himself with only a few minutes on the clock and find, found that critical move before to win the game. Yes, absolutely. Wow. And let's jump to uh, Bucharest as Christian is with Fabi. Fabi, first of all, I want to uh, bring uh, to you a statistic. You've never beaten Nepo in a classical game. Were you aware of that? That uh, shocked us. I, I didn't think about it, but it's, it's not surprising. We, we drew a lot of games, and he beat me in Zagreb in 2019, and I think those were all... We drew four games in candidates, I think. Yeah. He beat me. I mean, in Zagreb, I was like completely winning. I, I, I just, I suicided. Um, which, uh, like, You're... with the black pieces, I was winning, and I, I just collapsed for no reason. And yeah, the rest were draws. A, a lot of fighting draws. Like, the candidates were, were really sharp, two, two sharp draws. Your initial feelings after uh, this uh, grinding victory? Okay, I had nothing out of the opening. I mean,. Well, I, th I thought he kind of got careless a little bit, and then I got careless. Like, bishop c7 allows knight a4. I mean, before bishop c7 is equal, but then he allows knight a4. And right after I played knight e2, I was like, why didn't I play knight a4? And I'm, I have a very pleasant position. Um, and okay, then it was equal again. Like, for a long time, we were just playing instantly, and nothing was happening. I mean, were you harboring any hopes at this point? Like, who was playing for a victory? Were you guys just trying to, like, find a repetition? What was the... Basically, if he had played king g8 here, I was actually, I was actually going to play king g1. I didn't uh -huh. see. Then he. So this was the repetition. Yeah, I did. I didn't really see like what to do. Um, but then he put his king on, on e7. And I don't know why, but it made me, like it doesn't change anything, but it made me like a little bit more optimistic. And then I saw this knight c2 maneuver, and I was like, oh okay, like my queen's getting in. I mean, obviously it changes nothing. The position is equal no matter what, uh, even if my queen is in. But if I get queen e5, knight d4, then it looks a little bit more more pleasant for white. And then he played knight d4. Then he played this move, knight to e4. Yeah, I was happy because I could never risk this position. I mean, it, it's of course a draw. Yeah. But if I don't trade queens, then I, I absolutely never risk. Okay, trading queens can get dangerous because my queen side is vulnerable. And yeah, then when he played here, I, I actually saw this line up to queen c2 when I played queen e2. Because I thought queen c3 is supernatural. At um, this point, right? I thought it's supernatural, and I basically saw that here he's he's sort of um, like it's very normal what he's doing. Yeah. It, it all looks very logical, and I saw his position, and it looked like I'm making progress. Although I thought first I thought that queen c5 was a draw based on this, and then I saw this very nice queen h7. <laughs> uh, because if I trade queens, then I, I don't think I have any winning chances. You but mean he, with queen d4? Or? Well, for example, queen d4, queen d5, take, take. I don't believe that this position I have any winning chances because this king gets in very quickly. Mm -hmm. But I saw this queen h7, it, it looked very interesting. Uh, and then I thought he would play b5. And I kind of thought that it's a draw somehow here. But I, I still thought it's more pleasant for me. Uh, here I was already thinking, like, it is a kind of borderline winning because, I mean, I thought maybe it's a draw here. I didn't see like all the details. I was surprised by queen a2. I thought queen c2. But then I saw something here which made me happy. Did you feel like he relaxed prematurely? I mean, the position was equal out of the opening. It felt like it was equal throughout the middle game. And then he started playing these dubious moves, especially f5. Yeah, it, it was. Well, already he was gaining difficulty. So normally you shouldn't get into a situation where. So you were feeling the pressure was getting to him at this point. Right? I mean, at this point, he, first of all, he looked unhappy after queen c2. And he has no like clear path to a draw. I mean, it's it's probably a draw, but he might have to defend four against three with queen and knight against queen bishop. That's not very pleasant. Um, at least he has to like calculate everything. It's it's not an easy defensive task, I think. Yeah. And yeah, I was surprised by queen a two, but then he found this absolutely brilliant resource, king h eight. I hadn't seen it. I thought the game's over. I was like waiting more or less, because if he, if he takes. Uh, okay, I take both pawns, and that's what I want, because yeah. then he can't pin my knight anymore. Or he can pin it, but I, I can always break it. After king h8, I was like, uh, first I thought queen c5 must be winning, but then bishop b3, queen f8, he has this bishop g8. And I thought maybe this is winning, but I couldn't quite see it. And I was trying all sorts of moves here. Like, I literally was thinking about every, every possible queen move, like queen c3 even, bishop c4, and king g1, for example. It was like part of my thought process. Yeah. Um, because... If my knight gets to d4, like, and I win the f5 pawn, then he just collapses. Like, let's say this type of position, um, or here, yeah, let's say queen g8, queen f5. I mean, the problem is that he's going to lose his e pawn. Yeah. Is, is hanging, yeah. But I, I saw something that bothered me, and then 
I spent like all my time, I played this, okay, I repeated once, I played this thing which really worried me because I'm pinned and I saw like some G5 stuff, but yeah. then I thought, okay, G5 I take, take and King E1 and Queen D2 and somehow I free myself. And I mean, even up to the end, I was like very, very confused with everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here I was like, okay. But once you got the knight to D4, everything seems secure, right? Your yeah. king seems secure, you're but not still, getting pinned anymore. Still, with one minute, I'm not like super confident, of course. Uh, and then queen d3, uh, I mean, it's a very interesting try, but I'm lucky I have bishop queen c1. Um, I mean, also probably knight c6 is winning, but yeah, it's it's like you have to kind of keep working for, for it. It's winning, but, you know, with one minute, anything can happen. But yeah, once I saw his queen c1, I was very happy, because uh, I win the bishop. Bobby, back-to-back -back victories uh, with the white pieces. You made the best possible outcome whenever you have the white pieces happen. Um, how do you feel about your performance up to this point? And what's the strategy for tomorrow against a more or less struggling player, Duda, with the black pieces? Okay, this is a very, very important game. It's, it's really satisfying uh, also because, uh, I mean, Jan just played a world championship match and I didn't achieve anything from the opening, but still I was out playing him. So, so it's very satisfying. Um, still, of course, I mean, the tournament situation is good, but situation is good, but still early. And yeah, due to with black, I, I, I am quite tired, so I do want to, um, to recover some energy before the game tomorrow. Fabi, we'll let you go, get some energy, and we'll see you tomorrow. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Christian. Our congratulations to Fabi. A little apologies for Nasi. Nasi's having a coughing fit, as am I, uh, but on her behalf, on my behalf. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, making uh, this event such a remem uh, remarkable one. And VAR, just bring the uh, broadcast to a close. Uh, round four, quite some, uh, quite a, a memory for Fabi in the history books. Is he finally best Nepo in classical chess? Absolutely, yes, sir. Fabi must be very happy because he won this game against Jan. It was not easy. He didn't get anything out of the opening, but he mentioned to, uh, as he mentioned, he managed to outplay him in a, from a very equal position. Now he's a clear leader, and I think he has very good chances. So I'm looking forward to his game tomorrow against Duda and the other games as well. So it was a very, very, very exciting. It was a lot of fun uh, analyzing the games with you guys. Absolutely. And uh, finally, let's just jump to Bucharest and get some final thoughts for our, from Christian. Well, uh, a round that definitely started slow, just like the game between Fabiano and uh, Jan. But in the end, it was once again an explosive round. Two out of five decisive results. And I have to say, Ali Reza winning with the black pieces, that was a huge result. And of course, winning against uh, the challenger, Jan Nepomniashi for Fabiano, that was uh, just an incredible feature. And of course, back-to-back -back victories. You, you win one game in this type of closed events with the elite level players and you feel good about yourself. You win back-to-back -back games and that can give you just uh, an incredible boost of confidence. And this is what I'm feeling from Fabi. And whenever Fabi uh, has that confidence uh, dialed in, he's a dangerous man. So definitely I'm looking forward to see what round five, uh, the day before the rest day, is going to uh, bring tomorrow. Thank you, Christian. Fabi's got his mojo working. We'll work for him tomorrow. We'll find out. Thank you, everybody, for joining our broadcast and sharing your day with us. Tell your friends where you're hanging out, and we'll see you all tomorrow. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.